Wrong. Okay. How exciting. Yeah. Very exciting stuff. So welcome everybody to the second city St. Louis Team Draft City Championships between Chicago and St. Louis. St. Louis. Louis. I was going to say St. Louis. Hell yeah. Chapter two, the Redux, uh, yep. the VRD inning. Very excited. So uh, all of the St. Louis guys uh, came up to Chicago for this one. Very exciting stuff. First yep. time hosting up here in the uh, the greatest city in the world. The inaugural. Yeah. Uh, easy trip in and now Chicago. Great time. Good, so far. Good. Uh, yeah, because you actually flew in. Yes, I did. Because you don't live in St. Louis, right? That is you correct. Live, yeah, you live. I am by proxy from St. Louis because I know <laughs> all the guys. I've met actually most of them playing Magic through uh, the East Coast and the Midwest because uh, both Mark and Steven are judges. So mm -hmm. they were at a lot of the events that I was playing. And then uh, doing uh, the MTG Cabal cast with Jason basically extended my reach down into a lot of the St. Louis crowd. So I'm here to answer for them. Awesome. Yeah. Good. Because, boy, how do you do? I have a lot of biting questions. Oh, just, yeah. Just indignant questions for the st louis group that uh, you are now being yep. <laughs> the representative <laughs> of <laughs> which is perfect um it was interesting talking to uh the teams i was hanging out with the the st louis guys uh st louis guys last night and um over some conversation in commander i got an idea of what they're looking to do their valuation of elements of the format and then this morning we got a chance to actually engage with the chicago guys Hell yeah. Um, I actually also spent a little time interviewing um, the St. Louis guys and, you know, to a lesser extent, the Chicago guys, because I see those guys all the time. Yep. Um, what were your what were your findings? What did you what were they talking about? What's the buzz so in between teams here? The, the St. Louis guys have uh, a definite plan coming into this event. Makes a lot of sense. And when I, before I got a chance to talk to the Chicago guys, it seemed like a great plan. Um, they have definitive plans for seats. Uh, they have the odd seats, so uh, seats one and seven, there's a clear plan for. Seats yes. three, three and seven. five are a bit of a, a muddle. They were planning to do some responsive picking in this. Sure, so sure. Stay adaptable. Keep well, moving. Well, three and four color hate piles. Mm, um, okay. Because interesting, interesting. In, in team draft, hate, uh, hate drafting is a strategy you can employ at any mm -hmm. given time when you have a smaller card set. It seems really easy. Like, oh, here goes an Oko. I'm not on that. I know my team is probably not going to have that, so I'll take it from the guy to, to, to my right, the person to my right or to my left. Um, with VRD, you have all the cards in front of you. So you mm -hmm. have. To, so if somebody picks Karn the Great Creator, well, you can respond by taking the lattice from the Sure, sure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I That was one of the big things the St. Louis guys were telling me about. Um, Team St. Louis were talking about hate drafting. Mark was uh, recounting his uh, theory about like team drafting. So limited 3v3 team drafting, like actual booster packs, you know, a thing people used to do for money at like GPs yep. and stuff like that. Great old school format, maybe not played as much now, but now played like cube draft and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, Mark said uh, the kind of general thought there is as long as you can stop the other team from having good decks it doesn't matter as much how good your deck is yes you know? if you can make the other team's deck 10 percent worse and your deck's only eight percent worse then you're winning exactly that's, that's numbers yep baby. they want and you know mark he loves numbers yep that's exactly number basically guy. what i got from um from mark and from dan last night was this idea of kind of flattening the spikes as they put it so you got, you're gonna have some decks that spike really high in terms of power level and decks that are really low in power level and they want to kind of flatten that down across the team to make sure that everybody's decks are fairly viable. And yeah, have an eight, your deck might be 8% worse, but your team's made somebody else's deck 10% worse. So you can kind of pick up and, and, and do that. And there, we had some interesting conversation about the way that some cards are now just evaluated in limited formats like this, particularly uh, lands like Tolarian Academy and Gaia's Cradle. If you start watching a lot of uh, Vintage Cube aficionados, you'll see mm -hmm. the way that those cards are played are different than what they used to be because of excuse me, cards like Retrofitter Foundry and Hard Evidence from Modern mm -hmm. Horizons. Uh, mm -hmm. Hard Evidence is a sorcery costs one blue. It makes a zero, three crab and a clue. clue. Yeah, so it, it powers both Cradle and Academy. Yeah, 100%. Well, we're finally off, and a couple of uh, fairly standard Black Lotus recall picks. Yep. So the way the format's working today is each we flipped uh, coins to see which team got seat one and which seat uh, which team got seat two. Uh, so the winners of the flip got all the you know odd numbered seats one, three, five, seven, and the other team got two, four, six, eight. Yep. So they're going to be alternating picks. 
Um, they got to assign their players to whatever seat they want. So, you know, St. Louis decided that Mark was going to be in the first seat yes. for them and that Steven was going to be bringing up the rear of the seventh seat. Mm-hmm. Swifty, uh, of course, being like the sort of pseudo team captain, the, the player who's done the most live VRDs with the group yep. and everything. Uh, picking seat number two. This pick, uh, this pick order, uh, be it Lotus or Recall or Recall mm-hmm. Lotus, uh, St. Louis had locked. They knew that Chicago was going to take Recall first, so they were going to walk <laughs> away with Lotus. Um, Hilarious. And uh, I think, I think they, I think the Chicago crew had the exact same thing in mind. I think they were like, we know they're going to pick Lotus. Yep. So we're going to pick Recall for sure. And I think uh, St. Louis is also going to float Sapphire, um, mm-hmm. not for themselves. They're not mm. looking at. So they want. They're they're trying to spring a number of traps oh, on Chicago. Oh, got trap cards in the mix. That okay, based like on it. our conversations right. with Chicago might not work because oh, really? I think St. Louis might hoist might hoist themselves on their own petard here. Oh, okay, um, okay. Talking, they have a very cohesive strategy as a team in that what we talked about before, which is just mm-hmm, our middle mm-hmm, seats are going to mm-hmm. be these kind of soupy decks, and we'll figure it out at the end as long as you have a three or four color cohesive pile. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and talking mm-hmm. with the Chicago guys, it seems like everybody has an idea of what they want to do individually. Yes. Not given as a team. Yes. So St. Louis is trying to draft against a team strategy, and uh-huh, Chicago uh-huh. is just kind of flying. That is, a couple of the players, I think, when I was talking to them, did seem to give that same kind of energy. So I know when I was talking to Jago, when I was talking to Sam, I was talking to them a little bit about the team format aspect of it. Some of the things that I've learned doing some drafts with my friend Eric Benson, who's been on the Discord a lot mm-hmm. lately. Uh, some things just that we've theory crafted, thought about in the team format. Yeah. Like 4v4 format. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're playing not with a collective pool of cards, but with a collective strategy. Yes. And when I was talking to this about at least last night with Jago and Sam, um, they both were giving me a lot of, well, I've got this strategy, this strategy, this strategy. Yep. It's like, okay. I need to bring the But camera. that could be for anybody on your yes. team. Yes. That, you want to play Urza Artifact Aggro, that's great, but anyone on your team could play Urza Artifact Aggro. It doesn't need to be you, it could be the seat. Yep. So. We're going to see. I know the St. Louis guys said they think, I did a little bit of interviewing, they said uh, the, good morning, cryptic complaint, they said uh, the blue stuff, the blue delivery strategies, the tempo stuff, yep. the, as Mark called it, the miscalc decks, mm-hmm. um, he thought those were going to be a little overrated. He yes. thought, I think the last team draft that we did, uh, seats one and two both chicago drafters right next to each other and they both drafted like blue red twin blue red delver yep and they were like if they're going to do that again we're going to tear them apart we're going to make we're going to force them to take sapphire uh we're going to trick them into taking blue cards we're going to you know we know they're going to take yep. recall and then we're going to string them up by their necks yep. you know we're going to get them to take four blue decks we're going to play every other color under yes. the rainbow and we're going to we're going to stick them yep so um so Steven with Blight Plume Adventure, which is a card that Chicago thought would be the case here. They, um... uh, when I asked them, I asked both teams what they thought was going to be maybe overrated, what they thought was going to be maybe underrated, and unanimously, Team Chicago said Blight Plume Adventurer. Another thing, overrated. Okay, so Dan here is probably I don't. Uh, we have Crypt taken, but we don't have Vault taken. Uh, so we might see Dan take Mono Vault, but both teams agreed on this. Chicago believes that St. Louis overvalues the Soul Lands, mm. and St. Louis believes that people undervalue the Soul Lands, so they're going to go high <laughs> on the Soul Lands. Oh, funny, um, funny. Yeah. So we should see at least a, at least one deck powered by Soul Lands that wants to make four drops, three drops. Mm-hmm. And um, if uh, memory serves, it's probably going to be some kind of like white chunky. That's aggro deck that's one thought. Three okay, uh, there's Saga, so Dan mm. might be on that deck. Um, yeah. So I mean, like we got a fairly Standard first round, I would say the first mm-hmm. weird deviation is you see Steven pick White Plume over Mox Ruby. So I think the only reason I would say that's a little bit of a weird one is like, obviously, if you like White Plume Adventure, you can take White Plume Adventure. That's yes. fine. Yes. Um, however, you are giving the guy next to you another Mox. Yep. You're giving the other team another Mox. They, ha- they have beat you in the war for power now. Yep, I think uh, what they want to do is try and pick up some small ball artifacts and then power out additional Mox in the non- uh, oh, we're Mox talk- Diamond, Chrome Mox, Chrome Mox, um, Mox Amber, Mox Opal. I'm, I keep, yeah, I keep thinking Sapphire, but that's not the one I'm thinking of. The one from Mirror Embassy is the one I just can't. Opal is the right one. Amber? No, Amber's from Dominaria. Oh, okay. You're, yeah, right, yeah, you're, right, you're right. Yeah. The Metalcraft one. Um, so Love that. We might see that go to Steven to try and turn mm-hmm. a lot of these initiative three drops into two drops, four drops into three drops. Um, mm-hmm. When I was talking to uh, Mark, because Steven was busy doing 
uh, logistics this morning. Steven has... <gasps> Ooh, Ooh Minskin Boo, Ooh, Timeless Minskin Hero. Minskin Boo, Timeless Hero. Oh. Shout out to all our BG3 fans out there. Have you played uh, BG3? That game is Genome. overwhelming to me based on the amount of micromanagement you have to do for your party, but yeah. it seems very fun. I, I, <laughs> one of, I, I was with a friend and he was like, I'm, you want to see some BG3? I was like, hell yeah, this game, this game sounds amazing. I love all the memes that are coming out of it. The story seems great. They're doing uh, any percent... Uh, sex runs, which seems hilarious. <laughs> Fire the son of a bitch up. And uh, I watched him try and micromanage his party down a hallway that he knew was full of traps, and his rogue kept failing oh, perception like, checks. Yeah. yeah, so it was like, I was like, Classic. this is this is way too much for me. I just can't. Classic Not relatable content, you guys. That's what we're here yep. for. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll just go back to playing Borderlands in my spare time. Because why not? Um, hilarious. Well, I mean, okay, so we're th we're about down to the second round of picks we're going to see where mark wants to play this like mark and dan both prolific combo gamers i know what mark is trying to do um, is he trying to draft storm no <gasps> uh, you would think that based on the card i'm about to say um, i can use this as the thumbnail <gasps> yeah right uh mark is going to basically they they, they equate it to uh demir soup but it is basically mm, going okay. to utilize doomsday for any number of mm. possible uh mm, combo okay. elements that do not involve the storm mechanic Okay. So like basically, a, just that's his oracle, yeah. something like that. Yep. I think when I asked Mark about what his, um, I asked everybody like, if you just had to imagine, you know, you're at the end of the day, what is a card you'd like to have in your deck at the mm -hmm. end of the day? And he gave me that oracle. Yep. Like that was like a big one. It wouldn't surprise me to see it taken early. You know, you want to keep it out of hands and maybe Swifty, you could get some ideas. Yeah, and you can um, float Doomsday for a while, but oh, Thassa's yeah, Oracle sure. is a piece you want to pick up. Breach, too, is another well, card that gets taken. So that's a question early, that, this quickly. is something I wanted to bring up. So Steven, mm -hmm. there are some ideas that basically it's, okay, we want to start with the initiative there. Do we want to play a Taxes deck? We don't know. But going back to the hate draft strategy that we talked about, there's the mm -hmm. opportunity for Steven to pick up Breach and play, I don't want to call it fair aggro because, you know, initiative creatures are three and four mana value, so it's difficult mm -hmm. to call it that. But you can replay a lot of spells from your graveyard if he picks up bolts, or I guess bolt, chain lightning, uh, fire blast, etc. Mm -hmm. Sure, He yeah. can play a, a fairer game, quote over here, yeah. uh, with Mentor as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Make a lot of tokens and just play this kind of value grinding game mm -hmm. out of the the seven spot with Breach. <laughs> yeah, I've messed around with some uh, potential like red deck win style beatdown, mm -hmm. Bernie... Um, through the breach decks and boy let me tell you mutagenic growth plus uh through the breach really fun really combo. good yeah really fun you, you get a prowess creature in there you slam it exactly i was gonna say you don't even Hello. necessarily need sorry small earthquake you know uh, you don't even need monastery <laughs> swiss beer for that because you just have so many synergies with mm -hmm. spells oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. coming floating back from your graveyard 100 percent. so but mark takes the tinker in the time vault that mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense tinker is a card we usually see in that second round of picks yep so um, and Seemingly, their macro strategy of sticking all the Chicago players on all blue decks seems to be working out okay. I mean, Sam did take Sapphire over Ruby in the eight seat, yep. at least planting some kind of a an insinuation that he would like to be blue rather than red. Yep. Um, it now with that in mind, you know, maybe Jay. I, it would surprise me if they thought that the ruby was going to be coming to them. It, it would surprise me a lot if they didn't think Steven was going to take the ruby. We I would assume. We didn't have a lot of conversation about power. It just seemed that they were going to let it fall where it may. St. St. Louis seemed to be more concerned about uh, the Soul Lands, like I said, and making sure mm -hmm. that they had a functional artifact deck in one way, shape, or form. Yeah. So we talked about some odds and ends for that. Um, there's. It seemed to be split down the middle about Sir Ginger. Uh, and, mm, and what you want to be doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sir Ginger is an interesting card. Uh, let's see if I can bring it up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so, uh, the Meal Ender, right? Mm, that is the one. Classic. Yes. Maybe it this doesn't card look is like it. Also, that's, that's also a good card. You know, uh, Tinker. Good well, yeah, I brought it up there. just to see where we were. Okay, let's try one more time. <clears throat> if not, we'll just pull it up on Scryfall and read it to everybody. Sir. Oh, no. Oh, God, I'm just sitting... going horribly wrong. Well, yeah, it's like because I have one hand on the keyboard and the other mm -hmm. hand on a coffee. Um, Understandable. Okay, sir. There we go. Now the space was. All right, cool. No, it's uh, just Tinker. It's just Tinker. It might as well just be Tinker. Down. But basically, unless your opponent has a Planeswalker, it seemed like that was a split, then mm -hmm. it doesn't get haste, which is the most, to some people, the most important part of that card because you got to sure. play it on. Sure. On two. Sir Ginger. The second, second tinker. tinker, exactly. I've heard that actually. Yeah. Spoiler and, um, season? Mm hmm 100%. And yeah. Cozy up. Got my mullet going over here. All right, let's see if we can. If I turn the right way, no one can see how bad my haircut is. I mean, uh, it's genius. 
Chicago and Detroit, uh, definitely hockey hair towns. Mm -hmm. how, how, for how long so, did Yager I mean, flow through? Uh, we have to imagine. So Swifty takes to Fairy Time Raveler, branch that blue white, very powerful three mana planeswalker. Jago, who said his number one card that he really wanted to have this weekend was Oko Thief of Crowns, and he has now picked that up. So yep. the splitting of those three mana planeswalkers, and Dan takes his card in the Great Creator. So now we're seeing people get into, you know, we're out of those power picks, we're out of those uh, initial flag planting. Yep. Now we're going to see people start taking those. Uh, multicolored spells and those planeswalkers so, and really getting into like what do I want my deck to do we should actually see uh, St. Louis also start to pivot into some of the blue Xerox spells a lot of the manipulate your hand manipulate, mm -hmm. manipulate your library mm -hmm. draw card mm -hmm. uh, soon they wanted Chicago to pick up force of negation force of will uh, those larger mm -hmm. tentpole cards for mm -hmm. blue before they started this is like the rope-a-dope theme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they kind of made mention of like, you know, trying to get them out of having good mana bases, like consistent, like attacking the consistency of their decks, which is from a macro level, very, very interesting. I can't wait to see if how it works out, how that, you know, happens. Yes, for sure. Because, you know, the problem, I would say the initial issue I would see with that is that Magic has such a deep card pool and so many alternate flex stuff. The problem that I see with hate drafting um, or having a, a sort of denial macro strategy is just that you could see yourself in a situation where you're making their deck worse, but not by a lot, uh, maybe not tangibly, tangibly by a lot. Yeah. Um, you, because, which is an interesting concept. Because taking the cards on the peripheral, the periphery of these decks is not going to give you that tangible number. But if for whatever reason Oko was floated a little longer and Brandon could have taken Oko mm -hmm. out from underneath uh, Jago, then yeah, that mm -hmm. seems to be a tan that would be a tangible number. Or taking oh, Ren and Six sure. out from Sam at some point because we mm -hmm. have Fast Bond and Wasteland set up, which we saw you do work oh, yeah. with. A lot of last fun. time around, right? A lot of fun with that one. Yeah. Um, so uh, Stephen's question here might be okay if we have Fast Bond and Wasteland out, that leaves Rhyming Up, Excavator, and Crucible mm -hmm. on board for Sam. Yeah, so 100%. this is kind of where St. Louis wants to be. I don't want to say this is in their wheelhouse, but this is what they expected. Where they're probably mm -hmm. discussing now: where do we want to take those two cards? How do we prioritize them? Do we want to leave them for Dan and Brandon to snap up and see if they can place them in their piles? Because you mm -hmm. also have Strip Mine with Steven. Mm -hmm. um. Floating things by to your teammates, you know, almost like passing a ball down the field. You know, you're yep. like, there's some, there's a guy in the way here, but if I can just sort of eh, thread the needle, toss yeah. it down just one guy, uh, I can let my teammate okay. get a hold of it, right? So, so hey, yep. there you go. Here we, we go. See that Prioritize the and they must just be reeling in, in this, uh, the Chicago crew right now. They must just be, oh my God, I can't believe they decided to take Ancient Tomb. Meanwhile, Ancient Tomb has been an extremely high pick yes. in the Discord uh, VRD meta. Um, the latest and greatest VRDs coming at you from the St. Lotus Discord. Get in there. Um, a lot of the people that we're probably going to see in chat today are excellent, excellent players from that Discord server who yep. are here to partay. And those guys do drafts constantly. They yes. do wacky drafts. They do backwards drafts. They do drafts where everyone can only, uh, you know, use vowels in their uh, card names. You know, it's crazy. It's a wild time. They cited a lot of that information about the, a lot of the Discord information as reasoning for bringing the soul lands up into mm. the pick order uh, yep, because, they, yep. because Steven drafts in basically as many of those as he can and so does I and swear so out of the 22 on there he has to be in 18 of them the At guy least, is uh, a machine I think 20 is what we counted he is a machine and Brandon as well link to the discord if you can absolutely we can Mr. Seeker42 you thank wanna, you for being in the chat you want to type the word today. discord I think that does it discord there it is hey play your first VRD online at discord slash St. Lotus and these guys Awesome guys come up here and yeah. they gave us. They came up here with all the streaming equipment, everything to uh, and Bam Seekers just joined. Thank you Perfect. very much. Thank you very much. Um, but the St. Louis guys coming up here, bringing all the streaming equipment, bringing all the cards, bringing all the stuff. I mean, really, we are honored to be uh, here. While I mean, we're hosting them, but they really are the guys making the stream happen. Yep. And they do such an excellent job. We love them to bits for it. Yeah. Um, the whole breacher pick from Dan doesn't seem too far from where he wanted to be. We didn't discuss Urza last night as an option for the artifact deck, but it seemed mm -hmm. to be where he wanted to be. Um, whole breacher is a fantastic card. I mean, it oh, is a sure. it is a truly top 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 tier blue card, and I think it actually might get a little underrated sometimes. I know it gets picked highly, mm -hmm. but in the world of card with flash, three power is a lot of power. Yes. Does such an incredible... It's not just a hate bear, it is a hate machine. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can cuck entire decks 
out of playing with this one three mana flash play. Yeah. It's like the pinnacle of holding up a counter spell. What do I have back up? Mm-hmm. Um, it, so, and, incredible card. And D- you know Dan loves his wheels. Dan loves I was going to say, it doesn't necessarily mean back. that he has to take the wheels, too. This could leave Dan open to float the wheels or might prompt a response from <laughs> Chicago if they thought about playing a wheels deck or something that might take advantage of either twist or, Twister or wheel itself. Um, yeah. time. You can use it as your own combo card. Yeah. So obviously, I use it as a fair card all the time. But you can use it as your own combo card. It really does do everything. Yep. Jago takes that Hex Drinker right in front of Brandon and says, Yo, dog, I heard you like Hex Drinkers. <laughs> yep. What up? Okay, so Brandon takes Mox Diamond. And he takes Mox Diamond. Probably, honestly, away from, I would say, the player most likely to play that for Team Chicago would be I, Sam all the way down on the end. Yep, I think Brandon and... Brandon's not a hard player to pin down if you watch a lot of what he does because it's usually been Planeswalker based. And so if I had to take a guess right now with Fastbond and Wasteland gone and Sam on the wheel without taking Red and Six, I think Mm -hmm. Brandon might take Red and Six. And not necessarily... Morning Jaster. Morning Jaster, yeah. Mm -hmm. Might not actually... He might plant a flag on starting with Gruul, and that might be his uh, two out of the three colors he starts with. Red and Six is a very powerful card even without Strip and Wasteland. You know, I'm going to say, I honestly, I'm looking at the starts of these drafts, and I am seeing Mark on his Black Lotus combo deck. I'm seeing Brandon taking his green mid rangey cards. Yep. Dan's on his combo uh, artifacty stuff, and Steven's in his white, red, aggro ish sort of space. Yep. This looks like a really standard draft. What you would expect, like, bog standard from all four from of them. From every one of them. Absolutely. 100%. This has got to be, like, exactly in their wheelhouse where they're comfortable, where they're happy. Yes, which is kind of surprising because it seemed like Brandon was wide open to just playing that hate, mm-hmm, that hate seat. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it just seems at this point not to say that this uh, that the way Chicago is drafting as individuals, not necessarily a team, is kind of throwing a spanner in the works. But I think it just plays to Brandon a little bit better when he can start diving in on those hate pieces after establishing a very strong foothold oh, in yeah. what he wants to draft. Yeah. Well, I mean, so far seemingly. The plan of, of letting um, the Chicago players put their put their little roots out and then trying to come in and slash them. I mean, we'll probably see that a little later. Yeah, a like, little more towards like the ten slot. Like yeah, that. and everybody Once seems to see people really yeah, stick to their it, strategies. The, the the first two picks do seem uh, between uh, Swifty and Jago do seem a little soupy, where they're kind of mm-hmm. stepping on each mm-hmm. other. But mm-hmm. Jacob's just kind of powering through with Jet Ruby Thoughtseize Tutor. Like yeah. Now here's a question for you. Okay, so Brandon takes Mox Diamond for pick four. Mm-hmm. Now, when I look at the Chicago drafters, I think, well, Mox Diamond is probably a card that they want all the way down their eight seed, all the way yep. for Sam. Um, do you think that Mox Diamond is necessary to take away from Swifty, or is it that you could float by it? Is there a different card you can take in this spot to maybe deny Swifty from? If you're, I mean, maybe you're probably not going to take Manager in. No, I think. But is there another blue touching card or a white touching card? Oh, okay. A I... fetch land. Um... A, an, an artifact that you could maybe take away and be like, you know, ah, I got him. I think in, in Brandon's position, it's the most powerful option because he seems to be uncontested in this, like, Minsk and Boo area where he can play, he can start here and be fine, and Diamond is very powerful. I really do think he's going to take Red and Six on the mm-hmm. wheel back. The ancillary cards that you're asking about, I do know St. Louis wants to fight over, but they wanted to yeah. play with them. They want to start the run on Fetchlands, and their idea is actually so... Uh, not snaking towards Sam, but on the way back at either Dan or Brandon, they want to basically pick six blue fetches in a row and strip Chicago of like all it. the blue I like fetches. It. Okay, mm-hmm. so smart. They that is definitely on the board for them. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Uh, so that wouldn't necessarily start with Brandon because they wanted to try and get six or seven in a row. Mm-hmm, I think, mm-hmm. like I said, I think. Well, honestly, I you know not to. Uh, I hope that when they have that thought. Um, they do it away from Swifty. So if they pick Brandon going towards Mark, then Swifty can assuredly pick up his own um, blue fetch land in the middle there. And Very probably on the way back if they look like they're really committed to it. Let me see the drive. We've been asked to not show our delightful faces. So Oh, yeah, that's fair. Oh, so they can't see our faces. Perfect. No, they can. It's down. They're, we're down here oh, in the corner. Right here. We're, yeah, so we're so cute. small look now. Look at us. Yeah. Uh, and we also just dumped the... Uh, the URL for the draft. Yes, you can follow along at home. Thank you, guys. So here's my question. Any chatters that we've got in there? I see you, Chatter. I see you, Seeker and, and Jaster and Alicia. Uh, Alicia? Alicia. Alicia. Um, what do you guys think? What is Team Chicago even doing? 
Um, you know, they've got I think there's a blue guy. They've got blue Cynic and a green guy. card guy. They've got, I guess, Ren and black. Ren black and... I can't. Oh, forget. sort. Oh, okay. Black red guy. So this isn't blue Who ancillary. This is white shares. ancillary. I'm surprised Ooh, they're gonna. F- interesting. There's no way they're floating Ren and Six down to Dan or Steven, so it's green probably Green card guy's my favorite kind of guy. To play against. Ooh. Oh, you can do a lot with green. Ooh. Don't be like that. Throwing Don't. down. Now, does uh, do they have? Does uh, Team St. Louis have any fingers in the green? Uh, the green pie here yet? Have they just, taken any green cards? Uh, just Minsk, like, sorry. Minsk none, and Boo. None yes. with only green pips. Mm-hmm. It would be okay. Minsk and Boo. That's why I thought Brandon would take red and six and then start that run. Well, to say start the run on green cards is a bad way to look at it, but just start pulling no, some of the like, good know, green yeah, cards. Yeah. Now, um, you know, Sam's got a green card. Jago's got a, a couple of green cards. You know, we've got some little green touching stuff. Yep. Looking at Jago's cards, looks like he's going to ham on the green cards. Really free reign, which does lead to a super powerful green deck. I agree completely. Yes. Here's a card. So here's something that I wanted to hear from the groups as I interviewed them today. I wanted to hear St. Louis say, Green Sun Zenith, massively overrated. And I wanted to hear Chicago say, Green Sun Zenith. Massively underrated because Green Sun Zenith. I'll give you guys a spoiler that are playing along in the chat at home and you, Peter. Green Sun Zenith is the first or second best green card. Full stop. It's it's actually the best one. Now, a card like Fast Bond might be more inherently powerful. Yep. But consistently, Green Sun Zenith is going to give you the best results in your green decks. It gives you access to every kind of of hate piece that you could possibly need, whether it's graveyards, artifacts, creatures, et cetera, et cetera. You can use it to get the initiative. You can use it to get a great threat on any part of your curve. You can use it to accelerate yourself. It is truly a perfect magic card. And on some of the Discord drafts, some of the St. Louis drafts, it doesn't even get picked, you guys. It's not that people aren't playing green. People are playing green. Yes. People just don't take the card. I pick it within the first five if I'm playing green every time i think people undervalue even the singleton gse that is on brandon's radar if there are enough targets for it is a card he and i talked Mm -hmm. about this morning mark and i also talked about it a little bit when uh, i asked a very pointed question about companions Mm. um and i brought up urion as the not not the piss not the possibility of seeing urion in this draft but just urion in the format fourth Fourth lingus so this is, this is a card that we talked about last night um, yep. as the St. Louis crew, where apparently nobody knew what this card was going into like, the last draft. <laughs> yeah. Because mm-hmm. um, it hadn't quite hit yet. Um, and how powerful it is, where you can just cast this for two and attack with a creature already on board to give yep. yourself the monarchy. Absolutely, if you got to turn one play. Mm-hmm. Yep, or mm-hmm. you don't even have to... You can actually just cast this attack into a Planeswalker to kill it and not start that back-and-forth game over the monarchy. Yeah, if your opponent's got some yep. creatures staring you down or is already beating you yep. down, you just need to like start making some progress so, on board. I mentioned Yorion, and this is a card I mentioned with Yorion because now what you want to do with Constructed is live that bean life. Mm, and so fourth, fourth Eerlingus plays well into up the, the bean stocks because mm, you just I cast like it, it for three mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the the boros on top of it mm-hmm. that basically gives you your bean mon or your bean trigger yeah, i like it i like it sounds um, very cool beans is definitely a card we could see come out it's yes. one of those it's almost like yorian in the sense that it's a little bit hard to use very powerful card for sure but Tricky. Exactly. You gotta figure it out. You gotta make it work. That's you know? why I mentioned Yorion because a lot of the <sighs> the cards around Yorion that you have to kind of I think the word pollute here is correct. Pollute your deck with mm-hmm. will trigger mm-hmm. beans. Like you can do weird stuff with submerge Yavamaya yeah, if you want. Yeah. You can mm-hmm. play you can even go big hoots. Um, mm, 100%. Eth- Ethereal yeah, Forger, Merc Tide Regent. These are yeah, all, th- all the Delve cards, all the Garmag all Angler. The Evoke Elementals. Yep. Uh, obviously, that's a one in modern that everybody yep. loves. Um, like you said, cards with alternate casting costs like Submerge. Mm-hmm. Very, very powerful. So, that's a very interesting card. I would love to see it. My, I think my favorite cards in VRD mm-hmm. are the ones that fall into that band. Like, um, I always use Gaia's Cradle or Fast Bond as an example, where yep. you've got these really, really powerful effects. You just have to figure out how to use them. You know, you can't just slot them into any deck. The number of times you can go fast bond, land, 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 land. So low. Go. And you're like, I have one or two cards in my hand, and I am hoping to draw something off That's the top where Green of my Sun deck. Zenith comes in, though. You know, I don't think of a one of Green Sun Zenith in my deck. I think of the second copy of every everything. Other yeah, exactly. And, oh, oh, <laughs> I love yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I took a break from Magic. I came back somewhere in Zendikar block, so I was playing the Primetime deck, and then they. Under Mountain Adventure, that is the green initiative card, mm-hmm. uh, the four drop, if I'm 
not mistaken. Uh, yeah, this is one that I would say we would generally only see with green sun mm -hmm. So it is possible that this is a red flag, that this sets off you know, a guy like Brandon, who's maybe got some green cards already, yep. to go, hey, I see that on my adventure. I definitely know he's going to take Green Sun Zenith because Green Sun Zenith pairs with this card. This is a yeah. this is how you get your like value, your value four item. drop or your threatening four drop yep. in your deck. Mm -hmm. Because you generally, on each part of your curve, you're going to want to have answers to things. You're going to have Scavenging Ooze and Reclamation Sage and these different answers to all these things What's that your opponent the... can do. But then you're also going to want to have threats yep. on every step of the What's curve. What's the white... Four drop initiative creature, season seasoned adventure, adventure, seasoned adventure, dungeoneer yes. or adventure. Oh no no yeah you're, I think you're right. Season because this one does a ton. Um, I've been I have access to uh, Eternal Weekend, so we've been jamming. Mmm fun. And this yeah, has that's cool. infinity text on it. I'm curious. Yes. So Steven just took White Plume Adventure, which is a three drop initiative creature, and that's basically it. Mm -hmm. Season dungeoneer does a lot more, and so I'm trying to see with fourth Ing Eerlingus into Comet Stellar Pup. If we're going to see more of an initiative style play from Steve, Steven, or if we will branch out, there is the idea that yeah, I mean, he could go into Jeskai. Mm, interesting. Yeah, both of these, like all of these cards, definitely fit into that chunky three and four drop. Yeah. Uh, I, I say aggro deck because the, obviously I, the idea is you're not going to be playing on three and four. You're going to be playing on one and two. Yeah. Um, so that all this makes a lot of sense. I know he's a big comet guy. Mm -hmm. He loves he loves that dog. Uh, and who doesn't? Who's got Steven? People who play Moto don't. I tell you, Steven got that dog in him. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. That's a fact. Um, um, Jacob coming out with the grief. So we've got a few more picks now. Some interesting stuff happening. Very... Sam picked the time twister in the face of Dan, who already took Hull Breacher, which is interesting. And then he took Undermountain Adventurer, kind of signaling that he's going to maybe do some Green Sun Zenith action. Yeah, I... But see, Jago also probably wants the Green Sun Zenith. So I wonder if they're stepping on each other's toes a little bit. Well, I'm sure. Hex Drinkers, generally, if you've got like Hex Drinker and you got Bird's Paradise, it's like the best. Yeah, I, I can't imagine you know. Jago just stays Simic. There's got to be a third color in here. So mm, if, interesting, if interesting. Jago does go into a Sultai style deck that you've pioneered before, then mm. we could see Leovald into that deck, into GSE as a second copy of mm. all those creatures. I'm yeah. kind of curious yeah. if Jacob. You can't play the scam package. You just cannot. There's two. Mm. You got one grief and like six cards to scam. I don't think it's going to happen, but it would no, be. No, no. I don't think that's the. You know, the problem with the scam deck was always that it was very, very inconsistent yes. for, like, modern. Um, and eventually, when people stopped playing, like, Solitude, they started playing Fury, mm -hmm. and they added, like, Ragamans and all that stuff to their deck. The deck, there were some things that happened in the metagame that shifted that style of inconsistent, very powerful deck to the forefront of that meta. Mm -hmm. But I would not say that this is a format or a draft where you're going to want to be drafting some really high rolly inconsistent No, garbage. I could see doubling you got one grief in your deck. Yeah, I could see doubling up on the effect with an unmask. Mm -hmm. Just to, so you have two effectively zero mana discard spells, but I can't yeah. imagine we'll see any of the undying cards or not dead yet from mm -hmm. the new set. Um, but I do think um, kind of weird the three of the four Chicago players are in blue. You know what? Called shot yep. from uh, from our friends in St. Louis. They knew it was going to happen, and seemingly all of the pieces are coming together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in that regard, <laughs> we'll see what happens in the games. Um, but Ooh, I think here's the move. Is this the big move that you said is going to happen? So Brandon's going to take the flooded strand. They're going to try to boom. Yep. So Mark should go uh, fetch into fetch here. Um, That's interesting. Now, so do you think Swifty's going to interrupt that and take? They the they knew it would happen. They knew there would be. A, um, they, they knew they would be interrupted by at least one drafter. They just needed to do it on the wheel, and I think this might be the, the time to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think we're looking good uh, in that regard for Mark to go fetch, fetch, and then Brendan to go fetch, and they remove from uh, right there, let's say, five or six of the nine blue fetches between the three of them. Mm -hmm. If Swifty mm -hmm. also decides to make a move. At this point in time, I don't think it matters what colors the blue fetches are from Brandon and Mark. Strand. Yeah, they're all good. They're all. They're Strand all, just seems to play. Good. Yeah. Love them. Strand just seems to play into the idea that Brandon does actually want to cast Swords to Plowshares. Otherwise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, hey, if you can cast your spells, you might as well try to. Right? Yeah. Otherwise, I would have expected him to take Misty or Tarn. Mm -hmm. um, because, See, I think yeah, I think Brandon is putting himself in a good position because if you want to be playing that Omnath colored like everything but black. Yep. And you want to just start. Boom, 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 I did everybody every which way. When he and I were talking, I did kind of insinuate Omnath, and uh, he did not really respond 
in kind. Yeah, for that I mean, idea. I don't know so. that you'd have to play Omneth specifically, but that color slice. You know, That's what I asked. So, so I was like, green helps you branch out in all your different colors. White has cards like Leyline Binding, Prismatic. Um, the reason why I said then, it was because you would basically be giving up on black, which is notable for mainly discard and tutors, which you don't really need in the deck. He was responsive to that idea, but not actually yeah. playing Omneth in the deck itself. Yeah. So yes, I think he's uh, he might be on that very on that plan where we'll just play those whatever that uh, Nephilim is called. <laughs> yeah, Dune whatever brood. it's gonna be. Uh, yeah. could be Dune Brood Nephilim. Could be Dune yeah. Brood Nephilim. Um, um, meanwhile, Dan's sticking on the um, artifact strategy that he likes so much. One word. Oh yeah, it might be. Or it might have a hyphen. It is. It is a hyphen. Look at that. Um, nope. I was oh, on. So that's close. the Mardu plus off. green guy. That's okay. You know what? We'll leave him up there for a little while. Look at him. He's Look having at a great time. Look at those sand creatures. Uh, oh. I'm talking about me <laughs> last Friday night. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I don't drink. Drinking is a. It's a. You know. So that bag of I'll candy corn buy-ins for you. It would be. It would be if it were me, and I wouldn't want it either. No. Uh, all of our guys. The buy-ins for these St. Lotus VRDs are a fifty dollar. A consumable item, and what this mostly comes Food down or drink. to, what so, yeah. mostly comes down to, is alcohol. Or because cheese. it's easy to transport, it's easy to store. Yeah, everybody likes it. Easy peasy. Now we've had a couple of renegades in the past who have gone wild and brought some other things, some chocolates, some steaks, some cheeses, things like that. Our friend Mark, to, uh, uh, even um, our friend who brought uh, Applebee's gift cards one mm -hmm. one time, um, hilarious. Mark today, in the spirit of Halloween, um, just after Friday the 13th, has decided to bring $50 worth of candy corn, which, spoiler alert, is a lot of candy corn. It is. Uh, shocking so we, candy corn. There's four of them. I was going to say, this worked out perfectly. Look at this. This is, it's a lot of candy corn. Uh, this has literally worked out perfectly. So Brandon took the fetch land in the face of Swifty, who is the most likely Chicago drafter to want those blue fetch lands, and Swifty... Cross it up. He says no. I, I don't the, care. I wonder if the strand was the sole read on Swifty. Because you see Path to you know, Exile Solitude after the strand. He's just like, whatever, I'll deal with well, it. Well, and he's got the Teferi Time Reveler. So you know he wants to play Blue White. You know that's the number one fetch land he probably wants. Yep. So you take it. Then then Swifty just responds, no, fuck it. You can yep. have it. You, I'll take I'll take my shitty Sea Chrome Coast and Celestial Colony. Yeah, okay? yeah. I don't care. I'll take, I'll take Prairie Stream. What is the um, Prismatic Vista? You exactly. Know, take that, right? And he'll let Mark take two more blue fetch lands in his face. He takes another white card, Solitude, which is a late Solitude. This is this really is, you know, can we um, replace Dude it, it would it would not. I think this is a late Solitude. Solid. I don't doubt I think you. Solitude is considered generally around fifteen. That's but strong. remember, this is an average strong. of thirty-two a lot drafts. Of different drafts. So yeah, that's true. Um, I will say, um, I think most people would put Solitude in the top five white cards. Uh, yeah, here we maybe go. even the top three. Uh, round five, generally. round eight. Um, yeah, we're so, seeing another round five. Yeah, it, it's it is it, it's not that it doesn't make. Uh, yeah, okay. So regardless of whether it's early or late, it is a very high pick mm -hmm. in the white space. Yes. You know? uh, next two cards like maybe Stoneforge Mystic, maybe mm -hmm. Swords to Plowshares, Solitude, White Plume Adventure. Like these are all really high picked white cards. Thalia Guardian of Thraven yep. is one that I absolutely love. It's a mixed bag. Not everybody loves mm -hmm. loves them, but. Yeah, the, the St. Louis Gambit of picking all the blue fetch lands right in a row. Even passing them through Swifty, which is the highest stakes pass you can make. Yep. That's the interception waiting to happen, baby. And it worked out perfectly for yeah, him. So that's nice it. job. Good work. Yeah, I, I like Solitude in this pick, too, because the higher, like, it's an agnostic card, unlike yeah. a lot of the other white cards you mentioned, which put you in a theme. Mm -hmm. So Well, and Swifty had re a high degree of success in the last team draft, ah. uh, drafting Control. And I've had conversations with him. Um, I know uh, Elaine, who is a player that played with the St. Louis group yep. before I came around, uh, used to draft a lot of control decks, is mm -hmm. what I've heard. A lot of Grixis control decks, a lot of Esper control decks. And she had a lot of success with them. Very, very powerful archetype. Control, I actually would say, I think, personally in my experience, is the least drafted macro archetype of VRD. A lot of people like to draft the combo decks. A lot of people like to try to circumvent those combo decks yep. by drafting aggro decks, trying to punch them, gives, give you some like sphere resistance effects. Yep. Control as a macro archetype, I think is underdrafted and so, so powerful. I think so many of your things will completely, uh, completely force opponents into irrelevancy. I, 
I feel like there's just a fear of drafting control because you have to wait to see how the draft is shaping up before you can pick some of your most powerful, responsive pieces. So not mm-hmm, only do you have mm-hmm, to play responsibly, mm-hmm. you have to draft Responsible, yeah. You have to pay attention. You have to make sure you actually do have a game plan. Now, in this draft, you only really have to have a game plan for four people. That's kind of convenient. It's true. So you take a bunch of powerful cards like Teferi Time Raveler and Solitude and Snapcast Mansion, all these flexible cards, Mm -hmm. give yourself some extra options. Now, in that case, I would love to see Swifty with the Force of Will instead of the Force of Negation. But, alas, yeah, not quite went how it worked on out. the wheel to Jago. So, okay. Yeah, yep. yeah. So he took its second pick mm-hmm. instead of trying to float it past Swifty, which I'm a little surprised or, about. Or, yeah, or reversing that um, pick. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I think they might look back at that pick in, in round two and maybe be a little judgmental of themselves. Especially with the on. fast mana from Swifty to be able to cast the Force of Negation onto, mm-hmm. because that is also a powerful mm-hmm. play. Like, Ooh, and now we've got Steven finally coming in with the Stone Forge Mystic. I like this pick a lot. I think it's, it hates it away from Swifty, mm-hmm. which makes a lot of sense. Um, you don't really want that card going to him because that Stone Forge Mystic, Batter Skull, Cauldra Complete, Jit. Stone Forge plus Batter Skull or Jit will both absolutely destroy your like white aggro deck. Yep. That's, a, and that's a devastating card to have and facing you down on turn two. It basically forces Swifty to tr- to figure out how to finish out a game now. Stoneforge mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. equipment was probably the easy play. Mm-hmm. And now mm-hmm. you know that somebody's going to be stepping on your toes, not necessarily for all the pieces of equipment, mm-hmm. but most definitely for uh, Cauldra seem, Complete. You might see him go towards a direction like a Jace the Mind Sculptor or something. Yeah, um, yeah. Play a know, slower a big, game. A big Planeswalker. Yep. Like Elspeth's Sun's Champion. It's a okay. little expensive. The Wandering Emperor is very popular. The one pioneer, a little bit of play in modern, yep. I think. So, certainly options for him. We'll see yeah. what happens. Wonder- Dan finally picked up the one ring in round s- uh, pick, seven, pick seven, which makes a lot of sense. Yep. Um, I know we've had drafts where it has gone in the first like two or three rounds, and we've had drafts where it's not picked at all. So, yeah. very mixed bag on I, how good people think the one Dan ring is. Dan is just kind of staying the course, and I do think that whole breacher pick was meant to see all right, who thinks I'm going to play wheels, and can I walk them mm-hmm. into this little trap so sam's yep. pick on twister might be for not because i in the conversations we had last night we were talking about how to use tolarian academy in interesting ways mm-hmm. so hull breacher is definitely a way to do that powering out mm-hmm. additional treasures and you don't 100%. need to wheel to do that you just need your opponents to play yep. the play xerox them. spells yeah. yeah any any anything if you can ever get that card like notion thief before it if you can yeah. ever get that card in on a draw effect mm-hmm. it almost feels like you can't lose yeah so i i would expect to see dan just kind of stay the course now eventually pick up urza as long as nobody else uh, grabs mm-hmm, it out from, mm-hmm. from underneath well, yeah, him. And right now, all of his picks have been bangers. I mean, he's yeah. picked up a lot of really, Everything. really great cards, despite him being the one blue drafter over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe Mark's going to you know dip his toes in the blue pool too. Um, but he's really kind of like the St. Louis guy who's like, hey, I'm still going to be in blue. I'm still going to be contesting you guys on some of these cards. Yep. And while Swifty and Jago take green cards and white cards, Dan's still there, plugging along. Yep. You know, just picking up those powerful artifacts, Let those me powerful blue cards. ask this okay. question to re-up on it. Yeah. Dan has the ability to pick up Arkham's Astrolabe, mm. which mm-hmm. means mm-hmm. will he have to actually draft Snow-Covered Island? Um, the most recent rules, I believe, that we've talked with Mark about are that uh, you have free and clear access to Snow-Covered Lands. Got it. So you don't um, actually... Just so. as any other normal basic. Mm-hmm. That's the rule, I think, in the Discord currently. I believe though so. Though there's always contention around that question. Yeah. And I believe that is the rule for St. Louis at the moment. Or St. Lotus yep. at the moment. So, so that's always... It's, um, it's always something to float... Yeah, and Astrolabe's a great card. Exactly. That's, especially if you get it with Urza, you just start tapping it for blue mana. That, oh, that's man. just kind of where I started to chain off, was like Urza into Astrolabe, Beautiful. into this, into yes. X, Y, and Z. Yes. Jacob Key picked up his uh, signature Lightning Bolt. That was the card he said he most wanted to have in the draft today. Uh, not to say that it was going to be his highest pick, but that it was the card he most wanted to see himself playing today. Yep. He, you know, he's a real, he's a red deck aficionado. Yeah, I'm kind of curious if we're just going to see Jacob stay Rakdos or if Jacob will expand into other colors with options that are still open. Hex Drinker is gone, which is a very powerful threat in the Jun style deck because mm-hmm. you can just dump mm-hmm. your extra mana into it when you need, but you still have... That's good, can't blame, that's true. Yep. Um, Bolt's great. I, yeah, it, it, I wouldn't be surprised to see him just stick with red-black. I know um, the St. Louis guys were telling me they think... The decks are going to be very multicolored. Three colors yep. are going to be very, very common. Maybe four, maybe five. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of the Chicago guys stick with the two and three color okay. strategies. I think Brandon might end up on the Naya pile that was discussed uh, last night. Uh, he mm. he and Sam got in 
uh, too late from the APAC region to really join in the merriment. So I just kind yeah, of yeah. Well, I mean, props to Brandon. That guy has been in on vacation in Japan for three weeks. Yeah. And flew in. Was it this morning or last night? Uh, left at 5 p.m. and got Oof. in at 3 p.m. My God. Yeah. That was the, those were the only details I, were, I was given. After being about out of the country them. for a month. And so, comes here and says, I am ready to throw down. Yes. I am ready to battle. These guys from Chicago think they're beating us again. No, Ooh, sir. On, I am here to play. Those were the only details I got. Mark said, Brendan left at 5 and got here at 3. And my response was, so he flew in from the APAC region. He said, yes, from Japan. <laughs> He's been there for almost a month. Wow. Incredible. I thought... Um, I thought he was coming here and he was going to be half dead doing commentary with me like, Whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I did not think he was going to have the mental fortitude, not to slight Brandon in any way, shape, or form. He's a mentally fortuitous man. I didn't think he was going to have the mental fortitude to want to lock himself in for nine hours of magic playing yep. directly after getting off the flight. I don't know Hilarious. what kind of conversations they've Hilarious. been having as a team with Brandon or if he just said, you guys tell me what you want seats three and five to do and we'll figure it out the exact list day of or what, mm -hmm. but he's settling into the nail list that I thought was actually going to be in the seven seed. They thought there was going to be a nail. Steven could still end up in a nail list, um, but Brandon has picked up some very powerful cards and with prismatic ending, basically saying, I will be playing the swords to plowshares. Yeah. Well, and it makes sense. You know, we talked about prismatic ending. I'm sure we're going to see a line binding come out at some point. Like would, this yeah. kind of stuff makes perfect sense yep. for exactly this kind of I don't know if we'll playing. This see... eclectic, multicolored, white, green based sort of thing. So with ley line binding, sense. one of your most powerful options in constructed formats are to play triumphs, triumphs. because you have a little bit of time to do that. Uh, VRD is usually faster than constructed and different mm -hmm. than team draft, which can mm -hmm. be a slower format. Do mm -hmm. we expect Brendan to pick up triomes for this, or do you think he will try and levy... We've seen no duels taken, mm -hmm. or shocks. Sure. Sure. No, fetchable, yeah. no fetchable duels. So mm -hmm. would we expect Brendan to start with and try yeah. and fill his, his mana base out with as many fetchable lands that have the opportunity to enter the battlefield untapped, or would we mm -hmm. expect triomes? Well, you know, I think ideally you want to have perfect mana with untapped yep. duel lands. Um, triomes are a bit of a contentious subject. If you can play a deck that doesn't need to necessarily play a spell in turn one, mm -hmm. uh, one fetch land and one triome Triom, yep. in your 40, in your opening hand, can fix all your mana problems for an entire game. Yes. I mean, that is a really nice asset to have. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, being able to go you know, any fetch land on turn one and know that you have all the mana, the colors of mana that you need in your deck. So any random colorless land or basic that you peel off the top, yep. it doesn't, it's all, it's all fine from yes. there. It's all gravy. Really, really powerful option. So if Brandon doesn't play too aggressive of a deck, if mm -hmm. we don't see him draft a ton of one drops specifically, yep. it would make perfect sense to me that he takes a triumph because especially in this team format, you can let your teammates take some extra dual ends, yep. you know, and that's nice. Uh, especially those untapped, painless dual lands. Um, Brandon might be a deck with uh, two and three drop creatures, two and three drop removal spells. It yes. might be more prepared to fight on the ground against anyone who's trying to clock your life total. Yep. A deck like Jake's that's going to hit you with incidental Orcish Bowmaster, dock you Voidwalker damage. Um, Grief has Menace, you know? Like, these kinds of decks can ping you down for a bunch of damage if you're sh fetching and shocking yourself mm -hmm. over and over again. If you fetch and try them... Uh, you know, how often have you played Constructed where you're playing against a burn deck, and even though you have a one drop in your hand, you fetch your shock land tapped because you know that that, that couple extra life is more important than deploying your one drop. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, that's... So Brandon's Brandon's right there. He's ready to bang with these like two and three drop removal spells. Mm -hmm. He's got things to cover the board. Yep. So he might be okay taking that slower approach in a lot of those kinds of matchups, yeah. where his teammates are going to be fetching for those untapped dual lands. Um, and if they're painless, all the yeah. So the reason the the point I wanted to make was it's not just triumphs that you have uh, access to, but you also have what did we shorthand them to the Tango lands from Battle for Zendikar that oh, also sure sure yeah um, their Prairie Stream and yep. uh, Canopy Vista they can ETB untapped mm -hmm. they are dual lands they're fetchable mm -hmm. and they cycle so it's like two thirds of triumph yeah, yeah so. Sure. I don't know. So it was a lot of it comes down to the opportunity cost, I think. Mm -hmm. So uh, absolutely everything you said is. Yeah, I think having one triome is, is pretty. I mean, I'm if, not going to say cold, totally harmless, but it's not bad. No, especially it's, Brandon it's really cost. wants to stay in Naya. He's going to need black and. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and blue mm. off of something. So don't let, our, don't let our host Chad hear you say Naya, by the way, because he has a cat named Naya. Naya. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just so you know, you might get attacked by a little fuzzball coming at you. That's like, <laughs> so we saw uh, Jago picks up Umezawa's Jite. Um, yeah, there's nice, a good solid hate pick. You don't want Steven to be able to assemble that, especially if you think you're going to get in there with some creatures. Well, you also have the ability to kind of get low. With mm-hmm. this deck and yeah, play sure. some other creatures that are low to the ground alongside Hex Shrinker, so GTA becomes just a reasonable play for you. Dan picks up Urza, which we expect to be uncontest- uncontested for him. Am I going to be yelled 100%. at? Oh. Am I being yelled at about Naya yet? <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Hey, um, we're good. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, mostly pretty Ooh. standard stuff. Um, ooh, and then Sam takes away the Cauldron Complete, so apparently they've got a little plan of stopping uh, Stephen from taking his best equipment here. Took away the Jit, took away the Cauldron Complete. This is is got... he going to take Batter Skull? Is he going to consider the Stoneforge a lost pick at this point? What's going to happen? There's so... If Stephen just balls outrageous and takes Manriki Gusari mm. at any point in this draft, Do I would be so happy. Do you think we see him take Skull Clamp here as an alternative? I, Very powerful piece of equipment. It is, but right now the only thing you can do is clamp through your squirrels off Comet. So you gotta roll... What is... That's not a six. That's... Uh, one or two, Six I think. blows up Moto. One or two, I think. Uh, let me can check that out, right? Yeah. I had to play oh, against yeah. this in Stellar Undraft. Pop. Yep, it is Stellar one or two. Pop. Yep. Um, well, <coughs> if you're thinking to yourself, you know, I've got the Stoneforge Mystic, the go-tos, I would say the most common pieces of equipment that you're going to find are Calder Complete, Jit, and then probably third is like Batters. Dungeoneer? Dungeoneer makes a lot of sense. Dungeoneer, really powerful. I I swear to you yes, guys, it does, Chris, after like... playing for, um, you know, I was thinking of the Crypto, the Super Dog theme song oh the dc pup instead yeah. um they had a commercial they had a tv show when i was a child on cartoon network hilarious yeah because they also um, had a they they upcycled the Hanna barbera yes league yeah, of yeah. super for the the dc uh-huh 100 yeah. percent. so that's where i got that from right. yeah just in case anything ever gets locked in your memory for 20 years <laughs> that's that's me i wonder um, if so, so, yeah i got attacked by seasoned engineer for the first time i swear to god the first time like last week and I never had protection from Dude, creatures when attacked. I the like, first, oh, I just can't block it at all. That's fucked up. I didn't even but... read this card. I just opened a hand when the, like we were sitting down before Legacy one night just to, to BS start testing Vintage. And I just grabbed the Mono White Initiative deck. And I was just like, I can't even cast this on turn one. It's got to be a turn two play. Woe is me. And then I just jammed it. And I went into combat. My opponent was like, okay, so what are you going to do with your triggers? And I was like, what, what triggers? And he's like, this is not flavor text. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. Is... I mean, so because of the dungeon that the initiative takes you down, you get an immediate plus uh, two plus one plus one counters on your stage dungeon here. It attacks. It explores. You put another plus one plus one on it. It's hitting you for six damage. And the next track on the initiative drains you for five life. Yep. You, are, you are over half dead off one, one attack. One attack. Yep. It is but, brutal. Um, all of the, the creature types listed on Seasoned Dungeoneer's Trigger are relevant to the white creatures you play in the initiative deck outside of Solitude. True. Clerics, mm-hmm. Warriors yep. both come up. Yes, exactly. Um, wizards, I even think, come up a little I bit. Think... Is, is Mom's a cleric? I don't know what Mom just has been. a human? Been. I actually don't even know. I think I think at one point she was a cleric. I'm not I've, 100% sure. We've gone through a number of uh, Oracle updates on Yeah, cards. at this point you never really know from so looking at the text. I got uh, to judge two vintage events back to back, and somebody mm-hmm. had to ask me, uh, how do you untap? What happens when you want to untap Time Vault? And I asked, "What do you mean?" And they said, "I don't have a key. I want to untap Time Vault." And they had an actual Time Vault on the table. And I said, "I don't know what version of Time Vault we're in right now, so let me check the Oracle text on this." Brilliant, we and love it, it. It is a fantastic replacement effect. You hey, replace Rachel. your entire turn with untapping yeah. Time Vault. One of our lovely hosts, yeah. Rachel, come say hi to everybody. Come here. I'm looking for my friends first. Okay, Kira's right there. Say hi. Hi, Hello. People. Hello. Hi, Rachel's one of our lovely hosts here mm-hmm. in Elgin, Illinois, and her home address is... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just hilarious. I know. I'm so funny. <laughs> Ooh, Walking Ballista. Love it. Yeah, see, Walking Ballista is one of those cards that I really could have seen someone taking as a as a hate pick. Yeah. Um, it's such a nice, versatile little piece. You can put it basically anywhere you want. Sam could have taken it, etc. But it like tangibly hurts Dan's deck. It does, unless um, Dan plays into the well. I want to play Gaia's Cradle, so I will take uh, what was the first one? No, the one that explodes evidence. in its doctors. 
Oh, uh, Thopter Assembly? No, no, no. Oh, Hanger Back. Hanger Back. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. For Ain't sure. no Hanger Back Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't no Hanger Back Girl. So, did you know that when Hanger Back Walker got spoiled, no one thought it was going to be a good card? And I bought 187 of them. Jeez. And then I listed them for sale through my friend's store after they reached, uh, I think it was $15. Uh, after I bought them for 50 cents each, thanks to a friend of mine giving me the hot tip. I had played it at the week one standard tournament um, that then a friend of mine would go on to top eight the standard pro tour Ooh. with a very similar version of the deck that I had tested at that event. And I had just bought, uh, at the event, I think they had a four uh, a four card, or a two play set limit at the SCG event yep. that I was at. So I bought my two play sets and then every single person that I could get to, I handed them like five bucks and made them yeah, go get two that. play sets. Yeah, yeah. And after the day I had, yeah, literally almost 200 Hangerback Walkers. I made I made enough money for like three months of rent off Jeez. Hangerback Walker. It was a wild time. I think we did that with uh, Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Oh, because that's, that's a good that That's when good Star one. City put their opens on release weekends yes. so we just and that tracked... card, that was pretty under the radar until the pro tour uh yeah the moment they released the top eight and we started combing through deck lists we were like geez glint sleeve siphoner is in the majority of these lists and mm. i think troll and toad uh was a magic vendor rest mm -hmm, in peace mm -hmm. that would list every single copy of a card they had mm. so, you so you, all of them yeah you just go to troll and toad and you select Beautiful. all 250 <laughs> Oh, we got a big, we got a big reanimate. pick here. That reanimate, I think, is actually so brutal for poor Jacob's deck. I think Jake should have picked reanimate already. I wanted to bring it up a couple times. That grief, that thoughtsies, you want that reanimate your deck so bad. And Mark, I don't know if he's planning on playing it. Uh, it would not surprise me if he is. You know, Lab Man, Thoracle, Shield Red. These are all really reasonable reanimate targets. But the fact that he can take that, maybe play it himself. And hate on Jake's deck so much. Oof, yeah, that's brutal. I don't. That's so. This is why I asked if we thought we would see Jake flex, Jacob flex into a sec, into a third color, mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. Jund or Grixis or Bardu, means you might not necessarily want something like Reanimate because that's just not your plan to victory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say this: <coughs> um, I am a big proponent of a very powerful. A strategy in this format being to fixate on the green black removal spells, yep. abrupt decay, assassin's trophy, uh, maelstrom pulse, etc. Uh, and Jacob could do that if he wanted to. He has a lot of the stuff going for him that that he would like to have in that world. So Brandon takes his like fifth signature card, Nissa, who shakes the world, his favorite. He loves it. It's he a good said card. you might have gotten my hex drinker, but you ain't. But I'm here with... to game. All right. Thank you very much. All right. I think now we can see between GT, Skydiver, and Truning Nemesis that Jago's looking is in to fact planning on beating down. Yep, just staying low to the knows. ground. Honestly, that makes a lot of sense because when you have a card like Oko in your deck, when you have cards like Time Walk in your deck, it's not that those cards aren't always good. Mm -hmm. They always are. But if you can use them to really pressure your opponent's life total, they get even better. I yes. mean, Oko's great, but Oko, when he's making three, when he's not only answering every single card your opponent plays for the entire game, mm -hmm. but when he's also punching your opponent in the face for three along with your other three power flyers and creatures, then you really got some cooking. Absolutely. Cooking. Yep. I don't know if Dan will eventually pick up Cradle, but I think this is a spot where you can pick it up and feel okay about it because the rest of the draft is just going to go your way. Um, yeah, you I mean, you could see a, a player like Sam potentially taking Cradle. I'm a big Cradle Plus Academy fan. Yeah. Oh, that is a... <laughs> I didn't believe... So I understand the power of it in Vintage. I didn't understand the power of it in Vintage Cube until mm -hmm. I started seeing Retrofitter Foundry, like we said, hard evidence, and a lot of these cards that just ancillarily make either creatures or artifacts, or both, and they play... So Cradle and Academy play very well together. At this point in time, if I'm Dan, the only thing I'm worried about losing are my sideboard bullets for Karn. But it seems like everybody's just kind of moving down the, their list. Nobody's going to take Lattice. Nobody's going to take Bridge. Nobody's going to take uh, Soul Guide, Lantern, whatever, right? And I think we are, are, we're looking at a very straightforward draft from Dan. Sam, I'm still kind of confused about. We have Fast Bond and some cards to play after Fast Bond. Sam's a big Fast Bond guy. He, uh, he does love Fast Bond almost as much as different Brandon does. He's drafted it in a, a few different drafts. He, yep. he likes it a lot. So, the last time Sam drafted a VRD with us, mm -hmm. um, a couple months back, uh, he drafted a beautiful Fast Bond combo deck. Uh, unfortunately, his main win con was Dark Depths, 
or I'm sorry, it was, yeah, Dark Depths, and he forgot to draft a Thespian Stage, which was a bit of a bummer. Yeah, you got to thaw that one manually. That was a, that was a rough one. Yeah, um, which he could do, mm-hmm. making infinite mana off the fast bond, but it was it was tough. Mm-hmm. It was tough. We had to um, deal with a weird ruling where uh, he had Vestiva in his deck, and the idea that you could Vestiva your Dark Depths and make a twenty twenty that way. Oh, okay. Uh, with, and like, you know, I can understand it because if you don't play those formats or you don't really think about it too much, yeah, you yeah. can kind of see. How you can make that mistake? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, to... I make a copy of the Dark Depths and that makes the twenty twenty. Which is the same thing as Thespian. They both stage. go away. Yeah. You make the twenty twenty. Which is exactly what happens when you make a copy with Thespian Sage. Just one little difference, <laughs> being that it's already in play versus coming into play. Yep. And suddenly you're like, oh, hmm, that's not. Exactly yeah, I'm used to um, Vesuva kind of entering the battlefield and copying a Simic Growth Chamber in Modern. Mm, so, yeah, 100%. so I, not to say I wouldn't also be tripped up by the same thing, but I understand that because I'm already focused on what it does in a format right. that I have experience mm-hmm. with both well, playing the deck and playing against it. Yeah, and Magic's such a complicated game. When you start to shortcut things like that, like yep. this is how this interaction works in my mind, you don't have to think about it step by step by step. You know? That's why, so we talked about fourth Eerlingus up top, and I think a lot of the smaller interactions that mm-hmm. happen with that card, the, the full list was I don't think any one person understood that. It was just this knowledge that crept out of somebody noticed, oh, you can just cast this for two and gain the monarchy with your Delver or your Swift Spear or your uh, Dragon's Race Channeler. Mm-hmm. Or you don't have to actually begin the subgame of the monarchy when you attack your opponent's Planeswalker mm-hmm. kind of stuff. 100%. So it just broadened that scope. I, I equate a lot of this to driving. When you start driving a vehicle, mm-hmm. when you learn, your vision is very much focused right in front of you. But the more you do it, the more your vision opens up, so you get to see more around you with less effort. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I 100% agree. I remember when I uh, started learning to drive, my mother would tell me, like, oh, when you've got the incoming car, you've got those super bright lights in your face, focus on the the white line on the side of the road. Yep. You know, that way, if you're on that line, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, you, you focus on these little things, and then as you get a little bit more comfortable, you be a little bit more confident, the world opens up around you. It's yeah. beautiful. Um, we got oh hey we got a we natural order a and behind. attraction ooh okay so Sam's doing something that I really love this is like anyone who's been playing vintage cube draft on MTGO you're gonna know this is uh, a, the printing of Atraxa has been such a huge deal uh, in cube Let's... because now you have another guy um, Atrax. Grand Unifier. Uh, yeah, Grand Unifier. You have a new card that you can now hit with Natural Order. Mm-hmm. This is a green creature. Beautiful, giant, draws you a million cards when it comes to play. Impossible to beat on the board. Draws. Just Vigilance and Lifelink and Which flying. Is important for whole Breacher. It doesn't True. actually draw. And Bowmaster that we're seeing, you yep. know, so doesn't even, yeah, really the best of both worlds. Uh, and then you and you have this unbeatable thing on the board. So this mm. is a great target to natural order into. It's also a great card to flash in, yes. which has been a new addition to the last two iterations of the Moto Cube is they've put flash in. And flash, turns out, works with a lot of the best sneak attack, reanimate, natural order sort of targets, mm-hmm. whether it's Woodfall Primus or World Spine Worm or Atraxa. Um, you can Ooh. get those comes into play. You know, in the world of Lux, Magic yes. 2023, um where you evaluate creatures based so heavily on their comes into play triggers. Mm. I mean, even the evoke elementals. Flash, turns out this is a pretty great card. Really I was card. wondering if we were going to see anyone who's been playing those Moto Cubes. I wonder if Flash was going to be on anyone's yep. mind. So one of, the, one of the picks that just seems kind of, you know, par for the course is Sensei's Divining Top for Dan. It makes sense yep. in the artifact deck. You can just play Honestly. it off. If he wants to play some kind of weird ticky-tacky interaction with Helm of, is it Helm of Obedience mm-hmm. and or Ethereum Sculptor, you can basically just play Top Helm for Awakening. free. Awakening, yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Top for free. But that takes Helm, that takes Top away from Steven, which is one of the easiest ways to trigger Prowess on Monastery Mentor. True. So we might True. actually, so if Steven... If there was the option for Steven to move into Mentor, this is kind of a knock against that. Yeah, it's kind of the old Bomberman idea of like, yeah. you know, Sensei's Divining Top not only gives you this uh, way to spend your mana and these combo options, et cetera, et cetera, also gives you a way to cast a non-creature spell every single turn. Yep. So for a card like Monastery Mentor, the Bomberman decks used to play this, uh, you know, Mentor in order to get a million triggers off all your little Cheerios. Loop two. Um, and you can just, yeah, sit there and bang these Sensei's Divining Tops back and forth and just make yourself a bunch of stuff. Yep. So that's pretty nice. Yep. Um, if we see Dan picking up anything, 
you know, there are, there are a few different things he could probably draft that give him some benefit to casting non-creature spells uh, repeatedly. Could oh, for an, sure. Could be an interesting option for him. I think Sensei's Divining Top is just good in the deck anyway. It's another yeah, artifact right. for Academy. Mm-hmm. It helps spin through, it helps fix your draws. So I think it's just yeah, sometimes you make overall. a lot of mana and you really need to just find something. Yeah, you know? yeah. You, and that helps a lot. Exactly. Like, Urza is a great way to dump excess mana and uh, SDT helps you get to Urza. Boy, Jago and Brandon just... We should get both of those guys in for the 15 pick interview, and we should just be like, so. I don't know if I do hate each other. Yeah, there's nothing in here for breaks. You and I just might be going just, straight through. Just straight, just straight. Might. I, yeah, I don't know. If you know what? Honestly, I'll take it. Yeah, same. I don't mind. So I like Questing Beast in this spot from Jago, but unless we pick up a little bit of fast mana, I'm actually kind of worried about it making the deck. I like the idea of Questing Beast, I should say. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. If, like, I need to see a little bit more before I'm happy with it making the 40. It would surprise me if. Uh... <sighs> Jago came up with some mana dorks. Uh, mana dorks are generally nice in the blue, uh, the blue green deck. Yeah, you right. Know, give yourself access to more mana. You can hold up some counter spells. You can play, you know, your three and four drops accelerated a little bit. That You're... makes a lot of sense to me. He hasn't yet. It wouldn't surprise me if we saw a card like Noble Hierarch kind of. Ooh, in way in there. Lelia, very um, powerful. Everybody loves Lelia. Lelia. So does, is it Clapton? There's a song about that. The Lelia version. Just got to remember how to spell it. Yeah. Um, great, great card. Everybody loves that. I know um, our friend Noah, who played in the last one of these, he said it's one of his like three or four favorite cards at this point. You know, one of his favorite. Uh, you know, he's got the Minsk and Boo and the Lelia. And he yep. just absolutely loves so it. So I, I wonder, the, there is a bit of a rub here with Mana Dork. So we're talking about that. So mm-hmm. uh, right now, Jago is kind of solidly on the plan to take uh, Noble High Arc. I think so. Because there's blue green here. Now, Brandon is in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Naya. He could take Noble. He could take, take Ignoble. Noble. Exactly. Um, any of them could still take Green Zulu. Um, there's that option too. So there's just, but between those two, there's just yeah. that little bit of rub around mm-hmm. Noble. Well, and you've seen them going back and forth. Uh, so many of the cards in either of their lists could have been picked by the other mm-hmm. player, and they're right next to each other. So you see, that's the second time I think Jago has taken a card that's like. It's, Brandon's almost known on the Discord. Now, Jago might not know that. He is uh, not an active disc, uh, VRD Discorder, so he might not know that the joke is that Brandon is the Hex Drinker requesting Beast. Ah, guy, okay. You know? yeah. uh, but it would not surprise me if Swifty was right there telling him, hey, if you're interested in Hex Drinker requesting yep. Beast, so, any of these green cards. I want to make sure. Venser, get him coming this way. This, this Venser, this is Venser the creature, right? Not Venser the Planeswalker? I believe you are correct. Okay, because we had Caracas picked up earlier, so now with V-Click and Venser, we have that little We've got loop. the little package. We yep. got the we got the wizard train rolling, baby. Yep. So we have two wizards. Um, oh, maybe. And that's, you know. That's oh, a, and Snap. Wait, maybe yeah. we could take um, the, oh, the counter spell. From Dominaria. Oh, not just interesting. The, I, you were thinking of the the. I was the, thinking of Riptide Laboratory, my yep, man. Sicker Forty Two in the chat. So there's he that. Knows, there's also the um, the Lord of the Rings. Um, yes. Is it spell yeah, yeah. that I can't remember mm-hmm. the name of right now? The Flames of Anor. There you go. So mark with Git Probe into Chrome Mox. Oh, feels like a really late Gitaxian Probe. Let me tell you, Gitaxian Probe just the I, best blue camp. I probe. feel like that was taken out from underneath Jago. I think, honestly, I think literally Is it Jago every, or Jago? Uh, are we one. playing Killer Instinct either one. or are we... Either one. I call, him, I call him Jago. Okay, for Jago. For the most part. Like Drago. But Jago Drago. could be better for emphasis, you know? I, it's, Jago, it's better for your Killer Instinct fan, I'll tell you that much, because that's been much a zero-day right. character. Yeah. Oh, okay, there you go. So there, there we go. I, th- now I think Jago is to Killer Instinct as Liu Kang is to Mortal Kombat, and mm, uh, the UN okay. Ken are to Street Fighter. Oh, okay. I'm not really cool. up on my Killer Instinct lore, because they've only made like four games. As opposed to every other fighting game franchise, which is now on its like eighty seventh game. Yeah, yeah, including you know, the Marvel series. Welcome to Tekken yeah. fourteen. <laughs> yeah, like Capcom will fight its characters against anybody on this planet, it, but and Marvel <laughs> is right now like their bread and butter or has been for a while. Absolutely. So Mark's going to be floating Doomsday. We know that much. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, so- yeah, I was going to say Gitaxian Probe could have ta- been taken by any of the other seven drafters. This might draft, be the trap though and, like, that I mentioned. Where now they're going to oh, where St. Louis let let a lot of these spells float mm-hmm. and now they're going to come in and force that move this yeah is it makes a lot of sense for oh, okay. swifty to go oh we've got the gitaxian probe down here uh well we had the break put in true, around 17 true and round 17 instead of 15 oh okay odd half delighted halfling okay for brandon so he so this makes a lot of sense so i was going to say earlier um brandon with his multicolored madness would love a card like birds of paradise because ignoble hierarch noble hierarch 
might be hitting a color that he's not particularly in. For might sure. be hitting blue or black where he's not necessarily looking to be in. But Delighted Halfling kind of gives you the best of both worlds. Can hit for some damage, can attack mm -hmm. for, you know, can pressure a planeswalker. Also has the two butt so it doesn't get shot by Ren and Six. Also taps for multicode planeswalker mana, which is really important. Well, multicolor legendary mana, which you've lost out on, on Questing Beast already. The only reason I don't like this pick is because of, like I said, that little bit of friction you have uh, with Jago, and that if you take Noble Hierarch here, it's still two thirds, and yeah. nobody else has any kind of good. Yeah, I don't think use. Jago's going to take Halfling. Yeah, exactly. No, I agree with you. I think it's better, and I think that's one of those really. I think it's a tough when you're in it and when you're drafting. I think it's a really hard thing to evaluate. Like, well, I want these three mana dorks. Yeah. Does it matter what order I take them in? I mean, in a lot of drafts, it won't. You can table them through everybody. Yeah. You know, who cares? If you're... But in this kind of draft, where you really know you're looking at another guy who's drafting blue-green, who doesn't have any fast mana in his Time Lock deck yet, you're like, uh, maybe it's a better idea. For One me. thing I want to check. So there, you, know? you might, you could think that Sam wants to cast that Atraxa, or that Atraxa, right? Ooh, sure. In which case, Delighted Halfling works perfectly. Is Cauldra complete legendary is what I'm trying to find out oh, now. Interesting. If mm -hmm. it is, then Delighted Halfling, uh, the, the colorless model works for it. Color. It makes it uncounterable. uncounterable. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Absolutely. That, that's the sense. only other play it stands out for. Is mm -hmm. You have both uh, Jago and Sam with two... Uh, targets is the wrong word here, but Jago has Oko mm -hmm. and Questing Beast. Sam has just Cauldra complete and Atroxa. So that's yeah. an op those are options there. So it yeah, could... Sam's deck is a little is a little befuddling to me. It looks like now he's moving more towards this idea of this green creature deck with his natural order. That makes a lot of sense. That's why I said before I really wasn't I really wasn't sure where Sam was going after mm -hmm. the Cauldra pick. If we're just steaming along to uh, some green chonkers, then mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I, I kind of get it. But we want I think we want another color to go with this. We need to mm -hmm. get to those creatures. We need Green Sun Zenith might still be. Uh, in order here, but we have mm -hmm. like worldly tutor. We have yeah. Well, I want to make sure. Magus so there's the like order. a trap that people fall into all the time with this, and I want Sam to save himself from picking a card like Channel. Channel would be a disaster for him right now. Doesn't mm -hmm. work with natural order nope. really at all. It's a, it doesn't work there. Doesn't work with a lot of anything that he could put in his deck like Flash, uh, because all the Flash creatures that you want to put in off your natural order, like, off all your stuff, so are going to have pips. Do you think so you Sam's wanna... past that fork in the road where it could be either like the the, the natural order Flash stuff or Channel, or are we still heading towards? I think towards he has. That? No, okay. I think he has. I think he's solidly away from anything like that. Okay. However. I've drafted with so many people over the years who really like putting channel in their green combo decks. Mm -hmm. Just wholesale across the board. Um, now, if we saw Sam doing something dedicated to like channel and sneak attack yeah. and big creatures, because those, that those... would make a lot of sense. Yes. But when you pick natural order, you're really splitting. You've already pivoted. You're, yeah, you're, you're already far down the left okay. lane. I wasn't sure because to me, natural order into Atroxa, that, those two together... Mm -hmm. Because Atroxa requires so many colors, tells me that you've already gone down that path. If Atroxa wasn't the choice here, if it was Woodfall Primus, uh -huh. where you only or only does it require two or three green pips, uh, you mm -hmm. could still channel into it in the mid to late game mm -hmm. and have the rest of your your colors left over. But you could event you could pick up Eldrazi, mm -hmm. Blightsteel, Colossus down the line. Tell tell me if this makes sense to you. If I am Swifty and I am Jago, I see Mark pick a Gitexian probe, mm -hmm. and I think to myself, oh shoot. I probably should have taken that at some point. I'll take a cantrip now instead. And I'm Swifty, and I'm like, what's the best cantrip? Mm -hmm. It's probably Ponder. Now, did someone else take Ponder? Nope, Ponder person? has not been taken. Ponder hasn't been taken at all. Okay. Well, then, very weird, uh, since Ponder's the best cantrip. Does Swifty play a lot of modern? Spirit. No. None okay. of these guys play a lot of constructed magic at this point, I don't think. The most would be Jake, I think. Honestly, probably out of the entire draft, Jacob Key is probably the man who plays the most okay. constructed magic. Um, but, what, and follow me on this one. Um, you're sitting here, you're like, okay, I want to pick a cantrip, I, I pick Prayer in. Mm -hmm. And then two seats later, Jago picks Consider. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you rather have Consider in your deck with Snapcaster Mage? I would hold Maybe hard. that's a little, that's a little thing, but boy, howdy, if I'm literally on a team with this person, we can communicate and we will, well, we both want to so pick some. there are a lot of elements here that speak to my core. Uh, I was a Storm player in Legacy for a very long time, so the sequencing of Ponder, Preordain, and Brainstorm mm. are, are... Uh, we don't have the time for that conversation. <laughs> in right, modern, yeah. until uh, Scam as we knew it became a deck, oh. I played Bant Stoneblade, and I 
was sta a staunch advocate for the fact that Consider belongs in certain decks where Opt is worse. I'm playing al almost every creature in that deck has Flash, except for Stoneforge Mystic. Mm. Snapcaster Mage is in that deck. And when you play Stoneforge Mystic again, alongside Snapcaster Mage, the last thing you want to do is consider into Cauldra, Batter Skull, or one of the swords you're running, and have to put it in the in graveyard. The graveyard. Exactly. That's a lot of sense. But That's with Snapcaster Mage here and no Stoneforge Mystic, mm -hmm. I think consider is the much better option here because mm. of exactly that interaction mm -hmm. that you have. You know, consider is a really good cantrip. It puts stuff in your graveyard. You can use it to uh, fuel up some delve spells and exactly. things like that. That we could see Swifty go down that road. You could see him put something like a Thought Scour in his mm. deck. Again, working with that, you know, getting that marginal value with the Snapcaster Mage, getting the marginal value with like the Treasure Cruise. Um, you're already not drafting a bunch of fetch lands, so you're gonna have to fill up your graveyard if you want to use some delve spells, and you presumably do want to use some delve spells. Yes. Almost every you want to be doing something with your graveyard. It's yes. too valuable a resource not to not use. So you want to have something, whether it's a delve spell, whether it's a reanimate spell, whether it's a create cards with flashback, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. You want something going on there, and seems a little odd to me. I wonder if there was any thought put into that decision or whether it was more of a Swifty wanted to take the best cantrip, so he did, and then Jago said, well, I want to take a good cantrip too, and he did. Yeah. The fact that neither of them took Ponder is a little bit weird to me. That's why I asked if Swifty plays a lot of modern. Here's our my duel. man Sam coming in with the Ignoble Hierarch and the Green Sun Zenith on the end. Yep. The only thing I dislike about Ignoble Hierarch is that it taps for red, which is not in Atrox's colors, so Noble Hierarch is better here, and I think that signals that Jago should be taking Noble Hierarch before it gets to Brandon. I think yep. that is a clear signal I think that's here. what we're about to see. I think that um. makes a lot of sense. I think if we don't and we let it float to Brandon, I would not be surprised if Brandon took it. Yep. So. so the reason we'll I asked about... I, Swifty in regards to modern is that mm -hmm. you don't have ponder, you have preordained now. True. So a lot of people have that experience. Right off the top of your head. Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, I've been jamming uh, Sneak and Show in Legacy, so I have access to all. Th There's Noble from Jago. It's perfect. There you go. Makes um, a lot of sense. So I have access to all three: Brainstorm, Ponder, and Preordain. And I can tell you for a fact, the way Legacy is right now, Preordain is hands down the worst in that deck versus mm -hmm. compared to Storm, where it where it could be actually the best of the three. Mm, that makes in, a lot of sense. And Sneak and Show, you often sideboard out Preordain. So it is very surprising mm. to see Swifty take Preordain over Ponder mm -hmm. without having that kind of slanted experience towards a format where you only have access to one of those three. Mm, sure. Yeah, that, made, that does make a lot of sense. And, it's, it's honestly a little odd to me. I can see you saying, well, Ponder's not quite as good if you don't have fetch lands to get rid of that you know third card that sometimes For you sure, want. yeah. Um, so I could see how you could get there in your head but ah ponder going one card deeper it's just nice it's exactly just really nice. and in in theory preordain can see and as many has no cards in it. It, can, nope. it comes back to him and he says no still no care still no want it preordain can see that many can see three cards if you dislike those two but then the third one or may the remains a mystery so to mm -hmm. your point yeah mm -hmm. Ponder and now we be... see Brandon picking up the Tundra and Swifty picking the Hollowed Fountain in response saying I don't want to get accidentally hated off of it yep. I want to make sure that I have a land and you know, not to say that it's going to make a big deal because of what's one shock land, but Brandon pressuring Swifty and taking that Hallowed Fountain, is it going to give Steven an extra percentage point that will, you know, it, trying to get you yeah, with your it, life total matchup? I, I don't know. Could it? It might. It might I, I kind of like how Brandon is able to exert influence uh, in both directions of this draft. It seems like he is. It seems like he's... You know, he's in the river. He's changing the tide. He's right? rubbing he's, elbows. Mm -hmm. If you ain't rubbing, you ain't racing. He's 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 moving. He's grooving. Yeah. Now we'll see Swifty. So the brainstorm gets picked up. Makes a lot of sense. Mark's deck. Uh, brainstorm gets a lot of there's hate. Ponder. But uh, there's Ponder. Okay. okay, perfect. So it actually, I, w I wouldn't have been shocked if Mark would have taken Ponder and Brainstorm there. Brainstorm okay. is a card that gets a little bit of hate sometimes. You know, people kind of talk about it not being as good in cube, not being as good in format, so you don't have consistent access to fetch lands. You don't, well, but for Mark and potentially playing Doomsday, Brainstorm can be the best. Mark also has uh, four ways to shuffle his library already. He has two tutors mm -hmm. and two fetches. 100%. So we are all... he, did he pick up Vamp Tutor? He yes, did he did. Pick up Vamp tutor. He's got Vamp, Love Mystical. It. And he's got Tinker. Oh, yeah. I don't know. There's no key yet, and uh, without Blightsteel, I don't know if we'll actually see Mark play it. I don't... Mm, Again, I Mark seems like the kind of guy that would tinker for a bl uh, bolus of citadel. You know I so? yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, I was gonna say it. Phyrexia. I was gonna say it depends on what comes out later from the draft. I would want to see more cards like that. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mark Mark's deck has the opportunity to go into. You can set a haymaker on top. 
It's volcanic island to make a lot of sense for Brandon, as opposed to some. There's no I mean, blue flex yet, so I don't quite hating understand on, it. Hating on everybody else is fine. That's maybe that's where his head's at. But volcanic island seems like the worst land. Taiga is actual. Death. Taiga is still I mean, it's available. A, it's a blue source that you can fetch off of Bloodstained Mire, which is cool. But yep. I think you see what Sam's doing down here, and you think I would rather just hate a dual land that he could be playing. But I, like the tropical island, for instance. Tropical island would have been really nice. Brand yeah, deck, but it seems like. Taiga is still available. So unless Brand was like, I'll just wait on Taiga. I don't understand why he would take volcanic over. No, anything volcanic else. seems very weird to me. I think I think tropical and Taiga are both better than volcanic in the spot. So I would want to make. That. I would agree. I have unless, to ask him about it about this very intense very important pick yeah i don't unless there's a plan for blue later on we just don't see it yet right now he's now uh, nah, he could just move into the omnath yeah. pile yeah yeah and which like, makes a lot of sense yeah it's, and and you know having um having dual lands that uh touch off on ancillary colors for things like um leyline binding and prismatic ending yep. make a lot of like sense. we talked about earlier especially yeah. now because the duels are still on the table mm -hmm. so we don't have to worry about the that mm -hmm. triome pick. So we yeah, but I mean Jago would have been genuinely burned a little bit by the tropical island pick. So I'm a little eh, it's not not maybe the pick that I would have made. Yeah. So shame shame, Brandon. Shame shame. Well, yeah, if you didn't want to ruffle some feathers. Mm. So Yeah, we hate ruffling feathers around here. Yeah, right. Mm. Because nobody, nobody is clearly on the Volcanic Island deck. Like, Mark True. could flex yeah, into uh, Grixis, or, or uh, Jacob could flex into Grixis, and either one of those could mm -hmm. pick up Valk. Um, 100%. In our pre-show <clears throat> pre interview, when I talked to Mark and the St. Louis crew uh, about what they thought might be an overrated archetype or strategy that the Chicago group might be trying to employ here, mm -hmm. um, they cited immediately... Splinter Twin or Blue Red Delver decks. Yep. They thought 100% for sure that was going to be... Uh, in our last team draft, we had two of our players draft Blue Red Delver and Blue Red Twin next to each other uh, in the draft, yeah. just hating on each other's cards the entire time, eating each other alive. So they said, we bet they're going to do a similar thing this time. We bet they're going to draft some Splinter Twin Delver yep. tempo decks. And weirdly enough... There are no blue red decks coming out no, from I, the group. I mean, from all eight seats, no one's playing just like that classic blue red Delver deck. I think uh, St. Louis didn't have the. the idea that Chicago was going to be drafting, I don't believe, uh, dedicated archetypes so they mm. under but they wanted to understand what they needed to hate draft away if they saw it pest infestation is very good card very and good sam card. did exactly what st louis expected where if you put painter servant up or you put grindstone up somebody is most likely going to pick it now do you think steven really wanted to play painter servant grindstone i think given the opportunity he would slam a two card Interesting, interesting. I swear to you, I would not put that fucking two card combo anywhere near my red white initiative deck. Get it away he has, from me. He has are you tomb. Kidding me? Oh. So he has, he has tomb. There's some city of traders who, and crystal who, vein are still on board. Who not, cares? Who cares? Who cares? If there's you have all right. City there's of traders city of traders and tomb. Oh my god! Look, you've got your beautiful, classy red white aggro deck. It's doing everything right, and then you're like, yes, perfect. I've got my opponent down to four life. All I do need to do is peel, and ba boom, you've got a grindstone in your hand. What are you doing with your life? Huh? I'm not saying it's if a handbrake. If it was any other card, come on. Like if it was any, if you put a goblin guy in your deck. Like, put a Goblin Guide in your deck. At least it's got haste and two power. Painter Servant's going to stand there just, like, doing Look, this I, scarecrow thing. I, I'm not I'm, a fan, personally. That's fine. I, I'm, I'm not in disagreement. We're just at we're just in pick mm -hmm. 16, so there's opportunity for Steven oh, yeah. to for sure. possibly have flexed into a deck that was a lot of two-card combos. You well, still have you know, Welder and Engineer on board, so there's the opportunity for shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, uh, it make, this whole line makes a lot of sense by Steven. He takes the Red Blast... Um, he doesn't have... Oh, he does have the Power Blast. So he's got the Power mm -hmm. Blast, he's got the Red Blast. He takes the Painter Servant saying, hey, if uh, if you take the Grindstone, that's okay. I I'm going to paint this, the world. This Painter Servant could do a whole bunch of different things. He has Fury as well. So you um, just name Red, yeah. and now everything can be exiled to Fury. We saw this in a sure. BRD a couple... Yeah, um, couple there, are, there are like potentially things you could do with a Painter Servant yep. in your deck. Um, which would make it not the most horrendous two-card combo that you could put in your red-white aggro deck, even though you shouldn't do that. Thank you, Seeker. Yeah. I always appreciate it when literally anyone agrees with me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so I can see the, the reasoning behind wanting that particular combo deck in this particular deck. Um, with that in mind, 
if you, as the St. Louis group, want to keep Sam from taking these combos like Painter, Servant, Grindstone, you do have to be a little proactive about it. Yep. You have to get in there first and say, hey, we're just going to take this off. But that's what I'm saying. is like I don't think this is a handbrake 180 if Steven were to get Painter, Servant, and then wheel Grindstone because you still have opportunities in front of you. So I mentioned Welder and Engineer is still available. Uh, Duretti, Artifact, Pope is still available. Yep. There are a number of cards. Uh, Enlightened Tutor is still available. There are a lot of options that dig you to this combo if that's what you wanted to do. And you have the initiative, which allows you to helps accelerate you to that. But it does yep. change the deck that you have built in front of you, where now the Stoneforge Mystic, the, the little package you have of Stoneforge mm -hmm. into Batter Skull is basically for naught at the moment. And you, now you have to build around this combo and your fast mana, mm -hmm. and try and figure out something really good to do. And does that deck shape up better than just taking uh, Goblin Guide and, you know, literally any other low to the ground red creature? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. But questionable. Exactly. Questionable. It does give you. You don't have Ragavan. Very sad. Correct, because Brandon took that one. Single tier. three. Do you think we're gonna see him do more of the mid range punchy Eldrazi creatures? Do you think he's gonna play a Thought Not Seer? Or... A uh, displacer, a um, Steven. I could see uh, playing Smasher. I, Steven has a little bit of a production towards those kind of I, things. I, he likes those. I could see. Uh, I could see Thought Not Seer for sure, and uh, Reality Smasher. I don't know if we would really see a lot of stuff because that plays into the fast mana that he has, and I think that is the best option for that. Veil of Summer. That doesn't seem early, but that seems. Um, it makes sense. Like a reach. I mean, especially if you want to just. Gack people on these uh, on these sideboard cards. You know you don't want at them having good access to for sure. But cards. you're so you mentioned earlier you only you're only playing against four other people. Swifty is in blue, Jago is in blue. Not maybe neither of which are showing. Uh, a, a, well, Jago certainly is not showing a lot of counterspell actions. No, but all you have to do but is he cast does have a the blue. Force in the days. No, all you have to do is cast a blue spell and then Val Summer's turned on. True. It cycles. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it you know. Uh, against Jago's deck, it might have enough utility against, like, Oko, Force Will, etc. I'm kind of levying for Veil in the main, basically, mm. is kind of how I'm viewed. That's why I said I think it's a oh, bit of a Oh, interesting, interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because interesting. otherwise it just... Well, I mean, Jake also is playing their black removal spell. Well, that's, right? so that's what I was getting at now. That's why I was going down the line. Mm -hmm. Swifty is in blue, Jago's in blue, uh, Jacob is in black, and Sam is in question mark. So it's like right now, yeah. mm -hmm. Sam is your only, uh, your only reason to not start that card. 100%. Because uh, otherwise it just cycles for one green, and I think mm -hmm. you're you're good. Yeah, yeah. just okay. burning. I can that. see that. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Brandon might have a pretty tight deck list looking. Uh, oh, for sure. You know, yeah, by the end of this. But uh, yeah. but if he's looking for flexible cards, especially if he's planning on doing a lot of hate drafting, it makes sense that he wants those flexible cards that he could play in his main deck. You know, no. you don't want to accidentally get stuck. Nope, not at all. So it looks like the players are going to have a little break, Skipu. Here, are we gonna? What are we? What are? What's our plan? Do we, we want to get someone in here? Yeah, we can, interviewing. We can, yeah, we can hmm? send hey, somebody in. What do you think? Uh, if you wanted to go out and grab, we could just. Grab, I think, so Swifty is basically the de facto Chicago lead. Yeah. And you want to grab Swifty and Mark, maybe? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Swifty yeah. and Mark. If you that want to grab good. Swifty, I'll take him, and then I'll yeah. send Mark in. Okay, that sounds good. I'll be right, right. here. Tell the lads an uh, epic story of, you're a dinosaur, right? Tell them some yeah. story about being old. There you go. Oh, what man. What was like in your day? Um, the songs I liked weren't on the overhead speakers at the grocery store. Um, that is probably the signpost that you know you're getting old. And I don't even mean songs that were on the radio. Like, yeah, Sell Out by Real Big Fish, Hit the Radio, which is like the most ironic thing in the world for that song. Um, but when you hear it in the grocery store, your your joints just hurt. It's just a thing that happens. It's biology. It just it just kicks in. Um, there's another, I, I had it, there's another for instance like that. But um, when it comes to magic, getting old is really interesting because we used to have a, a player named Jeff who played as everybody like the term old man magic and basically they just involved playing a lot of cards like divining witch in his Thassa's oracle deck because not a lot of people knew what those cards did not a lot of people know what those cards do and it was just these weird percentage points that he would get for having been an old head in magic for so long and it can be uh, great in that regard, uh, and it can also be a failing because you just have this old, like nebulous knowledge, and it's just kind of like, well, I'm an old man, I don't need to learn anymore how this stuff works. All right, Swift, you have a seat. I didn't even make a statement pick this time to get first interview. <laughs> well, I just wanted to cross it up, right? So yeah. I'm here to represent St. Louis, right. so that's why I got yeah. Chicago here, right? And it's just you're since you're the de facto head of the team, oh, you sure. wanted to bring yeah. in, just come in a little, a little yeah. more, nice and close. 
So how do you how do you feel about where you are in the draft? Uh, I feel very confident. I get to, you know, we kind of talked. This is where I'm comfortable. Like, white base control. Okay. Whether it's blue, black, white, or whatever. It's, I get to play, I just, I get to see what everybody's doing and I know what's important for them yep. and what to deal with. Okay, that's kind of how we talked about it is up top, Mason mentioned that not a lot of people are ready to draft control yeah. in Roach history. And I said, for me, that kind of, seems like because you have to play reactively and draft reactively. Yep. And so you have just a suite of cards that you're pulling from mm-hmm. as you see this draft kind of unfold. Is that, yeah, it's just, you know, I see there are a bunch of artifact, a couple very artifacty heavy. Mark's got Tinker Time Vault. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan's obviously very artifacty. So I've got like Stony Silence and stuff in the back of my mind there. Yep. Uh, Brandon, Brandon's very creature planeswalker heavy, so and a lot of haste. So like, flash wraths, like oh, what's the name of that card off the top of my head right now? But Rout? the four, no, it's the four settle, the settle the record. Yeah, yep. I've got it on my list downstairs, but couldn't. Okay. But yeah, so it's yeah, it's just and the nice thing is in this team draft format versus the individual. Yeah, I'm only worrying about four decks to pick against. That's what we keep talking about is how we're seeing influences in this draft based on like, okay, I have to play against four other decks, so I'm going to stay exactly. in my lane now, I'm going to pull cards that could be in contention now, yeah. kind of stuff. So. And it's nice, All the most of the blue is on our side, so mm-hmm. like we're just talking, it's like, okay, how do we want to split up the counter spells? How do we want to, you know, Jago and Sam, there's yep. talk of how do we want to split up the dorks? Like, oh, okay. Sam was trying to argue that he needed Noble Hierarch, but I'm like, you're getting all the dorks anyway. Yeah. Jago in his blue green tempo deck needs noble more. Yep. So, so you mentioned splitting splitting out the blue cards. One of the things Mason kind of keyed in on was you have force of negation. Jago has force of will. Was that just like whoever we, gets there first? We gets decided. The force? Yeah, it was originally he was thinking Snapcaster in his spot. Then it's like no, I think when we it's like Mark Mark is in first pick takes lotus even though there's a lot of talk of a lot of people taking recall first yep. instead of lotus now and so it's like mark mark wants to do combo so let's make sure both the forces on our are on our side so, so did, it didn't matter which way one or the other okay so you feel fine about having negation versus yeah. chris as well okay yeah because we figured Cause i've got enough pure counter spells now because that was a super late regular counter spell yep. So I've got enough pure counter magic. Having negation just to stop spells yep. instead of creatures, I'm fine with. Okay. So uh, Caracas, V-Click, Venser. Was yeah. that That was on the list in order? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It was, okay, Caracas is just a great card yep. in the white. There's not a ton of legendaries on their side, but then right after Caracas, Dan picked Urza, mm-hmm. which isn't the best thing to Caracas bounce but it does like might slow down it gets you a turn to deal with that on the stack again exactly so but you know getting Caracas then getting V-Click and then getting Venser and Venser was gonna go when before where Counterspell was but it was like oh Counterspell's still Still available available. let's just grab that okay so one of the things uh, Mason really liked was your discipline in pick seven and eight where Brendan and Mark around you take blue fetches yeah and you just move in on path and solitude yeah cause yeah because Brandon surprised the hell out of me and took swords. Yep. Because I was debating sword snapcaster here, mm-hmm. and I'm like, the only person I'm worried about is maybe Steven taking it. Okay. And then Brandon steals it right away, but it's like, I'm sitting here, I'm like, I'm just blue-white. Who yeah. cares about fetches? Okay. I can, you know, I grab hollowed fountain. This, again, annoyed, pick, annoyed the hell out of me. Yeah. <laughs> right before, because I was literally going to take Tundra next. But it's like, okay, I can grab one like dual dual land and then like glacial fortress Fort town all sea the crumb stuff. coast yeah just yep. easy easy duels i don't i have a i grabbed the vista on the way back yep yeah but it's like sure. yeah with swords gone i wanted to make sure i had a spell based uh removal spell to go with snapcaster and mm-hmm. then solitude's insane okay so one of the other things uh i I mentioned was we need to find uh, a good closer for the deck. You have a handful of creatures that deal anywhere from two to what is solitude four, uh, two, three, three. I think it's a three. Show. So yeah, uh, 
Are we going to look at Planeswalker closers from yeah. here? Yeah, okay. Planeswalker closers, like Teferi's a nice, it won't close out the game itself, but it's a nice thing to get me there. Uh, Wandering Emperor fits really well. Yep. It's flat, it has flash, it creates dudes, so yep. I can hold up counter magic, and when they don't do anything, it's like, all right, Wandering Emperor, and make a samurai. Yep, uh, we, we that was an expectation, expectation, Mind Sculptor, possibly, yep. yeah, and maybe Mind, uh, mind Sculptor's insane. Uh, four or six JVP. Mono. Yeah, okay. Um, and then Celestial Colonnade. Who else okay. is going to want Colonnade? All right, so you, you just want to play like a traditional. I'm just going to, yeah. I'm just going to sit here and, again, I'm only worried about four decks to like, and I know, all right, this is what you're doing. Here's where, here's my key points to stop them. Yep. All right. Ready? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you got it. All right, all right. we're going to swap out for Mason and Mark. Awesome. So everything, How's man Andrew Swift looking? Uh, everything you thought that Swifty was going to do, he will be doing. Mm, okay. That is what yep. came out came of the conversation. It makes perfect sense. And he is excited to be where he is. Now Good. Mark will be excited to be like where to I am. All right, let's get Mark in here. Mark, don't look at all the chatters telling you all the cards you should pick. Chatters, definitely don't do that. Ha, 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 ha. I'll cover up chat so I don't Chat's see it Chat's incredibly well behaved. Are they? How are we doing? How are we looking? How are you happy? Are you happy, sad? Who is winning the draft? St. Louis or Chicago? Uh, I don't know who's winning the draft. I, our plan is working. So mm -hmm. our, our plan definitely worked out. We funneled them all into blue, and we are able to try to force them to fight, fight over things uh, with themselves. And I mm -hmm. think that is happening. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's good enough, given that they have the good blue cards. Yeah, so we'll find out. Me and Peter have both talked a little bit about your guys' rope-a-dope strategy yep. for the blue cards. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So you knew seat one or two, Chicago was to take... Ancestral Recall. Yeah, we, we had it as something like, there's a 50% chance we get seat one, in which case we take Lotus. If they get seat one, I think there was like well over 50% chance that they take Ancestral. So this mm -hmm. is where it's like, mm -hmm. I think we have something like a 90% chance of taking Lotus. So that's where we spent most of our time. Uh, the idea was essentially, we're going to seed them the powerful cards, the powerful blue cards, other than the dual color blue cards. So the, uh, we want like Teferi and Oko. Uh, and Time Walk we thought was powerful enough that it was actually worth taking if we got a chance. <laughs> Obviously, that didn't happen here. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. the thing we wanted to get them to do was take things like Mana Drain, <clears throat> Force of Will, Force of Negation, and spread those cards across their field so that way we can uh, ensure that they're all in blue card, uh, heavy in blue, and it makes our cards like Veil of Summer, uh, Pyroblast, Red Elemental Blast substantially better because they work in the main deck against every deck in the field. We don't have to worry about those being silver bullets. They just are generically mm -hmm. powerful cards. And we're seeing that come together with Steven's pick of Pyroblast and Red Elemental Blast. You got it. And then he kind of just sent the little YOLO, you know, hey, we can take the Painter Servant we and almost sort of pick. preemptively prevent Sam from taking that little two-card combo, as you guys are uh, assuming might happen in these uh, eight, first and eight seats where you can pick those little two-card combos. Yeah, this one So it's like almost like, like preemptive hate draft and also a, hey, you better pick it, otherwise we're going to get you. I think it's more of the second one for us. We're thinking the same thing with uh, Dark Depths, that's main stage as well. Like, mm -hmm. at some point, uh, we're going to take one of those two, and then they have the chance of just, like, letting us have the combo if they want. But otherwise, we force one of them to waste one of these picks. And mm -hmm. worst-case scenario, we end up in the same uh, the same loss as they do, right? We both waste a pick in, uh, in pick 16. Um, totally get that. Makes obviously, sense. there's some downside because we don't get to pick who has to take it. Unlike mm -hmm. when you do take it on the wheel, like Steven did, that forces Sam to waste a pick there. Yeah, um, totally get that. So, yeah, with Sam, you know, maybe uh, are there any of the four decks here in particular that you think are looking very strong? Uh, do you think you're having um, some troubles? Where, where do you think? So, I think that. I, for, I don't really think about it that way, right? I don't, I don't care if one of their decks is a 4-0 deck and mm -hmm. if it means the rest of their decks are 1-3 decks. If that happens, mm -hmm. I'm ecstatic, okay. right? So, like, I don't think about it as, like, is one of their decks really good? Because it doesn't matter if one of the decks is good as long as we can drag the other ones down. Mm. Um, okay, I like it. But that being said, if I had to pick, I mean, I think that, like, we seeded white to Swifty pretty heavily, although I think Swifty made some pretty... Uh, pretty aggressive calls with things like taking the path to exile very early like i think that he kind Instead of like of one of the blue fetch lands which i know um peter was explaining to me your guys's strategy of sort of um trying to take all the blue fetch lands in one one quick sweep that was the idea um, it's, it's and passing them right through the most blue player right and having him 
just completely ignore it. Just say, fuck well, it. He care. didn't, he didn't see it for the first one. Right. So he didn't see it for the first one. And then, uh, yeah, he passed it back the other way and then finally got the prismatic on the wheel. But the idea of, of all of this is reduce the number of colors they can play. So basically funnel them into blue and then force them to be at most two colors because they don't have the fetches to support, um, a three color or four color deck. Mm -hmm. And that way we, it, it like allows us to limit their card pool of options. Yeah, sure. Uh, they're, they're 15th through 23rd cards in their deck really struggling at that point when they're eating eating their own card pools yes oh. when, when i look at the sense. best deck in the field i think jacob far and away like i think he just kind of got free reign on black uh mm -hmm. obviously i have black cards but i'm not it's, it's a very different kind of deck i would love jacob's to have a lot of the cards great. yes mm -hmm. but we kind of we kind of just like seeded yeah you're gonna no, have Dan, all the great black Dan's cards deck looks great your deck looks great switchy's deck looks great steven deck steven's deck looks great i mean really that I, guy is there, popping off. there are no bad decks in this field right now and i think that there's like a I said this as I walked in. I, I've never felt more flustered or prepared in a draft at the same time. It's just like completely wild how much, like we put a lot of time into making sure that we knew what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. And obviously none of like no plan survived first contact with the enemy kind of, of course, situation. Yeah, naturally. yeah I was going to say but they seem have to of... have counter foxed you a little bit by taking those Teferis and those Okos so early. Those cards you specifically said you didn't want them to have, but, but they managed fine. to just, you know... Like honestly, it forces them into having. It forces them into being those two colors, right? Like yeah, if, right. If, if they're the flags early, right? If they're trying to take Oko and play, like it, he's not going to be going into four color with that Oko list, which is 100%. good, right? Like it, yeah, if, if they get those, and and they don't have the fetches to support going multicolor, that still also works for the plan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely makes a lot of sense to me. Well, I'm very excited to see where you guys go with the rest of your draft. Uh, yeah. I'm very excited. You got any called shots? You want to tell us something that's going to happen here? You're going to see the future pre pre watch a little bit? No, I mean I, th I have no idea what's going to happen at some point. Uh, so far, things are going according to plan, though. Things are going to plan, but also we we all very much like understood walking into our decks that mm -hmm. we have a starting point of the first five to ten cards, and then from there it's a branching strategy, right? Mm -hmm. So like right now, actually for my next pick, I still don't know what I'm going to pick right now. There's kind of like two to three big forks that in the road that taking the next card is correct for either any of those forks but they're mutually exclusive so i don't know what we're doing people are upstairs talking right now looking at the different the three different lists i have right now yeah, to yeah. tell me what i should take when i come back well i'll let you get yeah. back to your team good luck we Thank are going to be waiting in with bated breath and high anticipation to see what comes out of the st louis crew for the next 15 picks i think we're walking we're walking into the slow part of the draft where every pick has a whole lot of weight behind it so we'll see good what stuff. happens well, remember, uh, if the chatters donate enough money, they can uh, force one of you to wear a clown wig for the rest of the day. That's true, guys. Get in there. Get in there with the donuts. Anyway, I'm going to pull up the uh, mm, chat here. Let me see how that goes. Mm. Stream chat? Is that how I do it? Oh, there we go. This has got to be the latest Moxon have ever gone, right? Which Moxon would be the latest Moxon ever gone? Mox Opal? Um, I mean, Mox Ruby isn't, certainly. Uh, there's only one sort of non-powered card picked before Mox Ruby. Pick 12 and all. No, I think, like, uh, people will take uh, a non-powered card. Uh, bef so, uh, the power being Lotus Recall, Time Walk, all five Moxes, uh, Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, and... Uh, and those 11 cards. Um, it's not super uncommon to see someone take like a colored spell before one of those 11 powered cards. So no, I, I don't think this is like a uh, uncharacteristically late mox. It might be an incorrectly taken mox. Which one? Uh, just the fact that mox ruby got taken 12th after, you know, after one non-powered card. Yeah, especially because Steven floated Ancient Tomb. Uh -huh. I'm like, why? But it speaks to what Chicago thought, which is that St. Louis would overvalue the initiative. Excuse me, the initiative. The initiative card, yeah, hundred percent. So for sure. I have, uh, and I think St. Louis might have said that uh, that Chicago would underrate the initiative cards. To be honest, mm -hmm. I actually think uh, they might have said that they were going to underrate White Plume. So, so I, I did get a chance to talk to. How much money to donate for a clown oh, wig? Well, do you want one. Peter to wear the clown wig, or do you want Mark to wear the clown wig? <laughs> That's important, <laughs> you know. Um, Unfortunately, we might not even have a clown wig on that's hand. What that's what I'm thinking. Um, we do have children, so maybe we can just have one of the children draw on them with markers or something. <laughs> um, Hilarious. Okay. So, 
Pest Infestation is uh, uh, a great card because it says up to X target artifacts. So you can destroy one artifact and make, make X a bunch pests. Of tokens. So that, that's the... Double uh, X pests. Yes, the, that's the hidden mode of that card. Mm -hmm. But uh, I talked to both teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chicago is happy with where they are. Mm -hmm. Sam is officially their... Uh, if you want to think of it as like... Their soup their hate draft guy. Their, yep, their soup mm -hmm. drafter. Yep. And they all agree by facial expression that Sam's draft is going exactly as expected. And this will be a, a f we'll figure it out. I swear, there's the some end. masochistic tendency to want to be the guy who has to take the the short end of the yep. sticks. Now, do you want to know who the soup drafter is on the St. Louis side? Um, is it Brandon? It is Brandon. Uh, makes a lot but of sense. But we would not have known that based on his list. Um, you know, I think some you know the car, picks like the volcanic island make more sense if you consider it more of a hate draft i know why he did that oh really i will tell you in a moment because oh, okay. i i, okay. I was, I was filling, filling my coffee talking to the mm -hmm. chicago, chicago team mm -hmm. and before mark came uh, out of the interview room i just what happened into brand i was looking for anybody mm -hmm. on the st mm -hmm. louis side because i needed to know who their soup drafter was and i asked mm -hmm. him point blank who is your soup drafter i know mm -hmm. you guys talked about that and he said it's me and i said that makes no sense your deck is very <laughs> your deck is very cohesive and he said what do you mean i'm like when you look at the deck when you look at the overall picture everything makes sense except for the tundra and the volcanic and he just straight shot back but all my red all my other fetches get it that's it that's why he mm -hmm. took them he took them because they're yeah, well, uh, blood saint meyer being able to grab you a, a blue source with your volcanic i i said balance. to us out there it looks like now you're just flexing into omnath so those picks those lands make sense and he said no they're just hate picks <laughs> funny yeah that's good um you know it makes a fair amount of sense in the sense that like uh the white cards make for pretty good versatile sort of picks like that yep does just look like omnath. yeah it kind of does just look like no omnath, it does to be honest 100 um, um, wouldn't ex wouldn't be crazy to see a triom. You know, you get into that five color range where you're just playing everything. Uh, Mark, in his interview, said that he, he thought um, Jacob looked like probably Team Chicago's best deck so far. The really having free reign over all the black cards. Yeah, and everything. I mean, it, because it has a definitive shape right now, I think uh, Jago has the opportunity to get there as well. Uh, it seems like a lot of what's going on is for Jago is kind of to to be seen. Um, mm -hmm. We'll get there eventually. When I was talking to Swifty, uh, we discussed um, the force of will, force of negation thing. Mm -hmm. And that was born out of conversation they're having while they're drafting about, okay, we we want to take the counter spells, so let's just split them up as best we can. Mm -hmm. And they're, they are discussing what they need and when as picks come up. Mm -hmm. And that was just kind of a free wheel uh, decision. Uh, the only really bit of contention between those two was about Snapcaster Mage and who was going to take it. Mm. And uh, there was conversation about Jago taking Snapcaster Mage in the Force of Will position, but they didn't want to float both forces to Brandon, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, well done, But Swifty is happy where he is. We discussed the Fetchland run, and he stayed disciplined because he just wants to play blue-white, and there are duels that he can... All the duels that you listed are all the yeah. duels he listed, yeah. and that was the it expectation. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it makes um, a lot of sense. Um... It's funny to I when I walked down initially and mm. talked to the Chicago players, Son Swifty, uh, and just asked them how they were feeling, like yep. how they were how they were enjoying the draft so far, who they thought were winning the draft so far. Both teams said they didn't really have a feeling on who was winning the draft per se. Mm -hmm. But it's funny that um, you know St. Louis had such this sort of cogent strategy, this idea, this meta analysis that they were going to approach the thing with. Chicago doing a lot more improv. Uh, and honestly, both parties feeling like things are generally going to plan. Yeah. You know, as far as splitting up some of their blue cards, the Chicago players are happy with that. Yeah. And that is going according to plan for the St. Louis draft. Yes. Um, what it's really going to come down to now, when I talk, when I was talking to those guys up there, they said, and I quote, "Everything's going according to plan. Now we just need to actually win the matches." You know, <laughs> because it's it would be, uh, I, I believe it was Dan who said it would be a little embarrassing. If we had this whole strategy and then it all seemingly worked out exactly as accor uh, according to plan, and then we just got our ass kicked. <laughs> That's so. One of my favorite parts about Cube is deciding how you're actually going to deal with everything after the draft. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can never remember his name. Uh, he used to be an SCG cap. Ryan Overturf mm -hmm. said one of his favorite mm -hmm. ways to play Cube is you draft, then you just play your matches out by drawing your opening hand. Flipping the next couple of cards and discussing about who would win the match. <laughs> I 
and then moving it so you can just get back to drafting again. Drafting really is the key. It is. Drafting like, is so, yeah, the best so part juiced. of the process. Yeah. I think I told this story the last time at the last VRD because mm. it just remains relevant. It's just like the draft is so much fun in this engagement. And mm-hmm. I, the, I, was, uh, I caught Swifty while I was filling out my coffee, and he said he was very hesitant to actually want to do the team draft, mm-hmm. um, yeah. like the VRD style, and he because he wanted to win. But this has become, at least through the process and into now, a very entertaining and fun event for him because of the amount of conversation that you can have with your team during the draft format and the amount of nuance there is with this. So it's kind of changed his idea about how team draft functions compared to an individual draft. I think it would not surprise me if a lot of people felt that way. I know I was pretty hesitant on the team draft Mm -hmm. format. I really like the individualized one just because of the strategy aspect of it. Um, And I think I've fully come around on the 4v4 team draft style. I think it seems like a lot of fun. I love team events the more I play Magic. Uh, In my twilight years as a a player, (laughs) uh, I stopped playing individual events. I started playing SCG teams um, because those were super fun um, when the formats were relevant to my interests. Mm -hmm. And um, I did a team sealed GP for Ixalan, mm-hmm. which was super fun to do teams in because you could have the dinosaur deck and the pirate deck and then the whatever deck, and it would all just kind of worked out beautifully. Um, and the more I play, the more I like that style of engagement because you have people to discuss with, you have people to build with ahead of time, you have people to rely on and help carry each person to indivi- into into victory. It's no longer about the individual. And if you look at a team event, as in, well, I won all my rounds, and these guys just yeah, whatever. they shit the bed. They yeah. took me down. Uh, yeah, no, I agree completely. I, it makes a lot of sense. There's a good feeling of camaraderie mm-hmm. uh, that comes along with it. And I swear, everybody that plays VRD loves talking about VRD. Yeah, and it's fun to talk about the draft while you're in it. Yeah. And I'll tell you, the worst feeling ever is when you're chit-chatting with someone else who's in your VRD about your VRD, and then they fucking hate pick your card or something. You're like, bro, I just we told just... you I was going to take this. Yeah. You just snapped it out from under me. Like, I told you I was going to float X card to 45th pick, and you took it 39. Like, what's Come wrong on, with you? Man. Hello? Yeah. Whereas this, you get all that discussion out. You get all of that fun, interactive, like, back and forth without having to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. With only having to worry about those dirty, dirty other Midwesterners trying to ruin all your fun. Yeah. And you can come up with some unique strategies strategies and unique ways to play based on what's going on across from you. So I mentioned in the, the pre-show when we were, or I guess the pre-draft, when we were talking about companions, Zerta was an idea that St. Louis had. Yeah. Not- well, Zerta's been drafted a few times, and I think it's had very good results in the times that it's been drafted. It's a tricky deck to draft. I think um, they were looking sure at it as a works. one in the forty, not an actual companion. Oh, interesting. But um, just that kind of that idea of a combo deck was just mm. where okay. interesting. Just a possibility. Um, it, it kind of came through the conversation of what does the artifact uh, deck look like. You know, is it going to be you know where Dan is right now? We're just going to play like shops. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think we might be coming back. There it oh, is. Oh, perfect. Okay. Or do we want to play something that's a little more combo-y? Jace the Mind Sculptor and Balance look like targeted picks mm. for Swifty. Mm-hmm. Now, Mark had, I think um, he just confirmed he might be doing a little bit of pivoting here. He okay. might be opening up. He obviously had some real combo, um, some pretty linear combo Doomsday sort of predilections. Yep. However, when I was talking to him, he was floating some ideas. Some ideas, you know, hey, I could kind of... Some of these cards would be quite good in my deck. Um, some of, like, uh, Swifty used that Miracle uh, creature, the 5-5 five, five Lifelinker. Uh, Triumph of St. Catherine. Yeah, good to go, yeah. Yep. Um, Triumph of St. Catherine, yeah, that's the one. Um, he used that to pretty good effect in the last team draft we had. And I saw Mark floating around. He was like, hey, you know, I could, uh, I could be taking something like this uh, and hating on uh, Swifty while also taking something that would be very good in my deck. So. Yep. I think it's very possible we see some, you know, some more interactive drafting but happening you, here. You got 45 picks you need to make, so you need to, not everything can be on plan, maybe you do have to make a pivot, or maybe you want to make a cogent sideboard 
Yeah, well, and that's, that's definitely the other thing, right? Like, is Jace the Mind Sculptor the best card in your Doomsday combo deck? Maybe not. But when you go to sideboards and your opponent boards in more interactive spells, do you want a card like Jace the Mind Sculptor to help you grind into to a later stage game yep. where you have to be more interactive? Probably. For sure. Do you want a card like Triumph of St. Catherine or uh, Shield or the Apocalypse or something to give you another element to your deck so you're not too one-dimensional? Probably I'll do. tell you right now, if Mark drafts his urn orb, I'm going to jump out my shoes because they're untied, run upstairs, and give him a high five. <laughs> Get that Zern orb balance combo going. I yeah. Love you just dump your hand, dump your lands, mm. and then take over with the Planeswalker. Now, Jardim's going with kind of an interesting Eternal Witness pick, which wonder... makes some sense with Time Walk. You know, it you does. all chain Time Walk casting. So there, you we... can do some cloning of Eternal Witness with a Phantasmal image or something like that. And going, you know, bum, 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 repeatedly like that. I'm just going to bring up this gem um, of the card. Mm, yeah, that's a fun one. Uh, Rebuying your Eternal Witness over yep. and over again. I think... Uh, what, my favorite one is Jace the Mind Sculptor with my Eternal Witness. Because yep. that's not infinite time walks, but it is three time It walks. is enough. That's a lot of time walks. Yes. So there's that. Uh, you can also loop infinitely Primal Command. Mm, yep. yeah, just, yeah, Primal but like Crystal Shard, it just takes a lot of mana to do that. So mm -hmm. you've got to be there without... You know, Sam has the fast bond. If Jago had the fast bond, then I could see that kind of plan. Um, yeah, it's <coughs> kind of funny. <coughs> Sorry, buddy. <coughs> Sam, there are options for Sam with the fast bond. While we're talking about this, um, mm -hmm. this harkens back to uh, being an old man magic player. Mm -hmm. you know, the crystal shard is up here. This is a deck called Crystal Witness, where you would basically just cycle your eternal witness to... Uh, rebuy hinders, slow your opponents down, mm. make your land drops, and then play Rude Awakening Entwined, which turned all your lands into two, creatures. Two beaters. Untap Absolutely. them and you swing through. But that deck in time could evolve to loop Primal Command with Eternal Witness or Plow Under. Mm. Now, without Eternal Witness, you can't do that loop, but that could have been something open to Sam. But there's a four mana Eternal Witness in. Yeah, Timeless Witness. Timeless mm -hmm. Witness. Mm -hmm. And do you have. Is it just four mana for that? Uh, it is, and then it's got a rebuy. It's got like the flash. I'm not even gonna look it up because we're just down the rabbit around. hole at this point of yeah, what Sam can yeah. be doing. You know, Sam's got a lot of options. Sam can do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. The fast bond's one of those cards. It's a specific card. You need to have a deck for it. Yep. There's a lot of things you can do with Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. Um, you know, you can you can do the wheeling thing. You're drawing lots of cards. No one's taken Wheel of Fortune yet. You can you can time spiral and time twister and Wheel of Fortune. Do all these different things. Yep. Um, or you can go the opposite direction. You can play like a uh, Zurin Orb and Ramanap Excavator Ooh, there's and things. Dan. So yeah, I mean, we've got a couple of interesting picks in a row. Dan takes the Lion's Eye Diamond, which is probably a card that Mark had at least think was at least thinking about, um, especially if he was planning on doing some kind of a breach historical deck. Makes a lot of sense there. Um, well, he instead, didn't flex in the blue, and Brandon has the Valk, so that might have just shut him down on the breach line because you're um, you're not out of fetchable sure, blue sure. red sources, but it, you are cut down on them. Yeah, well, and, you know, those decks can sort of cheat on that kind of thing with, like, a Lotus Petal or something, mm -hmm. you know? Um, however, at Black Lotus, <laughs> don't, don't understand this way, Black Lotus' ability nope. to fix the mana every once in a while. Um, this however, be... if Mark is talking about pivoting and doing a little bit more of a, a, of a balancey, miracle, Jason Mind Sculpture sort of thing, it's very possible Dan goes, well, then, now Ex that you mention it, exactly. maybe I'll take... Well, we know Dan loves... Uh, Underworld Breach. Well, I'm not even going to bring up that card. I'm going to bring up the card Echo of Aeons, Echo of yes, Aeons which is, might be more up Dan's alley oh, with this LED. And he plays this card a lot. Because it wheels. 32 drafts, five of those are Dan. Yeah, because it, it wheels, which plays into the Hull Breacher. Mm -hmm. You want to refill your hand as which well. Which makes a lot of sense with all your zero yeah. artifacts. And with that Lion's Eye Diamond, it like really mapped perfectly. Yeah. And you wonder if Sam should have maybe taken the Echo of Hands now to Instead of, kind of respond to Dan's shifting strategy and make a little bit of well, a... he took uh, the a twister pick? up top, which I said might, like that might've just been a purely responsive pick based on what we understand now about Sam's deck. Like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, Dan took Hull Breacher, get the wheels out from underneath him, but maybe that was the wrong wheel to take. So I'm, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that pick on twister might not have been wholly wasted in the long run, but I mm -hmm. think now is mm -hmm. clearly the wrong pick. Mm -hmm. Idea, correct. Mm -hmm. Card, 
incorrect. Mm -hmm. um, well, now we see Steven going for Crucible Worlds. Mm -hmm. Not an unplayable card in his deck since he does have Strip Mine, but it would not surprise me if he wasn't really planning on playing it. He, I think he might be planning on, you know, just keeping it away from Sam. I think there's part of that. I think there's an amount of it was floated for so long outside of Fast Bond that they know Sam's not on it, so now Steven's just looking for value to accrue with what he's got before he starts bringing in some of the picks that he knows are going to be wholly uncontested. Sure. I think that might be sure. kind of where we are right now. Mm -hmm. So, some, you know, he's got that Stoneforge Mystic, and maybe he lost the two best pieces of equipment that he can take for it, yep. but it's not like he's lacking as far as Sword of Feast and Famine or Fire and Ice. Um, there are some different, like, uh, goofy equipment, like yep. Skull Clamp and stuff. Like, there are other things in, in, to grab with it yeah. um, so, that make a lot of sense. We talked about Channel mm -hmm. shortly after Sam's pick of Natural Order of Troxxas. Did you pre-watch this? No, I did not. Oh my god. I just man, watched man, LSV sick. draft a lot. Sick. And whenever he drafts Hilarion Academy, it's usually a LED. Oh, no, sorry. Oh. I don't know how LSV always rolls into Underworld Breach. He's a madman. He, that, and people just it's pass It's hard to top eight that many Pro Tours, is what I'll say to you. My and bad. people are just willing to pass him these cards. So I'm, I, I've... I've grown to learn certain suites and packages uh, that are played together. So, mm -hmm. okay, back to Sam. We saw a natural order in Atroxa, and we believe that Sam is past the fork of channel. Mm -hmm. When we were talking about that, one of the ideas I had was, well, what if you don't play natural order, and instead you play channel, but not for Eldrazi? Something like Tooth and Nail. We have Fast Bond. You can dump a bunch of creatures on the board, and then you Tooth and Nail for a card, like you mentioned, Creator of Behemoth, which is great with Flash, which can still be in the deck, Alongside something like Avenger of Zendikar. Bing, bang, boom. Um, I think, yeah, it's not that channel couldn't be playable in those decks. It's just you need a lot of green mana to make that work. You know, you need two for the channel, and you need two, two for, the, for tooth, the tooth right? and nail, stuff like that. And at that point, it's just, it's a slower strategy. So it's not, yeah. I wouldn't say that it's impossible, but personally, it's not a road I would go down. If he wants to try it, I mean, hey, you know, I, I'm open to being wrong. I don't know why, I don't know what else comes after Crater Hoof Behemoth, when in front of it you have Pest Infestation and, like, two dorks. That's it. Like there, the, the amount of creatures to actually increase the power of is exceedingly light right now, and trying to rely mm -hmm. on Pest Infestation for what we mentioned before, which is dumping your entire suite of mana into that one spell to target one artifact and make X times two tokens mm -hmm. to Crater Hoof seems like a very tall ask. Mm -hmm. And now Cradle as well. Yeah, well, low-key, I mean, uh, it seems like with the Cradle and the Behemoth pick, Sam is saying, I'm going to take a bunch of Mana Dorks, I'm going to take a bunch of Elvish Mystics and Land of War Elves and, and uh, go that route. Yep. Now, I wonder if he's maybe pulling the trigger a little quickly here. Taking a card like Guy's Cradle, great. Um, that's yep. a really powerful card. You don't want to miss out on that no. by letting Brandon like hate it away from you. However, when you pick Crater of Behemoth, I wonder if you're jumping the gun a little bit. If you're committed to this idea that you're going to, you know, hate on people's drafts and, and try to get in the way and, and block some picks, that's fine. But you don't really have to worry <clears throat> until pick 25 as to whether or not you yeah. have a cohesive deck for yourself. L um, outside um, you of have enough cards. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, you have enough cards put together at this point. You need, you know, 10, 12 more picks yeah. to really have a cohesive deck. Yep. And if you want to draft, he had mentioned earlier, he was like, uh, I think... Maybe it was Sam who had mentioned um, drafting elves, and Jago said, "I don't know that elves is a good deck, buddy." I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, um, clamp is." Still, but you know, you really only need give them a clamp. 12, 15 picks or whatever to make to let, get all your cards for that, and you know they're not going to be contested. Like you were saying about you know Stephen maybe floating some of his cards. Yeah. Stephen getting in there throwing elbows, he's not worried about picking up the last ten cards for his deck. He no. knows they're coming way down the line. Yeah, exactly, he yeah. doesn't care. Um, okay. Jago's right. still taking those great cards, scavenging units. We haven't seen him pick up Endurance yet. Endurance would be really good in his deck, especially if he's got counter spells in his yeah. deck, because holding up Endurance and like a Cryptic Command or something, ugh, okay. busted. Archon is. Archon of Amiria, yes. That is our beautiful make lands come into play tapped. Ah, the make three drop, that's right. Creatures come into play. I play tapped. too much Archon of Cruelty to remember what Archon of Amiria does. Mm. Um, and there's Blazing Honestly, Archon, which is forever ago, a dredge sideboard card. <laughs> Honestly, if you could play Archon of Cruelty off of a Plains and a Mana Crypt, I think you'd be in pretty good shape. I'll also agree with that time. one. But yeah, I, I think... no. If I'm Sam and I'm looking down the draft, unless the team is telling me to take Crater Hoof, I need to take Crater Hoof right now, I don't know who else would want to take Crater Hoof, so I just keep floating that card until I have a critical mass of threats. Which one? Cabal Archon? Yeah, we got a shout out for Cabal Archon in the in the chat. 
Seeker 42 coming in strong. He must have some great Cabal Archons. I have, this is not Cabal Therapist. Oh, no, I know. That this is, is a not. great This is a great Tribal Cleric card. Yep, this is the, um, the Infinite Life deck in Standard from that period when people thought, oh, we'll beat Ravager Affinity another way, and Starlet Sanctum was a card people looked at. I oh. will tell you that deck um, went O for X in every large event. Mm. I always wanted to make a beautiful uh, black white cleric deck for EDH. I always thought that would be a fun deck to I play. I mean, you can helm nice, it with Athreos, nice and that gets a lot of the work done. Kind of deck. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, okay, I'm cool. I'm going to sacrifice this cleric to Starlet Sanctum. Do you want to pay three? Or am I just going to get this one back? And when it happens all the time, that's all you're doing, you're just sacrificing clerics and clamping them, and like, it's you could play, um, not, is it, Dark Archon or whatever. There's a, a Darkon. Yeah, Darkon. That's how we know it too. Uh, is that the that's the six six from Legions that could be sourced by sacrificing six of its clerics? Mm, I believe also that is a card. Legions. Yeah, I wouldn't have known that that's what it was called, but um, maybe I can't. Probably not called Dark Archon. Oh, is, I think it's dark, is it Dark Apostle? Is that the one that you said? Dark up. Apostle, isn't that the, the little? Oh no! Oh never no! Mind. This is a whole different thing. I've never seen Shadowborn that Apostle. Maybe the one next non-creature spell you cast has Cascade. Busted! Oh my Cascade. god! Wait, just kidding. Wait, um, is it Archon of Darkness? Is that Demon of Deathscape? Oh! Uh, oh god! Oh, it's a disaster. Wait, no, we fixed it. Oh, good. Oh, Mark takes a Luris the Dream Den. Interesting. That is a card we talked about. See, now that's a card you'd think you'd Sign Lanza. of Darkness. That's it. Now Sign that of Darkness. Is a card you would think you would want to have with Lanza Diamond. Hmm, interesting. I mean, look. You have Lotus. Look, you have the I conceded LED. on turn one last week playing MTG Cube when my opponent went land Luris, or land Lotus, sack Lotus, get Luris, or put Luris into play bring the yep. uh, thing back and then play to four drop and I just conceded on this button. I was like, fuck it. I don't need to take a turn. Yeah, Luris is a very powerful, very, very powerful spell and it is a card that sailors hope to get. I don't know if they hoped for it in Mark's spot or Dan's spot. Mm -hmm. um, well, it doesn't look a lot like he's planning on maybe playing it as a companion. No. Um, though it is possible for him. You know, he's only limiting himself off of Jace and Shieldred, mm -hmm. and those cards could be more of, you know, potential sideboard, sideboard plans or, or flexible options that way. Very possible that he has a configuration of his deck, either pre- or post-sideboard, that he is planning on playing Luris as a companion. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense to me. Right, Brandon with the Collector, oof, to shut down... A lot of a artifacts, lot. you know. Um, I think that might have just been a pick, a hate pick. To try to keep Dan safe. Keep, yep, exactly, yeah, because sense. you look at the artifacts that are out there, and we have... Crypt from Brandon, uh, smattering of equipment around the joint, and I don't really see a lot that it does against Chicago. I think it would be mm -hmm. terrible for Dan to have to deal with that card in game one. 100%. Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of like, listen, you don't want Collector floating to the guy who has green sensing in his deck, nope. who is trying to put a bunch of shitty green dorks on the battlefield. Oh, yeah. And guys so. cradle you into the ground, you know? That's no, but... Not you... the direction you want to go. I really... takes Outland Liberator, kind of an interesting choice. What's your favorite... What's your go-to um, naturalized creature? Um, so, in most of the decks I play, it ends up being oh, Reclamation that's Sage. not what I wanted to do. Because it uh, is an elf. Rex Sage, yeah, that yep. makes a lot of sense. Lot of um, sense. And tracking day night is miserable. True. Oh, there we go. Um, so there, there's that. It's also ETB, which is nice. Um, I don't like that it sacrifices itself. I think for me, that's one of the the downsides. But the thing is, if you were ever thinking about playing the card Viridian Zealot, which is a rare from Mirrodin, that's two one. That is just that only shadows an artifact, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, then this is probably just upgrade strictly there. upgrade. Yeah, a um, little bit of an upgrade there. Yeah. Um, what about you? I would say, I mean, nowadays it's probably Haywire Might, but that, that doesn't take one. care of creature artifacts. Mm -hmm. So um, not necessarily what you need all the time, but I think Haywire Might's generally a pretty solid choice. Oh, like, it is. I would sure. certainly be looking at it over Outland Liberator if I were in the market. Um, if you think you want the attacker, if you think you want uh, the you know slightly better pressure, See no, I, so, certainly not a bad one. No, I think it is very good. I think it is strictly the fact that you cannot core or GSZ for Haywire Might. 
that yes. for me makes Rexage uh, a better option because like I said, usually I, I need Rexage. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's any creature. Okay, so you can get hit yeah. by you can right. You can cord for it. Um, it costs four. <clears throat> Those guys, the the Outland Liberator. So I play um Yogg in Modern, and the nice Outland Liberator aspect of the deck um, is you know you can tutor it up in anticipation of a problem arising. Yeah. Whereas Reclamation says you really do need to come with it in response, uh, and unless you have specifically like a Court of Calling that lets you grab it at instant speed, can be a little. No, I I am very much in tune with that idea. One the first or the second game of Commander I ever played way back when the format not started but became popular it's so like 2011 mm -hmm. and i went like blue white land seal of cleansing and one of my one of my opponents went that is the worst thing you can do now i just won't play into it and i went no that's exactly what it's meant to do now you won't play yeah. that card it's keeping you from playing that. my one mana spell kept mm -hmm. you from playing that card so i am very in tune with the idea of just letting that linger um yeah but you mentioned yog which is like I'm, I was a birthing pod player, mm, and chaining yep. mm -hmm. up is why usually I want. Oh yeah, Rex like Age is great, and that's it in that situation, hundred yeah. percent. And you know, Yog, you can get the effect out of your Reclamation Sage and then sack it away for a card. Yeah. Really, really nice. Personally, I'm a big fan of both. I play a lot of Reclamation Sage. I think I showed up to a local modern event with uh, some friends of mine, some Midwest All Stars, Will Kruger, and, and some of my buddies. And Will was on his signature hammer deck, getting ready to throw down. And I'm sitting there with my stupid elf deck that I just mm -hmm. put together. I didn't have a sideboard for it, so I just grabbed cards on my elf box until I had 15 cards. And we get into our game, and I'm like, bro, I have four Reclamation Sages on our sideboard. He plays Nurse's Saga, Rex Sage. Bang. It. He plays uh, Sukarno's Aid, Rex Sage. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, and he's just and he's just sitting there. He's like, you also have Force of Vigor mm -hmm. in your sideboard. Like, what the fuck? Dude. And I was just like, yeah. I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> it happens. Okay. <laughs> The nice thing is, uh, uh, so you can cord and you can collect a company for both Haywire Might and Rex Age. Yes. So, yep. like, you have those options in front of you. And, you know, that arguably gives, uh, and in some situations, can really give Reclamation Sage a lot more legs when you have instant speed access yep. to it. So, yep. it makes a lot of sense. So, different charts for different folks, depends on what you need. Exactly. So, picked in one out of 32 drafts for the Court of Calling. Come on, guys. Get so, on it. we actually have Steven also insulating Dan by taking Null Rod. So, we have Collector Oof mm. and Null Rod flanking mm. Dan. But and Sam now we see, we see the machinations of St. Louis to protect their more linear decks they're using the more flexible ones mm -hmm. and their more sort of secure strategies the decks that they know they're going to have no trouble filling out to protect their potentially more um, more linear more yeah. fragile decks yep they, they're interesting lifting stuff. up Mark and Dan basically Sam mm -hmm. taking Force mm -hmm. of Vigor which is a fine spot because you see Collector Oof and Null Rod go to Steven so if and you, you got to be thinking these guys obviously know they're trying to cut us off of our hate for Dan. Yep. You know? And honestly, does anyone want to be cut off of their hatred for Dan? No. <laughs> Come on, guys. If you've ever gotten through the breach, uh, hole breacher, put a one in chat. Like, get in here, <laughs> oh you know? Give them the fucking, give them the... Ooh! Rophilos. Ooh, Rophilos. Everybody loves Rophilos. Yeah. Could we see Sam draft elves? I think we are going to see... The elf special! Ugh. Does that mean we move into Leovold? We have Emerald and Sapphire. We're just... A good black source away. I mean, look, two people are. You can also green sunzine for it. I mean, honestly, the number of times you green sunzine for it makes it very easy. Yeah, but you have to be able to cast it for that time you know you're going to draw it. True. Yes, and you will. Just you will draw for sure. Yep. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Oh man, I just realized Chad owns a big ladder over there. We'll get this in the edit, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> Which of course we won't. God, don't you love live comedy? Thank you. I'll be here all week. Oh, yeah. um, anyway, got off table. The mirror breaker coming in. You know what I? You know, I, if you have the mirror breaker, great card. Everybody loves it. You know what I don't see a lot of love for is um, is deck Faden. Kind of an underloved card, I think. I have a respect for that card, but it is not as much as other people do. Uh, both it and Thieving Skydiver. I do. I, I understand the power of those cards, but I do not have a respect for it the same way. Or sorry, I, I do not have a, a love for it or an affinity for it as much as some others do. I, I understand, again, the power of it. Um, you know, greatest thief in the multiverse, able to steal mm -hmm. your opponent's uh, power. But I wonder if there's just an amount of like, well... What are we going to need to gain control of that we don't already have that is as da as game breaking and maybe we do see it float into uh, Jago. Yeah, well, I mean, we Dan. see cards like Jago's Thieving Skydiver, right? 
Yep. I eat. I before he accepts after his evil. You know, I swear that never actually works. The what is it? Keep going, thieving. thieving. Skydiver. Um, so I see a card like Thieving Skydiver getting into the deck. It makes a lot of sense. Thieving Skydiver, perfectly reasonable card. Um, it beats. And I then I see the Hole Breaker or Hole Breacher sitting around, and I'm like, boy, you could uptick on your opponent, make him discard two cards, you make two treasures. Oof, they just concede on the spot. They're just dead. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's not, yeah, there's the opportunity for Dan to pick it up, too. I think, I don't know if Dan's thinking about that. I think he's fine with it. I think if, if I'm, if. I think in Chicago a way, so like, like as we see the other guys pick up these these hate cards for Dan, mm -hmm. I almost feel like that is a way that Dan could pick up a hate card for himself. You know, he's oh, like, okay, yeah, yeah. you know, do a little bit, do his part on the team to protect his own deck. You know, yeah, take yeah. any deck fade and just. I, like, I mentioned uh, Doretti scraps of Aunt or whatever the mm -hmm. mono red, and you you move into deck fade and that allows you to pick up Doretti, which is very good mm -hmm. with your artifact deck. Mm -hmm. Because you can play from the graveyard that way, and so yeah, maybe Dan does pick up Dak Faden. But mm -hmm. I think if anybody was going to pick Dak Faden on the Chicago side, I think it's Jago. I think that is just the by far and away the best deck for that. Yeah, yeah. Especially I mean, uh, Jacob could try to take it and somehow get some lands in, but uh, he's going to have maybe a little bit of trouble with the mana there. Uh, I do think it makes a lot of sense in his deck, just that you're you know churning through your cards, you're fueling your graveyard, you're getting your Cruxa, your Liliana, etc., yeah. etc. And the resource denial aspect of his deck of taking your opponent's cards also works quite well with Deck Faden. He also has the Orcish Bowmasters. Target you with my Deck Faden. You draw, draw. two. Two yep. draw triggers with Orcish Bowmasters. Yeah. Deal you two. I've got two more power. The, attack you for six. This, that the, stuff works pretty well. Yeah, I think the squeeze is good, especially when we see he has a Mind Twist in the mm -hmm. list as well. That, mm -hmm. that pick kind of went unsung. Well, um, yeah, because if you do assemble your little deck, Faden, and you want to start targeting your opponent, the best case scenario is they don't have no cards in hand, yep. so they can't keep anything, mm -hmm. which makes for a fairly strong strategy. Yep. Also, maybe would let Jake put a card like Treasure Cruise into his deck um, mm -hmm. if he wants to do that like, little blue splash. Oh, okay. The fourth so Chicago blue player. Jago's just going to scoop snow cover. The lands. Ice Fang Kotal. I wonder if now we'll see Mark or Brandon take the Arkham's Astral Lab and just say, yeah, you know, we just call, you know, let's call it a day. Yeah, we're, we're okay. But we would actually like you to not have um, Astral Lab and Ice Fang Kotal and for free. Yeah, there's also the possibility we see Jago take on Thin Ice later on because who mm. else would take that card aside from Swifty True. right now? True. Um, uh, and Swifty looks like he made kind of an interesting little hate pick with the Time Spiral. It wouldn't, it doesn't seem like a card he's trying to play. So I'm guessing. Um, he maybe just picked it as a preemptive hate measure after the Echo of Aeons. You know, yep. thinks to himself, eh, let's, oh, let's wow. maybe... There's the Ren and Six Brandon did eventually get. Ooh, yeah, okay, so this seems like really, really late for Ren and Six because it seems like there are a few people that might be able to make good use of it. Like Sam, I feel like, could have probably made good use of the, the Ren and Six. There, Stephen Hagen. There's so much time for Sam to pick up Ren and Six, but instead Sam decided to stay in soup that this might have just kind of, I don't want to say slipped by, but just been a purposeful dodge. Um let Brandon pick up a more cohesive deck while we pivot into something that could actually just be more powerful. Dan also picked up Hercules Recall, a very powerful hate card against himself. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Also, allows him to replay everything. So it is a storm outlet, oddly enough. True, yeah. Um, it's almost like that paradox cloud come. Yeah, you know, exactly. You can like, cut, oh, let me replay all my shit. Exactly. So you can uh, spin Urza mm -hmm. again if all your artifacts are tapped. Um, mm -hmm. Mark well, flexing. Yeah, and, and in that sense, you can make a bunch of extra yeah. mana with it. Mark now coming back to where we expected with Thoracle yes, combo. Yes, which um, makes a ton of sense. Um, Thoracle is also a combo you can work in your deck when you have Lurus' Companion, since it's such a cheap uh, combo. Yes. Uh, I had so Swifty picking up the Mystic Sanctuary. That's huge. All right, I need, I need you to take over this keyboard because I'm going to give you the name of a card I okay. need you to look up. I would love to look up a card for you. Please. Just, besides Let just watching uh, LSV Team Draft, I actually read through... All of Wild Old Drain and all of the Doctor Who set, both of which are legal for this. And yes, I found out is. that the Lord of the Rings supplemental set that just came mm. out was uh -huh. sorry is coming out is fully spoiled, which means it's legal. But oh nobody my expected god! Anything True, out. I wouldn't okay. expect any of our players to know okay. about any of those cards. <laughs> uh, Ashiok, Wicked Manipulator. This is the only Planeswalker in Wild of Old Drain. If we can't get it here, then Scry follow it. Uh, Ashiok, Ashiok, wicked, wicked manip. Manip. Eh, eh, eh. We'll see if we can pull that one up for a minute. 
are uh, we are broadcasting to you currently from a garage. You might okay. not be able to tell from the garage so, door in the background. Nothing but. about this card matters besides the passive. <laughs> okay. If you would pay life while your library has at least that many cards in it, exile that many cards from the top of your library instead. Oh my god. You can exile your whole library with Immolating Soul Eater. Uh, or you could Thoracle out. True. Necropotence, Phyrexian Processor, mm. anything you can pay life to and draw cards with. That's an interesting idea. This doubles up. I like up. it. I like it. So we were talking about this last night. Um, I was just, like I said, reading mm. through the entire set. It costs five. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's yeah. a lot. So if, with Processor, that's nine. And then Thoracle makes 11. That's a lot of mana. But the opportunity for another piece of the puzzle, so to speak. Instantly going to Emulating Soul Eater. Listen, Emulating Soul, Soul Eater gang. Yeah. Okay, we know what's up. Um, uh, hey, we see Jake finally take the Underworld Breach. That's an interesting one. Uh, a lot of powerful cards getting picked up this round. You know, Thassa's Oracle, obviously a hugely powerful card. Brandon finally gets the Taiga. Um, Taiga is finally taken. Ledger Shredder, hugely powerful yep. card, gets picked up. And we see Mishra's Workshop, Underworld Breach, and Lutri, which, again, I will continue to say Lutri is a top five card. For sure, Lutri is unbelievably right. busted. Let's look and up. the fact that... Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. The fact that Jacob Key does not have Lutri, devastating. Lutri would give you so many percentage points in your grindy red-black deck. It's a threat. It's card advantage. It's an extra discard spell. It's an extra removal spell. It's an extra burn spell. It's everything. You can fire blast people in the face. You can strip their hand with a... You want to talk about scamming people with grief and uh, and not dead yet. You talk about scamming people with Lutri, Lutri. plus thought sees. Oh my. God, the power. Yeah, Steven really has no use for Lutri right now besides maybe fourth ear lingus. All right, can we and look up... And being a flashy three-card creature, baby. Doctor. The 13th Doctor. I have to excuse me. I don't know how to spell. I never went to school, guys. Stay in school, kids. That's right. But uh, where I grew up in the uh, southern... Oh, you're not going to like Sam's Salt pick. Lake City. Oh my god, no, Peter, oh my Ooh, god. Ooh, Ulamog the Ceaseless Chungarer. Oh, I'm going to have to tell Sam not to watch back this recording. I'll be like, hey, I wouldn't worry about it too much. That is, listen, I will wait to reserve judgment to see what his deck looks like right. in the end, but it seems like such an obvious trap and such an easy thing not to do. I swear to god... Listen, for the last few months when we've been planning this whole event, I've been telling people. I've been telling people for six months that the start time was going to be between 10 and 11 yep. in the morning. Because that's what it always is. Yes, yeah. So for six months, when we knew no other details about it, I would just be saying like, oh yeah, we're going to start between like, we're going to play on Saturday. It's going to be the start time between like 10 and 11. I'll just let you know which yep. Saturday. We're trying to figure that out. And no one's been listening. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Um, no, no, no. There's been some confusion about some of the details of the event. You know, yes. when we were starting, blah, 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 some things like that. Uh, and I kept telling people, I've said it a million times. I get that no one listens to me. I get that no one cares anything that I say. But I have said it. I need you guys to know that I've said it. Um, Don't and channel. I swear, I've said to not draft channel a thousand times. I've talked so much shit about channel over the years. It is unbelievable how much I hate this card. But no one listens to me. I no one listens to me, Peter. I'm not in disagreement that Channel is a trap, but I think I'm happier to see Channel than I am Eureka because you cast Eureka and then lose the game. That's you know how what? That card... I'm, I'm actually happier to see it too. I think you're right about that. You know what? Actually, I take that back. I actually don't think I'm happier to see it. I think I'm actually. Listen, I could see Eureka working here with like a tracks and stuff. Crater Hook Behemoth? Oh, what, you're going to put some shit into play? I don't give a shit. You're dead. Yeah, my it's crater over, hasty. baby. It's hasty. Honk. I've got 300 power on the board. You're dead. Yep. With that in mind, I'm not going to talk too much smack. Me and uh, me and All right. Sam are buddies, but boy, howdy. Does Let's that seem take like a look at the goddamn disaster anyway. Let's take a look right. at the 13th Doctor. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, put a plus one plus encounter on target okay. creature. Okay, stop there. That's all we care about. Okay. You don't want to read... Team Tardis. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay, okay. Because that are you ability, a Doctor Who fan? Not really. The Doctor Who fans are I crying. Watched, they want to hear about Team Tardis. Okay? I want. I watch everything from Eccleston up to uh, Capaldi, and then I stopped. Oh, okay. So those both sound like British names. They are. Uh, okay, got yeah. it. That now, makes a lot of sense. Th this this is not a one card kill con. This is a three card kill con. Okay. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, put a plus one plus one on target creature. Is it Grave Crawler plus 
plus alter? It's close. That is a thought. Also in color are Food Chain and Miss Hollow Griffin. Ooh, now that's a good one. Because yeah, you just stack nice. it up on don't the Don't you doctor. also get infinite mana doing that? Yes, but you only need, like, this is an outlet for that. You don't need anything gotcha, to do gotcha. with the mana when you just stack it up on gotcha, the doctor. Gotcha, gotcha. Understandable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this is, another, this is what I, we don't see Food Chain a lot, and I understand it, because it's like a Lurin. They both are kind of trap cards. Um, but this is just another tool in the kit for Food Chain. It's just something, like I said, I read through the set list That's for interesting. everything. That makes a lot of sense. I've actually always wanted to see people make food chain work. I think food chain falls in that same category of, like, Alluren, which is, like, there's a couple ways. My biggest problem with Alluren decks, and probably with food chain, I, I can imagine in my mind what the problem with food chain decks is going to be, and that is getting those cards into play is so goddamn difficult. Yes. Um, you're like, great, you can do, like, the legacy thing where you play the, the Academy Rector. Yep. Awesome. And you can play Enlightened Tutor. Yep. And uh, there is full stop. How do you ever find? There's a birthing pod for enchantments from Ikoria, I think. Oh, or maybe yeah, Theros. on the blue green one. Is it Keenan? That no. goofy one. It's not Keenan Bonder Prodigy. But no, that's the. It was played, played in Pioneer. There's a Pioneer. Yeah, in, yeah. The, it because it's itself is an enchantment. Yes. And it, like, yeah, yeah, loops. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Yeah, getting it into play, very difficult. And then from there, the rest of the deck just basically has to be... Uh, it feels like the best Sultai cards that ever existed. Um, love it, love it, yeah. Um, this is an interesting idea. If you're all serious about the punishment, hat, wig, whatever, I'm putting in a request for it to randomly assign, having a reference to a passive debuff or something like that. I don't know much about magic. Either way, let's go St. Lotus! All right, nice, we'd is... love to see it. Got a big donation. Thank you very much. Yeah, you That's a great thing you to do. It was very nice of you. Thank very, you very much. Very I, much I have no that. idea how Twitch works because I'm a YouTube uh, Andy I at my know. heart, but that looks like 2,500 little uh, bitty green Bits things. that turn into monetization on the back end. Wow, how nice. You know what? Mark's going to be so impressed. I think we just fundraised more than he ever has. Can we get a Burger King crown, de- crown delivered? Yes, I'm sure oh. somebody can make a Burger King run. We could find, you know what? I wonder if the kids can make a construction paper crown. That would be oh, 100%. Fun. Because oh, there are that's how many so kids good. floating around this house? Oh, a few. Yeah. A few at least. You just put like them all on. They're cats. That too. is a group. Know. They all kind of fall in the same category. But that is a, a, a group that activity. That would be even better. Oh, my God. All right, we'll get it in here. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Oh, my God. Maybe I can get it. Oh, should like... be King of the Hill. Who is... <gasps> Who had the best record coming out of the last team? Well, Swifty won the last team. Well, he won the last team. Yeah, so there you go. There you go. Ooh, okay. Ooh, we got a good one, guys. We got a good one. We'll get some good photos and everything. Listen, Rumble Rob, you're you're, a real one. Okay, I want you to remember that. We we got some really funny shit coming up. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't want to say bog standard, but now we're in the middle of just... Middle of the event, we're picking the cards that fill out our decks and do the best job. Uro in for Jago's deck seems a little ambitious. Ambitious. We have some spells to put in the graveyard, but not mm-hmm. a whole lot mm-hmm. to fill mm-hmm. it out. With Ledger Shred, I like saying Ledger Shredder helps get us there, but I'm not seeing a lot of. We have the Consider and not a lot else, so I'm kind of worried about the Uro. Um, Tasha's hideous laughter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, I know there was some memory about uh, whether or not Brandon was going to take Tasha's today. So it was like, mm-hmm. if you want to play Tasha's, you better pick it early because so, Brandon's in the draft. So, <laughs> in, so Swifty and I were talking about how he's going to end. I love that plank, but only because I'm a big fan of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. So that just speaks to me at a core <laughs> no, level. That plank's having a hard day. <laughs> so Swifty and I were talking about how they are going to close out the match. Mm, okay. And that interesting, could interesting. get you there based sure. on what you're seeing. Uh, Steven has a uh, yeah, handful get, of fours. Mark's entire deck. That's basically Easy what game. I'm looking at. It's Easy like game. It <laughs> dusts Mark, and I think that might be about it. I think Brendan has too many threes. Steven has a handful of fours. Oh, yeah, he's got fours. Dan's he just going to ratchet it up minutes, into yeah. infinity. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, on Earth and MC but for having a nice little uh, one shot one yeah. kill mark going down son I wonder if Jacob's going to move uh, into the mono black helm stuff because he has void walker and you can float ley line and the uh, is it pl- it's not planar chaos it's planar void mm-hmm. I think from mm-hmm. Saga mm-hmm. and all you need at that point is helm to go uh, up. to be honest he doesn't have Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, he doesn't have Karn the Great Creator to dig Helm out of his sideboard, so he's kind of stuck having... Oh, you would want it to go there instead of the main... Okay, um, I mean, sense. it's just, like, it's one of those, you know, two-card combo things. So the yeah. nice thing about, like, Lane Island Void and Dothy, which I would say you would want to look into if that was the direction you wanted to go, was how good is having, like, say, a main deck Lane Island Void against this field? 
like you were saying earlier with the um, you know uh, main deckable cards like mm-hmm. uh, the the uh, Veil of Summer. Yep. That's one. Yeah. Um, you want to look if you looked and you said, well, main deck leyline of, of the Void is actually good against two of my four opponents. Then I could totally see getting mm-hmm. in there and playing. Um, then you don't mind drawing your leyline. You never really want to naturally draw your helm. So I like sometimes mm-hmm. when you can have those cards sitting off in your sideboard and you know tutor for them or uh, Karn for them or whatever. And that way, if you draw one half of your combo, you can. He's in Rakdos. With um, there. what like Death Wish or something? What the third spell? How about just Wish? Oh yeah, Wish. That does do that. Do you know it? how that card actually works? Because I didn't know until somebody told uh, me. This is one of those things where my scope of magic had been broadened so much. It's like, oh, this is just a wish. It, but wish is the best is wish the for one a reason. With, um, there it is. May play a card you own from outside the game. Oh, that's interesting. So it doesn't even like put it into your hand. No. Just... So you can put you can play a land from outside the game. But do you know how this card actually works? No, I don't. Not so you really. cast the card, mm-hmm. and that's the end of it. Oh, and it just gives you access to casting it for the rest of the game? No, for the rest of the turn, but it's just a buff over you. But you oh, know, you're using the word it. What is it in this instance? Uh, oh, it's just any card. Any card. You just play it and you're just like... It's just a buff over you. Turn. Yep, for that for the rest of your turn, oh. you get to choose any card from your from outside the game. That's, that's kind of goofy. That's I did not learn about that until huh. too, not too, too long ago because I was playing it in the sideboard of uh, Titan Shift. That's funny. And I think you, I've seen Dan. I think Dan's played this card against me before, yeah. and I don't know if that's how we used it. I knew. <laughs> I knew it was any card, and that's why the land and the sideboard made sense in Titan Shift because you would just go yeah, get the extra far. That's really you funny. You can shift. resolve it and just not even know what you want to cast yet. You can, yep. You can it, use it as a variety. Exactly. Of it doesn't target. It's like um, Schrodinger's wish. Exactly. It doesn't target, and it just puts up. And it doesn't have to be right then. Mm-hmm. And doesn't put it into your hand like the other wishes do. It just buffs you for the rest of the turn. Interesting. That's very interesting. Wow. wow. Well, there you go. For all your wishing needs. Wish it up, folks. Yeah. I think the top part, when we're on Scryfall, I think the top part of the thing just gets It is cut absolutely off. cut off because we were not ready for that. I did not. It makes a lot it just, sense. If, yeah, if okay. you muck with this, then it's going to muck with that. Yeah, that's that's true. the problem. All right. Anyway, um, back to There's our graph. We've got, we picked up an Unearth for our Thassa's <clears throat> Oracle. That's cute. An Imperial Seal. Ugh, the worst tutor ever. Disgusting. Yeah, but from what's left, I think it's the best Slow, of the worst. Slow, measly card disadvantage. You already have Vampiric Tutor. You lost Demonic Tutor. What are you going to do? Take Diabolic? I would not take any tutor. Fuck it. I'm tutorless. I'm going to draw right. everything that I need. I'm, t- I'm going to take Ponder, okay? Finally. For the first time ever. We saw. Oh wait, no, no, no. Swifty well, did take Ponder. Yeah. <laughs> we already we so they had Ponder. So we saw subtlety go, which just kind of makes yeah, sense. That finally for picked Swifty. up the deck Faden yep. we, that we talked about. That's maybe uh, hitting play. We found Opt. So that's the blue uh, card. Now Brandon system. can actually not only just fetch his blue sources, but use them. Uh huh. Which is nice. Yep. Honestly, a deck Faden could wind up being a <coughs> fairly reasonable card against um against uh, who here? Maybe Jacob has two. If Sam's of power, trying Sam to put in a big, power. a big boy, yeah, obviously everyone's just got moxes floating yeah. around, so it's just worthwhile. Reasonable. I'm, the, um, I'm not a fan of opt by Jago for the reason I mentioned earlier, which is you just drafted Uro, you need to put cards in the graveyard, and opt does not do that. We have consider, which is great, and I think I would take thought scour over opt. It puts two cards in your graveyard. If you have Ledger Strider out, it could put a third one in there, and then you draw a card. And I think that is the opportunity cost on that when you have Uro is just too damn high. I agree completely, and Thought Scar is a massively underrated card in my opinion. Yep. Dan goes for Palantir. Or- okay, we need or- to bring this one up because or- it. Orthnac. I don't. It's from Lord of the Rings, and I don't know if people yes. have actually read this um, card. I was going to say, I guarantee the basement right now, where we have Team Chicago hiding out in, is just losing their minds. I, I've never seen this card before in my life. This is what is this thing? It's not becoming a legacy staple. It is uh, the idea of mono brown, or mm-hmm. what can brown do for you? Exists mm-hmm. in legacy. It is in all versions of that deck. Tell but me not about popular. Palantir. Oh boy. So at the beginning of your end step, you put an influence counter on Palantir and scry two. Easy enough. Then target opponent may have you draw a card. If that player doesn't, you mill X cards where X is the number of influence counters on Palantir. And that player loses life equal to the total mana value of those cards. So generally what happens is you draw a handful of cards until your opponent realizes that it is now out of control. And or to try and put you in a spot where 
milling is the correct option, but mm-hmm. the game has already spiraled. It's like a su- more subtle version of the one ring. Mm-hmm. So I've played against this card a little bit in Cube, Vintage Cube, like Seeker yep. saying on the chat here. And uh, the play pattern, I find it... Uh, there are two play patterns I find with it. Um, yep. And it's not bad in either one, which is A, your opponent plays it, and they're already mana screwed. They're like, they've missed a land drop or something yep. like that. Okay. So they're scrying, and you're like, fuck it, you can mill. Yeah. Um, and they wind up milling over lands because they're trying to hit land drops. Yes. Now, when this happens, uh, generally that number will keep ticking up, 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 up until it's like five, and you're like, well, I've taken six damage from it so far, and if my opponent mills five, I know they have an upheaval in their deck, and I could just fucking die. Yep. Uh, and you go, well, I guess you can start drawing cards. Like, mm, not great. And now suddenly it is like a Phyrexian Arena where you're scrying to and drawing every turn. Very, very strong. Yep. Especially if you play it early, which you can usually because it plays it off colorless mana. Mm-hmm. The other play pattern with it is when you're not mana screwed, in which case you're just regular old screwed um like okay. you you are scrying you are putting powerful spells on top of your deck your opponent can't even really have you mill two or three because you're just going to be hitting four drops and stuff off the top of your deck and getting absolutely domed, domed. for a ridiculous amount of damage so then it is essentially <clears throat> phyrexian and arena plus yep plus plus really that is That's basically uh in constructed is basically the same, except if you're going to be playing Palantir, you are going to be playing cards that work well out of your graveyard, which means you're probably on four or five colors, uh, usually a Yorion pile, which means you have Uro and Loam. Mm-hmm. So putting cards in your graveyard is good for you um, mm-hmm, because you can mm-hmm, just work mm-hmm. with that that way. Or you are the mono brown deck, in which case, if they let you scry, you're going to find your Paradox engines, your monoliths, etc., and go off. Or they'll put cards in your graveyard and you don't care about that. They're just going to take a lot of damage and your Urza Saga tokens will take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. So this is becoming a decent one or two of in Mm -hmm. a number of decks in Legacy that want to play, you know, those kind of mid to long game games and puts your opponents in a squeeze from both sides, which is why I said it's kind of a more subtle, the one ring. The one ring is very upfront about what it does. Pal- you, you don't realize you're in the Palantir lock until you're in the Palantir lock. Yeah, 100%. Makes a lot of sense. And, you know, for what it is, especially in this format where you can really only have one one ring, having a little bit of redundancy, another little car- colorless card drawing artifact uh, is a really nice place to be in. Yep. So, so, nice. And this one deals your opponent damage instead of you. Yep. <laughs> that is true. So I think we are now solely on the channel plan. We took Portal to Phyrexia and Show and Tell. <laughs> Well, Portal Phyrexia being a hate draft against Tinker is an interesting concept. Um, show and Tell is certainly a card. Um, we might be on the Flash Show and Tell channel plan, which doesn't still add up, but it is a plan, nonetheless. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of really good luck flashing Ooh, there's in... Um, nice choice, Jocko. Good work. Um, I've had a lot of success flashing in, like, uh, Ashen Rider and yep. Woodfall Primus. Very reasonable. Yeah, I like those cards um, as flash options when you know, world spawning up two of your opponents. Exactly. Lands. You make your second land drop. You eat up two of your opponents' lands. They usually yeah. concede. I, um, I've been playing against Show and Tell long enough that I still, as the Show and Tell player, fear Ash and Rider. Yeah. Um, you because that's a card you have to respect. Mm-hmm. Hundred um, percent. Steven with Bone Crusher Giant into Phyrexian Metamorph. Jacob takes Ember Shieldbreaker, which is the adventure. Uh, Shatter pump boy. spell. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, shatter into. Oh, and one. Swifty takes away Dove in hand of control. Do you from think the St. Louis crew? Do you think it's Ooh. taking it away or just leaning into his oh plan? My God. Listen, okay, we told you before. We did a little. Oh, and we take the Helm of Obedience away from the Jacob Keys of the world. Ouch, poor Jacob Key. They don't call him an oppressed, an oppressed man for nothing. All right, that's what they call him. Yep, Jacob the oppressed. Uh, anyway. Um, here's the thing, okay? I had a list of different questions that I came up with a couple months ago yep. for the St. Louis crew. And the second one of those questions is, why does St. Louis like Dove in Hand of Control so much? Oh, okay, okay. Would you like, would you care to give us some insight as to the St. Louis, St. Louis mindset So let's bring it up Dove in Hand because of Control? It is, sorry. There was a point in time no, I think, where the Planeswalker deck, as we know it, I think you might actually need to use the comma. There you go. 
where the control decks, sorry, where the Planeswalker decks just didn't exist. So Dove in Hand of Control, the passive artifact, instant and sorcery spells your opponents, cast, cost one colorless, more two cast, so it taxes. Right, then you minus, and you can minus this five times until your next turn prevent all damage that we would be dealt to and dealt by target permanent and opponent controls. So basically, the Planeswalker deck seemingly didn't exist until, in my, as far as I know, Brandon basically innovated it, and it was uh, Tef3 and Dovin that really brought that deck together. Mm -hmm. Dovin slowing the opponent down, and aggressive decks were very popular in the format, so the minus was very good, allowing you time to get your feet underneath you mm -hmm. and to take mm -hmm. over the, the game with your Planeswalkers. And so it became viewed as this kind of foundational element of that deck, and I think it might have existed for a little too long in that deck. I never quite understood it myself, why mm -hmm. you would pick it so highly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Narset has not been taken yet. And sometimes sure. you would see, like, Dovin overall floats down really low. And I don't know if we have data going back far enough on Dovin to see how high Brandon has picked this thing. Around 43 in Discord 20. Yep, we have 12 is the 34. highest. four. But we, we've seen this go pretty high and it just represents this found this element that allows the three or four plane uh three or four color planes walker deck to slow the game down enough without having to play thalia mm -hmm. Her uh heretic cathar yep the two mono yep. one um uh guardian of guardian of thraben, guardian of thraben. um because that impacts the entirety of the game versus dovin which only is uh, uh one sided yeah true. One -sided. those are a lot of the same reasons that the rest of the crew gave um including just its flexibility its versatility um, and I tried to ask Chicago um, how they felt about Dove and Hand of Control, and they said, Are you talking about a unplayable uncommon from a set I've never played? Yeah. And I went, yeah, that's the one. And I went, I don't care. I would play Dovin's Veto Damn. before I played Dove and Hand of Control. Damn. They are uh, pretty, pretty strong fighting words. Yeah. But Swifty took the Dove and Hand of Control away from Brandon. Brandon. Brandon, out here hate drafting other people, getting hate, hate drafted, drafted a lot. Yep. Yeah, it's tough. It's we tough see out here to be Brandon. We see Dan. They take... don't call him the martyr for nothing. Okay, that's Brandon the martyr. Remember that. Uh, Dan with retrofitter foundry, which seems fine. Nobody else is going to take that. Bro, Brandon coming in with the Eureka? Are you kidding me? He said, "Listen, buddy, I, I see what you're doing down today. there." Okay, and I don't like it. I'm not about it. Steven then responding with by show and tell. He's like, hey, contain, contain me, priest. Gotcha. What up? Chain lightning from Jacob, which is just part of the suite that we expected if you just want to stay Rakdos. Burn him down. No, and uh, we've, I mean, honestly, we're seeing a lot of little back and forth. So Mark took the helm of obedience, maybe to hate it away from Jacob. And then Swifty takes rest in peace in response to the helm because he doesn't want that to potentially come together. Um, however, Mark now will have pretty unfettered access to, like you said, Leyline of the Void, Planar Void, um, a few different cards that uh, what, allow... Leyline was taken by Jacob, so that's in oh, Jacob. Oh, he did take So it. we right, waited for right, those yeah, two yeah, picks yeah, to yeah, go yeah, to mind, Jacob. Forget everything that I just um, said. Garbage time. Um, rest in peace is not rest gone, in peace, though? No, so if he just took it just in took response it. to the Helm of Obedience. Yep. So there you go. Now we're seeing that... That back and forth. Uh, Mark could have taken Home Obedience and, Urs uh, and Rest in Peace together. Um, and instead, he didn't. No, he, I think he took it and he kind of just tabled it and was like, hey, would you guys like to hate draft this from me? And they said, why, yes, we would. I, so I, th I think, well, he also he has access to Planar Chaos still. So yeah, that is an option for him. But I think mm -hmm. this is more of what uh, St. Louis wanted to ascribe to, which is just when you see enough of a combo on board, you just take the last piece of it. Mm -hmm. And for me in our conversation, I probably would have taken Helm of Obedience similarly to Mark, uh, not having thought about the card Wish, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I would not have thought that I would want to put Helm in the sideboard like you were suggesting because mm -hmm. Karn Gate Great Creator was taken so early from yep. Jacob. I would have just, oh, I don't want him demonic tutoring for this card, right? Yep. Um, I would... I. I think waiting for Wish would have been the correct option had I had the presence of mind to think about it a little more mm -hmm. as we started the conversation. Mm -hmm. So now we've got a finale of Devastation, which is an interesting one. It's uh, arguably the... So it's a little tricky. It's arguably a better card than Green Sun Zenith with Channel because you can pump a ton of mana into it mm -hmm. and uh, you know kill your opponent outright. Um, however, it also is that double green cost that we talked about. So now, again, whereas green sun zenith, you get to three green mana, and then you grab the biggest green creature out of your deck. Finale of Jason takes four green mana. So you're not playing it off of a... So, like, 
the green line is usually you play a mana dork on turn one, you play a three drop on turn two. Yep. Finale Devastation Channel, that's not happening. Nope. And right now, uh, the two creatures you're going to get are Atroxa and Ulamog the Ceaseless Hungerer, both of which can exist in your graveyard, so there is the opportunity to re-up on either one of those with True. Finale compared to Cord. Um, True. Oh, there's you have a Maya, which if I was Jago, I might have wanted. Hey, oh. Um, just. How's it going, Chad? Do you want to come in here a little bit? You want to come? Give us, your, our, give us your two cents. Host. You want to grab your... Two yes, uh, we've got our, our beautiful host, Chad Balk, who is uh, who was gracious enough to let us VRD in his home today. What's got him up? on the camera. Hey, what's going on, Chad? Hello, hello. You've been downstairs with uh, the <coughs> Chicago crew while they've been working on their stuff, right? So yeah, what's the, what's the word on the ground? Is a lot of screaming, a lot of panic, terror, a lot of uh, cries coming <laughs> from children and grown men alike? No, the children are gone. Uh, for now. Oh, uh, we need them to make a crown. Oh, yeah, we need, we were hoping. That can happen. Okay, okay. I, I want to circle back to this, though. Yes. They'll be yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> there was... It's very uh, important. We got a donation. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> We've been, uh, so Noah and I are down there, and we're mm -hmm. zipping our mouths to not talk too much. So we haven't mm -hmm. been listening mm -hmm. too intently. But there was a lot of uh, excitement uh, around the second picks when they had four moxes uh, mm -hmm. on the team. Sure, yeah, okay. I mean, you got to be excited yeah, about that. You're winning the power war, baby. Yeah. yeah, and I hear Sam talking a lot about he needs to stop hate drafting. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he's been hate drafting. Uh, everything. Uh, everything, okay. Yeah, I hope it's the whole deck. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope he's like, boy, I can't wait to pick my Lissalana Huntmaster yeah. and draft the rest of my elf deck. I'm drafting spite.deck. <laughs> yeah. There have been at least three times where he's like guys i need to stop hate drafting and then i think he keeps doing it um, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's that's fun okay uh but the confidence seems to have been being lowered and lowered and lowered as the day's gone i don't really? know again Ooh, i don't know what that's okay. reflecting in the okay. decks but all right i I get that. It's uh, It's been a roller coaster of drafts so yeah. far. When we talked to them after the first break, they seemed pretty jazzed about the way their draft was going. They okay. seemed pretty yeah. confident in their strategies. Um, I but... want to get Brandon and Sam here in the second Ooh. break because they're both the soup drafters of their team. Oh, I agree. I they, think that would be a fun one. Yeah. Yeah. They've also said uh, that Brandon can draft any card now and they wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's true. I think that's what he's going for. That's exactly Trying to make the enemy team live in terror. Yeah. They'll never know what Brandon's going to wow, do. He's a wild man. Yeah. Like, is Kiki Jiki taken yet? And they're like, no, nobody's in that deck. Well, I guess maybe Brandon could. Brandon could, could take, it. take it. He could get you. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's tough. I mean, he just picked Eureka. Eureka. I just saw that. So, uh, so you went down and did the last uh, team draft in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you performed pretty well there. You drafted like a blue red Delver okay. deck, right? Yeah, blue red spells type promise mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Okay. So if I so the 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 funny controversy from that was that you and Papke were sitting next to each other. Papke was one of your teammates. Yeah. And you both drafted blue red. He drafted twin. You drafted Delver, and you were just right next to right. each other, running just running bumper cars into each other the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, and we were all kind of giggling and, and joking about that. It wound up working out okay. You're, the team yeah. did did well. Yeah, you won. Easy. Coming into this draft, mm -hmm. the St. Louis team was talking about um, thinking that the Chicago group would overvalue and overdraft the sort of blue-red tempo style deck. Maybe because of that. <laughs> Maybe, yes. They said their strategy was going to be sort of to implement a, a plan of forcing the blue cards onto the Chicago drafters yes. and then coming in and, and taking Later them out on, with taking... their main deck pyroblasts and mystical disputes. You know, and then and picking up some gotcha. of the, the middling Xerox spells, letting the Chicago team fall into the counter magic mm -hmm. and then yeah. sniping out the... So in a way, your legacy well, has gotten in the head of St. Louis and yeah, affected their strategies. Yeah, and if it backfires on them, it was all a plan. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Papke and I went in fully aware that we were going to you know, put on the facade of a fight for those colors. Um, but if it doesn't pan out, I was, you know, couldn't be bothered with Papke. I had the first pick that draft, you know, I, I, I just yeah, yeah. blew it. Oh, happening. Yeah, delightful. So Brandon with Depths, which I don't even know if it makes sense. You have W6, so probably compared to Sam, mm -hmm, who has Fast mm -hmm, and Steven, mm -hmm. who has Crucible. Sure, I mean, he so, could draft Thespian Sage. It probably wouldn't hurt him too bad in round no. six. He could, you know, the first 2020 doesn't win you the game a lot. But keep going. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Points, turn after turn, it works eventually. Exactly. There are only so many. Like, there's there's only one path to exile in the field. You have mm -hmm. the swords, the plowshares. So true, true. Yeah. Very. You true can also extend your game and that way. 
the guy with uh, swords all, and solid, or the guy with path and solitude also has dove and hand of control. So oh, yeah. really, he's the only guy you got to worry yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Covering your twenty twenty, honestly. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this crown. The crown. Yes. Yeah. The crown. At first, it, it started important. out as a clown mm-hmm. wig. Then it was a Burger King crown, and now it's just uh, evolved into. Uh, since Swifty was the best f- performing player at the last team event, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's going to start mm-hmm. king of the hill. Mm-hmm. Okay, and now needs the crown. Okay, and then we gotta we gotta document so each over the course of the day. If, so he's going to start. Crown moves. Yeah. we have to see the despair in his face, the adulation of his peers. You know, as as the enemy team cheers on his losing. And his then crown, they become king of the hill, and they take the crown. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and then we can track that across the day. So we figured the very important. Why not have the kids make it? Yes. If we can, if we you know, can. Emily's a if crafty possible. girl, so maybe she can make us up a little, you know. Yeah, I'm sure they'd be thrilled too, and we probably have the supplies oh, for it. Um, that would be pretty when they get back from yeah. the basketball mm-hmm. game. Ooh, sure. smart! Yeah, sure Ollie uh, getting ready to drain threes. They're not imagine. calling traveling. It's <laughs> five-year-old basketball. <laughs> nice. Sounds like a real competitive level. Yeah. You know, high. You know, uh, I'm not gonna say. Uh, Ollie's going to be out there breaking ankles per se, <laughs> but Maybe his own. They don't call him Ollie for nothing. For nothing. Okay, wait, no, that's a skateboarding. That's thing. a skateboard joke. That's yeah. actually. I would still go back to magic. I would go back to magic. It still involves <laughs> ankles. <laughs> oh, hey, we see a nice little another one of these little really fast back and forth. We see the dark depths picked, and then Swifty says, "Coming back, no sir." Like nope. here you go. This means age. Oh, but actually, I think this is another really great point. Dan, so we've answer. seen Brandon and uh, Dan and Stephen taking these different pieces to try to protect Dan's uh, over-reliance on artifact strategy. Yep. And we see Swifty coming in with energy, energy flux here. Yeah. Kind of showing the idea of like, hey, you can take all the collector oofs and null rods that you want. There are... And so you can, many you ways. can even yeah. take your, your Hercules recall away from me preemptively. There's more There's artifact so hate cards out hate. there. Yep. There's no end to them. Just so what, for, are you, what are you doing hate drafting? Yeah, just wait just for just Jacob to take... Well, Vandal Blast is wholly uncastable in this format if you want to overload it, but Shattering mm-hmm. Spree, Shattering mm-hmm. Pulse, mm-hmm. Shatter Storm. Mm-hmm. Ancient Grudge. Very uh, good. Meltdown, is that the one that just... No, sorry, not Meltdown. There's one that just costs one red and destroys an artifact. Mm-hmm. I think you Pulverize get... is like you exile some red cards Two or mountains, I think. Oh, yeah, Sack the Mountains something. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah, you could, uh, Jacob would yeah. also end up in Meltdown, which Strong. is super efficient. Mm-hmm. You have two Moxin, mm-hmm. so... you know, so it'll that's get, a fun time. Yeah, it'll get yours, but you get down. Um... Yeah, it's almost like, man, you guys are kind of wasting these hate picks because, listen, the card pool's deep. So deep. We'll yeah. just go to the well. Yep. And we'll, we will start Googling best artifact hate spells in Magic and yep. find the top 10 list from Scryfall. And the, so <laughs> I also like Mark's pick of Scrubland actually showing that he will cast this balance if he has to. Mm. Also, oh, worse. interesting. I thought it was more of a. I thought it was more talking shit. Like, hey, where are we right now? Chicago? Chicago. No, Scrubland. This is Scrubland. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I but I like your answer too. Mm-hmm. Maybe he wants to cast the spells. Thought awesome. monitor is that the Ooh. lizard that cycles? No, sir. This is the seven oh, in, mana blue and uh, eight cast. Yes, yes. sir. Okay, uh, which is a really nice one. It is one of those that always makes me say that I really want to draft Guy's Cradle and Talarian Academy in the same decks because affinity creatures are just mm-hmm. absolutely pog. Yep. So we love that. I like Dan's deck. STI you. coming in from the Discord channel. STI, one of our more active drafters. Uh, a blue card aficionado. Um, really likes Dan's blue artifact. Wonderful scene take combat. podcast. We love it. Uh, wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me. It makes a lot of sense, especially with all of his sort of like big blue draw spell kind of yeah. stuff going on. Like you have no way to tutor up thought monitor you just have to draw it so why not take thought cast as well but thought monitor also presents a threat and you could also put a hat on it so mm. it's a little bit better yep true especially if he winds up with any sort of like you know pants or anything to put on him yeah. you know there there are actually a fair number of like these blue uh i want to say like blue artifact lords there's the the phyrexian mana one from the mm. new set that's like whenever a blue creature you control becomes tapped you like loot or something yeah, like that. yeah i've mastered um that's been in the newest iteration of the vintage cube i think okay uh, and it, uh, it it's interesting. Oh, it's cool. There's thought nuts here. Hey, there's thought nuts here. So Stephen jumping in. Um, one of the first conversations we ever had the first time I went down to St. Louis was we talked about um, thought nuts here and reality smasher and how up 
here in the north we draft those cards all the time we mm -hmm. draft them in all of our like white aggro decks yep and he was like we've never drafted those cards a single time and then eric levine came in <sighs> that guy, twice in a row smash and showed st louis Sam how it's done smash. do you think sam's just gonna continue taking he's just like, oh reality smash give it to me oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can also just take uh oh besage who endures now yes. there is a big pick a uh, very very smart pick from him so do we we have no way we got one but no way to recur it which is fine mm -hmm. yeah i mean obviously you want to be the guy who has ren and six and and besage you yep. but so. if you can't you might as well be the guy with like fast bond and, yep and, and we have yavamaya yeah, to more combo more with arbor elf when everything's a forest you're going to tap anything and you True. we also have ruffalos which works well with true very very nice mark ruffalos um, yeah Chad, you you're a VRD enthusiast, master sure. of VRD. Yeah. Out of all these decks here, today. where do you think uh, where do you think you'd most like to be? I mean, we're about to come up on our second pause. If you had to have, if you had to pick one of these seats here, uh, and be like, that's the deck I want to play. Where do you think you'd be at? Uh, you two, Peter. Where where do you think? If you could pick any you of go these. Go first, because I have not really paid attention. To this. Um, I think Mark's deck speaks more to <laughs> mm, myself set. as a player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark and I just generally kind of jive as players um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the cards we enjoy so that's probably where I'd want to be if I right now if we were to just build and I wanted to win I'd probably want to be where Dan is ah uh, that's interesting I think I do yeah I Dan, think Dan's deck is I think game. Mark just needs to fill out the list more I think Dan's list has been filled out enough where it is a very playable list as it stands yeah how about you Chad yeah, um, I always say the draft is the means uh, to the end, which is the playing of the games. So <laughs> just hand me a pile, and I, I take that <laughs> okay. over drafting. Uh, uh, really? Looking right? over these, yeah, right. I, I, Very I'm the niche big opinion. minority Very of, niche of magic opinion. players. When we cube draft, he just like, oh, can we just random like? Come well, on, let's I just do let's, a seal. Let's, let's, yeah. let's just go. We were joking about it before. Uh, I ascribed to Ryan or over Terse idea of cube. This is the second time I said it on here, which is just you draft the cube and you just get back to drafting as fast as possible. So you do your matches, you draw your opening hand, a couple cards off the top, discuss who wins the match, move on to the next match the same way. <laughs> just then you don't actually have to get bogged down by that playing that. game. <laughs> yes. uh, it's play true. Chad, Chad is the advocate for like playing it out. It doesn't matter if my deck looks like shit, your deck looks awesome. I don't care. Battle. Let's right. go. Because it might have war. Um, so looking over these, uh, I like what Mark's doing. Uh, it's got the... The Sheldred seems seems good. Mm -hmm. Some ramp. Sure, uh, sure, Tinker. Yeah. Uh, you like uh, Lurus plus Black Lotus? You like that combo? Uh, yeah. That that seems, combo. Got a whole rule good. changed yeah. in Magic just uh, based on that. Jago's got True Name and Jit. That seems mm. uh, solid also. Big True Name aficionado. Uh, big, big True Name enthusiast. I'd probably over, over index that card. Mm -hmm. Where's uh, You and Jago both. I'm pretty yeah. sure. I How many times have we seen True Name Nemesis picked? True... There's a hyphen. Name Nemesis. I bet it's going to be like four times. 20? Dude, it's, it's so good. You just get it out there and protect it. How about you? Didn't you draft it one time when you won with Mono Blue? Yeah, it needs to make I don't think I put it in my deck. Okay. No, I don't think so. I think out of the multiple times I've drafted Mono Blue, yep. this card has never been anywhere close to any of my decks. It holds I, a GK really well. Sure. I will say that. Right. Bro. I can't believe how out of touch I am sometimes. My God, 28 of 32? It's got a 90 fucking percent. People want to cite right? this is the reason why me? you can't unlock GT in Modern. And I'm just here like, well, you got Fury. That seems like the reason you can't unlock Aggro in Modern. <laughs> we got other problems. <laughs> Who plays this card? Nobody. Anyway, Not even the Merfolk decks. 2014? My God. Mm -hmm. Anyway, disaster. Yep. Don't play True Name Nemesis, guys. Anyway, it's, I guess I guess I'm howling into the wind of people who like playing this card. The, the craftsmen are on their way back home. So first of all, Hilarious. apologies if the okay. garage door starts opening. I texted them, don't Ooh, open oh, the garage. That would be funny. Um, so if you guys Sweet get run over, party. just, just don't Jump, yeah. run away. Okay. Um, and uh, we'll see if we can get a crown built. Awesome. Cool. All right, awesome. So, so where would you like to be? Which deck? Uh, I'd go with Mark's. You okay. go with Marks. Probably. You like the combo man himself. I mean, hey, listen, Mark. You guys went down and you beat Mark in his own home, okay? And he took that. Well, he wasn't personally. playing. I know, and he took yeah. that personally. Yeah. And he said, "That's it. We're coming to your house." And I'm coming. I should have been. I'm playing. coming yeah. correct, son. Why didn't you let me play today? I'm coming to <laughs> mess it up. Hey, listen. I'm just saying, if these guys, if they beat us today, yeah. then you have to seek revenge for the the <clears throat> the. What do they call it? The no, uh, see, trilogy. That's, okay, yeah. maybe. But the way I see it is, if we win, of course we won because Chicago. 
But Let's if we go. lose, I'm just the event hall today. I don't have True, you don't have, to, you don't have to cop this. You don't have to cop this. As you said, the waning confidence of the Chicago crew as we um, wind into the twilight of the draft. Right. I think they're still confident. I, I don't want to, like, they're not all, like, in, don't it. They're in, not, in bad feelings. Morale is still good. But they yeah. were really excited at the first few picks, and that excitement seems to have fallen. <laughs> all right, good so, stuff. Right. Thank I'll you for joining us, Roommate Chad. Yeah, for sure. Try to get Noah to come up here. <laughs> okay. Right. Otherwise, he, he is not a real one. So okay. where, where would you like to be? <sighs> I think I'd like to... So Jacob Key's deck is certainly the most in, I would say, my style uh, and maybe what I've found the most success with in the past. Of all the notes I've taken on your drafts, this style of deck is the, mo like, the most similar to what I've seen you take because you want to make people seemingly respect Leovold, mm -hmm. respect Thoughtseize, mm -hmm. respect that kind of game plan. Yeah, I mean, um, in, a, in a format with people drafting such... Uh, eclectic decks having yep. such um, versatile answers like Thoughtseize seems to make a lot of sense to me and um, I always like to talk about like the default state of your cards and having lots of little creatures uh, to interact with your opponent with uh, that the default state of like a Dothy Voidwalker or Grief is just that you're kind of punching him in the face over and over again yep. makes for a nice thing so I think okay. like Jacob Key has certainly drafted the most uh, deck in like the style of draft that I would take. Yep. I would also probably really be jazzed to be playing Steven's deck. I really like um, the look, and I really like some of the things that he has going for him, like the like the Lutri that he has access to in his sideboard, the fourth year Lingus, the Ancient Tomb. Yeah, kind of I, I like that. Like His deck definitely seems very good. I played enough Mono Red Painter and Legacy to just not be enamored by this kind of play style anymore. I like Velocity, and the deck just doesn't have much of it. The initiative changes that a lot, for sure. Same thing with Fourth Year Lingus and the Monarchy. Uh, in terms of drawing extra cards, like, that's there. Mm -hmm. It's just because of that, that just seems like such low velo. And Dan's yep. deck doesn't, like, he picked up Thoughtcast, but there's not a whole lot of velo in there. It's just everything is so powerful. It makes me feel a little bit better about playing that deck compared to Stevens. But otherwise, I wholeheartedly agree. Oh, yeah. I'd be jazzed to play Dan's deck. <coughs> Dan's deck is a is a school of deck that I can really only bring myself to play every once in a while. I got had it. a really fun Zerda Bomberman draft uh, one time where I got a Black Lotus. Yeah, yeah that was a lot of fun. Um, I've drafted in the... It, when I say that I like drafting... What uh, is this card? Keep going. So you get Stormcaller? Oh, this I'm is I'm going to type this one while you're talking. Um, I, I am not joking when I say I really like to draft Academy and Guy's Cradle. Um, Stephen Hagen calls me out sometimes because he knows the kinds of things that I like to draft, and he, okay. he's gotten me before, where he's like, oh, as soon as I saw the Guy's Cradle on the Tolarian Academy, I knew Mason 100%. He was drafting Affinity. There was no chance he did okay, anything yeah, else. Yeah. Um, but boy, howdy. Drafting that kind of deck and then seeing everyone around you draft all of the meltdowns and vandal blasts and yeah, uh, yeah. and and fracturing gusts or whatever of the world and you're just sitting there like everything is awful. That's kind of why I <laughs> like the idea of the artifact in regular VRD the artifact deck being the last seat because you get to kind of pick the style of artifact deck you want to be and if everybody's just like well we'll hate out the hate out the artifact deck then you can just play something like uh, if, if you play it other formats like the hard hardened scale style which is just i'm going to grow my creatures large enough to get out of like yeah. damage range and then maybe stack it all on a ravager and just kill you one big hit like mm -hmm. and just try and get the game over with that way and if i hold back a couple of threats because i'm worried about getting blown out by uh, a meltdown or something similar then when i redeploy Mm -hmm. it's just enough power on board to just stack it all up again and, and, and get you. Or you could play like a Ballista combo and that's which again doesn't require a lot of artifacts to get going so you can re like the idea of like go again or re-going is there. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with it. You playing, know, there's a lot of different uh, ways you can take decks like this. Playing Dan's uh, I think deck Dan, Dan looks like he miserable. has a very I think Dan looks like he has a very reasonable uh, interpretation of this style of deck. It Maybe it's a little easy to hate on Yeah. But I think he's doing a good job drafting a versatile and powerful deck. Yeah, and I, he, like, he, I think he did need to lean on his teammates a little bit to yeah, pick to up some of those cards. Yeah, try to him a little bit, yeah. you know. Try it to help be, run interference for him. Yeah, every, but, every hockey player needs some enforcers. Yeah, know, exactly. It'd be like if, you are the enforcers. Yeah, uh, it'd be like if you were playing Mono Red, you would need your, te like your teammates to pick up Chill. True, and, and Jacob kind of has, uh, in, in the one VRD we saw him do, he did draft like 11 cards with protection from Red. Yeah. Because he's a hater. Yeah. So who who would be your Sean Avery? Who would run the screen? Oh, um, and just be an asshole in the crease. 
For uh, I, I look, I can't see anyone doing a better job than Brandon right now. <laughs> I, I, also, have you seen that guy? He's huge. He's an enormous man. I can't imagine he was just on a three-week vacation in Japan. He had to tower above everyone in that entire country. Dude, when you are over a certain height in Japan, there's um, so, uh, you don't quite get it as a foreigner unless somebody tells you. You have to worry about being what's called pirated. And in the rain, everybody has an umbrella out. And when you're tall enough, you just catch one of the points oh, of the umbrella in the God. eye. And so when you see somebody walking around Japan in the rain or after rain with an eye patch on, they were pirated. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, that sounds it awful. <laughs> to, to say that it would happen frequently enough to have a name. Yeah. Oh, horrifying. Uh, sorry. Terrifying. So, Let's catch up with the last couple of rounds of the draft. So you were interested in Seagate Stormcaller, of course, the two-mana creature that doubles up uh, an instant or sorcery that you play. Yep. Jago loves this as a, as a cube combo with Time Walk, and, so that's why he's picking it. And it's signifying that he was interested in something like Lutri, but ne not necessarily any of the adjacent cards or anything mm -hmm. similar to yep. Lutri. Well, I, you know, I'm sure Lutri is one of those cards. Like, when I see a Lutri go in that round based on cards that other people are picking, what that tells me is usually... And I said this about Gatexian Probe too. It's usually people forgot about it. Yeah. You know, it just it kind of slips by the radar, and you just and someone picks it, and you go, ah, oh, fuck, I probably should have picked that. Yeah. Um, Jacob picks Mount. Doom. And then yeah, Jake picks Mount Doom, which is just like another red black land that he can take. Yeah. Like you know, doesn't have a ton of access to a lot of the fetch lands and everything. He actually has two, so he's not doing too badly in that sense. But figures might as well get some lands with a little bit of utility. Mount Doom can deal a little bit of damage to my opponent. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't guess really it, foresee people activating the seven mana option. For no, it, I, that, that's kind of what I was looking at. So Mount Doom costs three to to ping. What does Shiv and Gorge take? Five, I think. Is it okay? I think I'm it not is. One hundred percent sure. But um, Stencia Blood Hall is also a five mana pinger. Got uh, it. But it also only taps for colorless mana. Which is something to think yep. about. Mount oh. Doom at least kind of acts in that pain land yes, space. Yes, which is why I imagine. And, and at this point, Jake must be feeling pretty confident about his number of picks because he's taken four lands in a row. The man's just, oh no, it's three mana. I thought it was three, but I, I figured there was a downside was to it. It, said it only taps for colorless, which is the downside to that. Yeah. So you take... Also legendary, so you know. It is part Bummer. of. Bummer. It... <laughs> Bummer. It is the red land in the Tolarian Academy cycle, which enamors me to no end. True. What's better, tapping for 11 blue mana or dealing damage to your opponent? Each, Each. opponent. Mind you. At a, a point Tough in time where you're not really playing. Oh, God. Tough to say, honestly. And the, the black one is Shivan Portal to Phyrexia. my eyes out. Yeah. Anyway. Um, ooh, Garrick Unleashed. That's an interesting one, right? Have we seen a lot of Garrick Unleashed? Uh, yeah, Seeker. Phyrexian Tower is at least respectable. They printed it into Pioneer. It goes in the, uh, the Cauldron deck. So it has a home and a purpose. I don't even... It's at the bottom. Uh, I know what most of the Gurukhs do. I was going to say, head. I played this card in standard and never Gains in a trample. BRD. So up to one creature gets plus three, plus three. Dude, you know how big that true name nemesis becomes? That's oh a six god. four. Oh my god, you have a great point. Oh my god. Oh, and Brandon comes in with another really sick pick, which is dressed down. This yeah. is another really. Oh, are we way too far down on the screen? On the... Boop. Uh, well, do we go too far? Uh, maybe we're right. I'm gonna just do. No, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna leave it like this a little bit so we can see. It Talk amongst ourselves, but check yes. Sander, check uh, thank you, Seeker. Appreciate the feedback. Always appreciate the feedback, unless it's ever criticism of me in any way, shape, or form. In which case, I should leave that at home. Yep. All right. Dress so, down <laughs> does. Oh. In fact. <laughs> Wait, do I want to allow it? Oh yeah, no, there was no. That one. If it was like dress down fucks this person specifically and we hate that guy. No, wait. Actually, I would say that. So, you know, maybe I should get moderated for bullying people. Anyway, um, let's see. Let's who, catch who do you so, take that from besides Mark? Like, who, who do you. Uh, as the Brandon. dress down? Yeah. Um, oh, I think you take it from Swifty, right? I mean, yeah. you don't want Swifty to have. He dress can't down. recycle it. Yeah, so. It's a. Busted card. I'm not. I'm not in time. disagreement with that. Oh, Mark yeah. is the one with Luris, though, so in Mark can also. At least I would back. argue you play it as Jago too, because you play it, and then you play your Uro, and then you beat them to death with your gigantic Uro. And there, look, I love living in magical Busted. Christmas land. It is one of my favorite Busted. places. It is one of my okay, favorite okay. places on Here's this planet. The Brandon knows that Jago is one of my friends, and therefore he knows that Jago has an obsession with Stifle Knot. And knows that Dress Down Phyrexian Dreadnought got it. is a okay. wombo combo. Okay, no, I get that. If you if, if you got the read that that this is a a, a play pattern, then 
I'm in for it. it. I get it. He's I get like, it. He's like, bro, you can stifle the sack trigger of your. Yeah, let me know when you get to illusionary okay. mask on that one. Listen, okay, I'm here for modern day stifle knot. I'm here for the new new. Okay, uh-huh. I'm here for play my uro, draw trigger, play an uh, play a land, tap that land, stifle the yep. sack trigger on my uro. Oh my god, busted. Yeah, busted. Even if people don't have what is going on, they can still hate your stage. You know what? It's not yeah. a bad point. All right. Ash Dream, Dream Render. Render. That's not that's which one is that? That's the one that Anti-search. players can't search libraries. Yep. Yeah. And then, and then Vault of Whispers. Whispers. Seen a few different uh, little artifact lands getting popped yeah, up see here. From... Do we think we're gonna see Mark take a beseech the whatever it's beseech called? Beseech the mirror. Maybe. I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick. Yep, I'll be here. Uh, we talked about the siege last night. Very good. Okay, gang. Peter's finally out. It's just you and me, chat. Give me some give me something. Give me some takes. Give me some uh give me some shit to talk about. Miscalculation from Swifty. Honestly, I do think it's a travesty that we're not gonna see any stifle not action happening on the screen today. It's kind of a bummer. I keep wanting to do it, but like in the Discord drafts, all the blue cards go so haywire. And then in the paper drafts that I've done, when I take blue cards, they're just all blue cards. Like it's all blue. It's blue all the way down, so I never have to. But it's tough out there. Oath of Nyssa coming in from Brandon. That card sucks. You know, fuck it. Now that Peter's here, I don't have to be nice. Fuck Oath of Nyssa. Dog card. Ban League 2 stage drama. I don't know what that type of... Yeah, Beseech the Mirror is what I was thinking of. What a, Ban League 2. So Ban League's interesting. Ban League's fun. I kind of feel like it's a little inorganic because you guys started with a big ban list. You didn't just let it go. I mean, I understand why you didn't let it go naturally for the first like two cycles because why bother, but... I, I kind of would have liked to see someone throw some monkey wrenches in there. It would have been funny. Take a peek at it. Um, I will take a peek at it. Fuck it. We're live. I can do whatever I want. Trash boat, my man. Now, wait. is Trash, are you the one who's on um, hiatus? Have you, are you the one who's retired or no? Was that, uh, was that like Common or one of those guys? I don't remember. Let me see. Ban League 2. What did you do? Tino still harbors resentment that I took his Oriox salvagers. However, that was a very similar situation. What is happening? Ever has written a paragraph over here. Oh my lord. Advocating for hate picking a combo while yours is up is spicy. <laughs> oh, the controversial hate drafting. Hey, Emily. How's it going? Good. What's going on, kid? Um. Hello. Say hi. Hi. There's thousands of people watching you right now. Thousands. Yes. They're so excited to see you. They said... So um, this is the crown creator. Are you going to make a crown for us today? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. She needed to get some exciting. information about what color, oh, okay. what we want yeah. the crown mm-hmm. to be like. Mm-hmm. So. That's good. Well, you know, our friend over here in the chat room donated uh, donated to the stream. Uh, Rumble Rob over here. See, he just said something. Rumble Rob. Say hi, hi Rob. Hi, Rob. Yeah. Um, he donated to get a crown for Swifty. You know who Swifty is, right? In the basement, Swifty? Yeah. With the glasses? Yeah. Um, so he needs a crown because he's the current king. Okay. Ooh, what's your record in VRD? She's so undefeated. Undefeated. She's undefeated. Undefeatable. Okay. She, we did yes. build her a magic deck that she's beaten Mason with. She has beaten me with it 100%. Yeah. Actually, I think she might be 100% against me. I'll be honest. I don't actually know if I've beaten her yet. <laughs> so, nice job, V5. Heck yeah. All right, so what color do you want the crown to be? What color? Rob, Rob, if you've got any input, feel free to shoot us some what kind of crown you got going. But, yeah, I mean, what's your favorite color, Elmi? Um, pink. Pink? That's actually my favorite color, too. That's awesome. Well, that's my second favorite color. My my first favorite color um, is, like, golden. Oh, golden. That's good. Well, you know, crowns are gold. So, yeah, that makes sense. Do we have any gold? Are we going to blacksmith a (laughs) a golden crown? Um, um, How's it going? Just a minute. Um, Um, If I could make it, then I would do this part um, pink and this part white so I could draw on it. I think that sounds like a pretty good idea. Rob says he also likes pink. So I think pink sounds like a good plan. So that should be what we need. Let's go make a crown. All right, 100%. Thanks, kiddo. (laughs) 
you don't get you can get the crown if you beat if you beat the players for it. That's the key. Beat the players for um, it. I hope Peter's also going to go get Brandon, so we can have you guys in here for a little little struggle bust, a little struggle. Side. Brandon's the one I'm hate drafting. Um, you're all hate drafting each other. It's all it's all a mess out here. Um, I actually think Jago and Brandon have has the most contentious relationship, but I don't think Jago knows it. So Jago's taken, Jago has no idea. So Jago's taken a bunch of cards that on the Discord server Brandon is like known for. He is known for Hex Drinker and like Questing Beast. Those are like his signature wheelhouse of cards. Mm. Like he exclusively takes them almost. So it's really funny that just coming that way directly into Brandon, he's sniped him like twice. It's really funny. So honestly, we have no idea what Brandon's doing. Yeah, well, I mean, it sounds so like, confused. It sounds like he's like playing playing defense, you know. Okay, Throwing elbows, makes sense. Trying makes to beat people up. It sounds like that's also been a bit of your strategy. Um, I've um, just been I've just been confused. That's what this is. <laughs> I Ch- swear, Cassidy all of these Burn. cards were intentional, <laughs> and I thought that I was going to use them at one point. <laughs> Beautiful. We love it. We love to see it. So this, you are the only of the of the eight players here today. You are the only one who has not done a St. Louis VRD before. Is that correct? That's, that's right, right? Yeah. But you well, have done, like done how VRDs many VRDs? Before, like two, two or three? Yeah, two. two. Um, but you do a lot of cube drafting, mm-hmm. and you draft. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, at least last I checked, you did quite a bit of like MTG Arena playing. Like, oh yeah, it's always it's there. always trying to force like four or five colors. Obviously, this deck doesn't really show that off very well, but... Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you are a killer cube drafter. You are one of like the most consistent winning cube drafters uh, that we hang out with and we play with. I mean, That's you, a fair statement. I, I, I know it's a fair statement, I, as much as people would not want to admit it. Because, like, look at this big, handsome man. Can he be smart and handsome? Wow. That's, no. It's actually kind of unfair. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, you are absolutely one of the winningest cube players that we hang out with. So... Uh, how how different is VRD, especially in this kind of like, you know, you're playing with a bunch of guys. I mean, you don't know a lot of these guys per se, uh, yeah. but at least you've heard from me or some of the other guys that like, they draft a lot. They do this a lot. And like, they came with like spreadsheets, tens of hours of preparation for this. Like they are, they are ready to go and you're kind of like flying by the seat of your pants. So what's the difference between like a VRD and like a cube draft? This definitely felt so so different going on to it especially being a team aspect being able to converse with other people on like what the better call is Mm -hmm. uh because it's really shaped my deck and it's really shaped chaco's deck i think jake's Mm kind of just been you know free roaming yeah he doesn't have to deal with anybody really fighting uh and swifty a little bit um i think it is a very like, personal relationship with these people I haven't met yet because like sure. I'm hate drafting them and they're hate drafting me. <laughs> it's like it's a little bit of a, yeah, a yeah. Little it it, is, there, it is definitely just very different, especially like compared to Cube. Yeah, yeah, right on. Very Where cool. it's like not as much thought into like what the next card is. Mm-hmm. So you've got um, you've got what 15 ish picks left. Yeah. Um, do we want to have Brandon and him both talking at the same time? Do you want to just have them both on? We can have them talk. Yeah, just bring him in. Just bring him in. I think that sounds funny. Got you. Got you. I'm probably not going to Brandon. talk about my future picks. Come sit down. Yeah, you don't have to talk about that anymore. Now we get to hear the, the heat, okay? Got bring you. On. Got you. Got you. Is there, a, is there a heat? Because Listen, I haven't realized it. These two, you can't tell, but these two are massive men. Look at my head compared to theirs, okay? They're huge. And they're both playing enforcer for their team. They're both playing defense. Run in, what do you run mean in defense? the. I'm, not, I'm just drafting <laughs> there. There's no way you put all these cards in Grind the deck together. Grindstone. I was, I was going to mill myself. Without thinking. It was. It, yeah, you for value, value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For value, for value. So you right. can cast a hooting mandrels for cheaper. Yeah. See, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> you do. You, you've been, you've been yep. like listening in. Yeah, yeah you're mm-hmm. uncannily like. By the way, you know how I know that because this is Doctor Pee Pee Poo Poo MD. Okay, and this is Doctor Cockter. Oh, so that's true. Oh. It's, the similarities here. Pee-pee it's actually cock. unbelievable. Beautiful. Pee-pee. Do we have um, any questions for us? I do have some questions yeah, for you yeah. guys. So I think both of you guys have been uh, designated by your teams as being the guys doing the hate drafting, throwing yeah. elbows, playing defense, uh, I, fighting I, fighting the enemy I, team. I've been what trying to talk like? to the other one to do it and they won't do it. <laughs> do you Swifty like... Swifty has been talking to me about it, but the other two are like, yeah. no, I want to make a better deck. Like, <laughs> all right, I mean, not fighting I, I'm going to play 30 main deck cards if you don't mind. Um, <laughs> How confident are you, you, both of you, how confident are you in your ability to, like, 
actually put together matches and like win when it comes down to it? Or do you feel like you're going to be taking a bunch of L's for your team? I am confident in two of my teammates very strongly. Um, yeah, I mean, this was basically my... I mean, we're in break two. I think I can talk about this at this point because it's already happened. But uh, yeah, my plan was basically to come in and uh, run either four color... Four color minimum, and mm-hmm. I just got into five mm-hmm. colors. Yeah, which I think I'm gonna, I will run main deck five <laughs> color. I like it. I like it. But uh, you know, my my plan was to do that and to be able to simultaneously get value for my deck as well as taking important things off of the board for your team. Fair. Um, Fair. And uh, you know, I think at, at a certain point, the, the that the damage that my drafting did had already been done. And so, yeah, now things are a little bit muddled. Mm-hmm. But I think that the cards that I got mm-hmm. out of that strategy are still pretty strong. The real question is just, like, what is going to make it into the main board? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I always knew that I was going to get yeah. my win cons and everything else kind of figured out in the latter mm-hmm. half. Um, well, I mean, let's be honest, right? Take a look at the uh, the first few picks of this draft. Yeah. Um, Minsk and Boo, Ragavan, Mox Diamond. We got some... Green creatures working their way into the mists, all the way up until you take Nissa, who shakes the world. Yeah, it's not like you're out of your comfort zone with this. I mean, this is really in your wheelhouse. Yeah, it's as uh, far as like cards we would expect you to take. Yeah, uh, I you know I I'm not as high on Ragavan I think as a lot of people are, uh-huh. but it, I mean it's still a very good card. Uh-huh. So um, so do you remember when I asked everybody at the start of the draft like yeah. if you could envision a, a card that you were going to play today? Oh yes. You know, what what is would that a- card be? So. This man said, Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes. <laughs> so he just felt the would, fight. Would have been yeah, nice. Yeah. I but would... uh, Swift, he was already talking about it at that point anyway. So I'm like, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, like, it's really hard to pass up uh, <laughs> a oh, green absolutely. blue mox. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. that's a very strong start. And so if you miss out on Minsk and Boo, then it's understandable. But. Uh, I can't disagree. It's a really powerful yeah, card, and it's yeah. been one of the top, you know, uh, spells with colored pips in them that we've seen people take. So right. makes a lot of sense. I, uh, I especially with Mana Crypt too. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. having having the ability, not reliably, but the ability to cast mm-hmm. it on turn one if I want to. Mm-hmm. Um, and then now here's a funny side effect. So um, yeah. our friend Jago, um, who doesn't play on, uh, who hasn't played on any of the online drafts. Um, so therefore, doesn't know some of your reputation. Oh yeah. Doesn't he, I don't even. Doesn't even know my thing and took, and took <laughs> us that he took X drinker and Sweet. then questing beast. You know, just the same direction coming right at yeah. you over and over again. Yeah. Did uh, you feel a little personally attacked by that one? No, I mean, I definitely wanted Hex Drinker, and I definitely eventually wanted Questing Beast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, like, still looking back on it, like, my list still wants both of those cards. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Uh, I I knew that <laughs> my role going into this was just to be taking stuff off the board that mm-hmm. streamlined your, the, the, your path to victory. So um, mm-hmm. it's, it, it's a bummer to not have Hex Drinker. But there's also a lot of setup that goes into having Hex Drinker in your deck with the Green Sun Zenith, and like, I would have had to mm-hmm, mm-hmm. make a lot of mental space for yeah. Hex Drinker too. Yeah, I'm awesome. personally upset that he he hate drafted Hex Drinker from me. <laughs> I, Your that own makes teammate. Yeah. That's that's really the the cross that Sam is bearing here today. He's not yeah. only hate drafting for his team; he's being you, hate drafted by his team. team. Damn, that's brutal. You hate that's to see so it. So harsh. Because clearly, I was the Hex Drinker deck yet. Yeah. Pick four, four right? Yeah, I just four. want to say right now that I'm just perplexed by the Beseech the Queen card yeah. that is currently being served. You know, we get wild in the lab over here, okay? We talk yeah. about all kinds of crazy shit. Um, yeah. You know, the other funny thing is that Brandon is the fast bond guy. So you have mm. the fast bond. He's the fast bond guy. I Are promise. I'm, I promise. I'm playing it, and I'm not. It. I'm not I, putting it in the sideboard. That makes sense because it's fast bond. I. I mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not joking right now. Yeah. Am yeah. I? yeah definitely. I've de- well, I'm not def- playing. Def- I, don't like the, I don't think I'm the, playing it. Like the last draft I did, I definitely mm. didn't put it in the sideboard because you're like, oh, maybe I'm not getting the value out of this that I thought I would. That's uh, the that's the game you play. See, so the fast bond guru is telling you, you know what. Sometimes yeah, happens. you. What do you, know? you never, you don't become a fast bond guru until you realize when it's best uh, not to play fast bond. Yeah, you also have experience with this. Oh, I love the fast our uh, our last VRD, I ended up 
I think second picking Minskin Boo and having fast bond in my deck. Yeah, that's, that's... and I think I think legitimately he came up with the idea that like the best thing I can do with Minskin Boo is try to throw my Merit Lodge <laughs> my opponent because <laughs> not it was, you know what? Uh, oh, hey, that's twenty. It, mm -hmm. it, exactly. It draws cards. And it all draws we cards. care about is twenty, you guys. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to draw the cards. Oh, it needs to be a hamster, doesn't it? Can we just walk around? Good. Well, make them fucking finish this draft. God damn. Oh <laughs> yeah, my god. No. Um. Okay, guys. Yeah. Obviously, we're isolating the teams. If you have one threat for the enemy team, go ahead and lay it on me. Sam, go. Uh, give them, give them, I'm gonna make you shit. beat me threat. so hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was terrible. Brandon, <laughs> give them give them a real threat. Threat the enemy team. Show I, them what's what. <laughs> Get yeah. wrecked. <laughs> Cuck? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We're, we're, we're on Twitch. We're going to like... give you guys more yeah. um, more shit talking lessons next time. All right. Thank get you. out of here. Yeah. Go draft your cards. Good job, guys. Good luck. Be careful with the... Let Swift, you know, he's got a crown incoming. <clears throat> yeah, it's almost done. Perfect. Love it. Yep. So, okay. much like VRD, when. Uh, we do mm. these in St. Louis. The break was extended for pizza ordering. Oh, okay, good. So that's do we, what we, do we found out where we're ordering pizza from? Someplace with an R. Okay. Someplace with an R. The, we love it. The question was floated, do we want Chicago-style pizza? And everybody from St. Louis went, wait, what's that? And then everybody remembered what it was. And the, a response from somebody who wasn't even playing went, the lasagna is almost done, so we do we need that kind of pizza? <laughs> um, I, so I know there are a lot of Chicago style pizza haters in the world, okay? You do not have to go far to find them. There are even a lot of Chicago style haters in Chicago, I mean, the Chicago area. I am not one of those people. I fucking love a four pound pie, okay? Oh right. my God, it makes me just, mm, it's my favorite thing. So I grew up uh, in the East Coast, mid-Atlantic. So for me, the word uh, would you, sorry, the phrase would you like pie has multiple meanings and I need clarification. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> not thin crust, but New York style, I guess if you want to call it that, is what okay. I grew up on. Sure. That is pizza I respect. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Deep dish definitely has its place, um, but I am more of a New York style pizza truther than mm -hmm. I am a Chicago mm -hmm. Pizza truther, and I don't know what Arizona or Chicago or California style pizzas are, so mm. they can just fuck off. Hey, California Pizza Kitchen. <laughs> oh yeah, know. there's that. Yeah, no, no. probably like you know what I we uh, the Chicago boys. I went to GP Anaheim when I was a kid, and we got uh, pizza in California, and it was literally maybe the worst thing I've ever eaten in my entire life. It, it was like there was salt water on my pizza. It was disgusting. It was, oh, oh, oh. So we have Sam coming around with some cooked. elves. Disgusting. Yes, my guy. Okay, listen. We knew what he was about. We knew these last 15 picks were going to hit. He, I mean, he took the Arbor Elf Utopia Sprawl combo. Yep. I wonder if he's going to take Wild Growth, uh, the, okay. the second Utopia Sprawl, if you will. And uh, what's the... There's Wild Growth and... I know those are the two that cost one mana, um, yeah, which are uh, nice. Fertile Ground was the one I was thinking of. It cost oh, two, yeah, but it, cost two. it doesn't make an extra. It just makes one of any color. Yeah, just right. yeah. in the... Kind of in the same way you can use it to fix your mana with Utopia Sprawl. Yep. I think, um, was was Fertile Ground in one of the cubes or something? It was in the, it I'm was sure in the Magic was. 30th Anniversary cube. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Um, and it made for a nice little, you know, boom, 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 fix your mana and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I just played in a friend of mine's vintage cube that had Wild Growth alongside Utopia Sprawl, alongside Arbor Elf, et cetera, yep. et cetera. And you can do some cute stuff with it for any oh, for sure. and things like that. Yeah, it, it, it means that um, you can have two different style of green ramp decks, which is, mm -hmm, it, it, mm -hmm. that idea is difficult to espouse to and even a 540 cube because just okay we want prime time and that green ram style of deck to be a thing and we want like creature based i.e elves to be a thing mm -hmm. so how do we best influence both of them mm -hmm. without them pulling now, away from each other what i do not suspect that we are going to see a a elf lord style elf deck mm -hmm. unfortunately I no matter so. how much i want there to be yeah. oh, oh. Oh my god. Let's, let's park. Gracious. Just come right back okay. around and display hey. this thing. Perfect. Yes. Bring it over, Emily. Get right there on camera. You see yourself? Look at that Hold crown. <gasps> this is perfect. Beautiful. You did such a this great job. This is what your tax but your taxpayer dollar. Can I, can I, Dad, can you come over here? 
Oh, yes. Okay, here you go. This is how it looks on a people. On a people. On a people. You are a people. Incredible. Beautiful. Look at that. Way to go, Emily. And she just whipped that up. Not even a big yeah. deal. Don't yeah. worry, guys. She's available for commission. Let her know. Yeah. Uh, Crowns all day long. That's yeah. going to be great. You're going to go deliver that to Swifty when we start our matches? I think you guys should keep it here and okay. invite mm -hmm. Swifty up and crown him before the matches start. I think that's a good That's idea. what the people want, right? Yeah. Like, that, I got you I people think that in is the chat. The, yeah. I don't know what these guys are oh, thinking. I love the Pope hat. Can I, can I, yes, absolutely. Can I put it on? Yeah. I think the people, the when, people. Well, yeah, when, when he comes up. When he comes up. When he comes up. up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That we'll sounds come, like a good we'll get Let's leave it here for right. now. Thank okay. you, Emily. You are a master. You're for a wizard. Now? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, Emily. <laughs> you're the best. Thank you. Stephen um, with Blood Moon, which is interesting. It is. It's got a little bit of a pop I know. I see going. I like it. I dig it, to be Dorady honest. Goblin Pope. We've been talking about it all day long. Yes. Beautiful. We love it. Can we, right. Oh, yeah. Hold on. If we put it back a little further, further. We, it might actually just make the cast. Oh, beautiful. Right there. Yeah, there you go. All right. So, I suspect we are not going to see a an elf lord style oh, back. I don't okay. think we're going to so, see an elvish arch druid come out I, here. You know? That is the only one I could... Uh, priest and Archdruid are the only ones I could think of, and Archdruid for me just happened just hap is a Lord by happenstance. It's just Priest of Titania number two. Yeah, yeah, Priest of Titania. I mean, it's a it's a nice card, and so there's like a there's like a, a way of thinking about a mana dork. You know, he's got Sylvan Carry added in his deck, which yes. is very questionable. Um, you it's look at a card anything. like Rafelos, and you think to yourself like, how much does my Rafelos need to tap for before it's good? And the answer really is like two, right? Because yeah, I was mana darks tap for one. If you have a mana dark that's tapping for more than one, that's that's pretty good. I right? think you, it's like um, it's kind of like the Cabal Coffers conundrum, which is how many swamps do I need before my Cabal Coffers actually starts making mana? And the answer to that is four. Right. Um, um, but I mean, if your Rafalos is tapping for four, you're probably winning the game. Oh yeah, I think because Rafalos taps for two, I, you, like I, I think you want to I think you want to untap play a land and tap it for three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But at that point, I mean, you're you're so far. You've made ahead. your money back. You're on so Rafflers. far ahead yeah. of every other mana dork in game. You know. Yeah. So priest of Titania, in a similar way, is like, well, it'll always tap for one. Mm -hmm. So in the same way that Sylvan Carry will always tap for one, it taps for one. If you can get it to tap for two or three, I mean, you are you are Golden. doing it. Yeah, you absolutely. are doing so, it. So so is oh uh, why can't I remember the name of this elf? Um, uh, the one it costs one, and you can tap three untap elves you control to make three heritage blue. druid. It's a heritage druid, yes, okay. sir. So in that in this instance, then you need a critical mass of elves, and yes. we don't have a whole lot of picks to make right. that happen. Yeah, um, I mean, if he did fifteen dedicated, hey, I'm going to draft like elf. <clears throat> um, I think they call it typal. Yep. Um, elf typal deck. Right? Yeah. Uh, you can you can make, definitely make that happen because if you think about all the ancillary cards you're going to have in your deck to take up the last another 10 slots, yep. you really only need 15 dedicated elves. Query, though. Mm -hmm. Do you want... Um, what's the... nature? Not Nature's Lore. Why can't... I, I don't play elves enough. The spell from Kamigawa. Glimpse of Nature. Glimpse. Yes. So um, you want 14 elves and Glimpse? Uh, yeah, I mean, do you want Skull Clamp? Do you want... Mm -hmm. um, do you want Concordant Crossroads in your deck? You know, like, these are all good questions. Good morning, mm -hmm. hyphenated. Good morning, hyphenated. I mean, it's not hyphenated, though. It's hyphen dashed. Hyphen or dash underscored. Yeah. Hyphen oh, yeah, underscored. Yeah, underscored. yeah, it does so, really well off the tongue. Um, ooh, what's Irrelevant Rel Builders? Is that the uh, three drop that shatters something? Irreverent. Irreverent Rebeler. So. Is this an AFR card? Is this why I, I don't know it? Is this this search function? It's just not not wanting to cooperate. When you it's like the first time you actually search for the card, it seems like on the site mm, it's it's gonna take a moment. Interesting. Which is why I think, yeah, I want to say irreverent revelers is the three mana satyr that like you get to search for, or you get to shatter something, or it gains haste. This oh. is why the search is down because it uses scryfall. That makes sense. Well then, we're just gonna imagine what we think it might do, and then we'll just Google. You no, know, it is. So it is the, uh, it is the three mana two two gray ogre <laughs> that destroys an artifact or gets haste until end of turn. Ah, uh, okay. But it's not from AFR. It's from Theros. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Got and it. it's 
it's serviceable. It's fine. I've seen it in some cubes and stuff. It's it's a reasonable card. Like the hasty body is nice. There's, yeah, that makes. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm thinking Jake is like at this point really looking at what are his four matchups going to be, and can he shore himself up against yeah, them? If and he's can... probably looking at Dan's deck and thinking what everyone else is thinking, which is goddamn. Bad. Yeah, how Dan's do I, deck yeah. is really freaking good. And I think it's. I didn't realize that this optionally gain haste, which means it's better than Manic Vandals in a matchup where you don't have yes. targets for it. Yep, 100%. And that is, like, there have been a bunch of iterations of the Vintage Cube where people put Manic Vandals in your deck, and it's like, hey, guys, they printed a better Manic Vandals, you know, pretty recently. Have you, mm. at, like, I know Manic Vandals is a bit of a classic, yeah. but have you ever thought about putting the better Manic Vandals in your freaking cube? And it's like, okay, fine. Um, ooh, Dan's taking a pretty interesting one here. Kappa Cannoneer. So when we were talking Love about that. Thought Monitor, I was going to ask about Kappa. And I mentioned 8 cast. So I was going to bring up Kappa Cannoneer. Singular. Yeah. But I didn't know if we would actually make it to Kappa Cannoneer or not. Yeah, well, it's a really nice one. So this is one of those... Um, I just recently tuned into a Discord VRD match mm -hmm. where um, STI was playing against our friend Stephen Hagen, and Stephen Hagen plays a Null Rod on him, and uh, STI was playing a, a largely artifact-centric blue mm -hmm. deck. Um, very kind of similar to what Dan's got working with. And uh, he manages to get maybe two or three artifacts in play and then gets this Null Rod dropped on his head, taps everything for improvise because you can still, you still do that, do that. Through, yep. through that, plays Kappa Cannoneer, and then for the rest of the game is just running out literal yeah. do-nothing artifacts, pumping his Kappa Cannoneer and smashing in, yeah. and wins the game you know, in a few turns. So, it doesn't take that many unblockable attacks by this giant idiot. No, not, not at all, um, because it just grows over time, as opposed to Psy Master Thopperus that goes wide over time, which is also, also open nice to Dan. Especially when you're working and with Urza. So. Emery. And Emery. We have not seen an Emery yet, but we also, we, have, we've seen... Have we seen Breach? Yes, Breach. Jacob has Breach, picked up in round 21. Yep. We have not seen uh, anything. To, well, Jacob's, lock, Jacob's not going to play anything to go with Breach, so that's fine. Nightmare Weaver, so Brandon's taking the mill, Ashiok, for reasons unknown. Yeah, I'm a little unsure about that one. Maybe he's thinking. Honestly, I mean, we know Brandon. He loves playing his mid-rangey Planeswalkers. Um, Another reason, to, or something else to do with the blue, and he takes Oath of Nyssa above that, so as long as you... I want to say as long as you sequence them the cor correctly, as long as you draw them in the correct order, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, I, I mean, it, Brandon did make mention that like he's officially touching all five colors now and is planning yep. on act actively playing all of his cards. Like so, he's planning on tapping for all five colors. Man, what did I miss during um, during the break? During the break, um, with, I made with both Sam in. and Brandon. Oh, uh, I just got them both in here and both kind of just chit chatting about you know. Uh, it seems like they're both kind of running interference for the rest of their team. Sam said, well, yeah, I guess. I kind of don't really want to very much, but the rest of the team is just keeps not. I'm like, hey, maybe you guys can hate draft some cards, and I'll take some cards yep. for my deck. And they go, eh, we're going to keep taking cards for our deck. You just you keep doing your thing, yeah. Sam. You, you do, your, do your work yeah, over there. Yeah, you are... And, uh... And Brandon said basically what you had kind of mentioned at the start of the day, which was that like he's totally happy in the Naya mid-range kind mm -hmm. of space, and that's where he started his draft. He's branching out a little bit now at the end because he's got some some eclectic picks going yep. in different directions, but this is basically where he wanted to be, yep. so he's pretty happy with it. I like Spellqueller um, with a very early Tef 3. Now um, It is not legendary, so you can't bounce it with Karakas, but you can still do dumb things. Mark picks up... Bounce it with your own Teferi, you know? Yes. Spell Mark picks up Astrolabe, which we were wondering where that mm -hmm. was going to end up going with uh, Jago might pick that up mm -hmm. with Ice Fang Coddle, but also picks up Back to Basics, which... Yeah, so he took Back to Basics, his compatriot Steven took Blood Moon, yep. so clearly they have decided that they're going to try to make um, everyone's Jacob. life even a little bit harder. I think it's Jacob, really. Swifty does not have many duels or no. non-basics at all. And he doesn't have the worst mana base either. No. I mean, he's, he can play a lot of Planes and Islands and probably be okay with exactly. it. Exactly. Um, to the point where, you know, I, I know friends of mine... Oh, shit. <laughs> Throwing on the grout. Oh, I wonder Goblin if we're going to get... Uh, what is it? Goblin... Is it, Master? is it Legionnaire? The one from Return to Return to Rav? The one with Mentor? Legion... Oh, uh, Goblin Banneret? No, no, no. The That's one... the one with Mentor. It makes a token. Oh, oh. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, shoot. What is that guy called? Chat, help us out. We're flying. Yeah, thank you. Um, a classic. I played four of it in my, uh, my legacy deck at one point. I just can't Ooh. play me. Mono um, Red Prison or whatever you want to call it. I did. I that did. is... Um, so I played that deck back in the day. So back in like Gen Con... Legion Warboss. That's thank it. You. Thank yes. you. 
I can mean, like, I want to say Gen Con like 2013 or something. Very, very long time ago at this point. Um, way worm. before they printed all the actual good cards for the deck. Um, back when it's called Dragon Stompy. Oh yeah, because of Rakdos Pit Dragon. Yes, and I played four Rakdos Pit Dragon, and I played four Seething Song, and I played four Thunder My Hellkite, and I played four Stormbreath Dragon. Stormbreath Dragon was the new hotness back yeah. then. One of my favorite matchups in Legacy was actually against that, but I'll get to that story in a moment. Mm. I played I, I played SCG Legacy Opens and did quite well in them. I top oh, yeah. 16 a few of them. I top 16 an Invitational. You were right playing Trinisphere in the main, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Eight, how many Soul Lands? Eight? Uh, eight. Yeah. Uh, I was playing, you know, it was a fairly standard, yeah. you know, Chrome Mox and stuff. And uh, I top 16 an Invitational during the Deathrite era of Legacy playing Flame Tongue Kabu in my deck. And a very standard play would be my Flat. opponent would play... Turn one death right, yeah. and I would go turn one flame tongue cover your death right, and then start attacking and for, for four, four because that is and yeah. yeah. the job done. I beat Brad Nelson Whoa. on his way to the top eight, and I made top sixteen of the same invitation. Yeah. Um, it was great. It was, it was so fun. So um, good times. My story. Uh, I'm going to bring up Turok Dead Cantor because it has oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, some go interesting on. text. So my, uh, I've played again. I've play tested a lot against uh, Mono Red Stompy. Stompy in most iterations, or Mono Red Prism, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And I've only played against it once in a tournament setting. It was an SCG, it was teams, but it was on the other end of Death Right Shaman. So Death oh. Right Shaman gets banned, and we oh. have this team event in Western Mass, and I'm like, I'm on Legacy. And they're like, the F-U-R. I'm like, well, none of you own the cards to actually play good decks, so I'm on Legacy. And they're like, fine. <laughs> so I'm, I'm testing Dredge, and I have... Such bad luck with dredge, and people are intestinally like, "Why don't you just dredge better?" I'm like, "I can't. This is literally <laughs> what the deck does." And then they don't know my pocket pick is Demir Reanimator, mm. and mm. we're nice. we're driving down to the event, and it is um, a, we have Esper Knights that control deck in standard. Uh, oh sure, gifts Sister Vanilla, yeah, gifts okay, Storm yeah. Mm. and Modern. That was a good deck for a while. And me in Reanimator, and I, I like I've been in touch with that community for a while. I got my sideboard set up, um, not even for the mirror because that's just easy. Is the mirror and um, for Team or Delver, mm, right? Because sure, that, that's going to sure. be the thing. So you play Sphinx of the Steel one out of the board and hope, and that's basically mm -hmm. your sideboard plan. I dig it. And I'm like, okay, the reason we're driving down, I'm like, so what do you want? I'm like Reanimator. Like, why? I'm like, because this card called Elish Norn Grand Cenobite is really good. And like, what do you mean? I'm like, Deathrite Shaman was just unlocked. Sorry, it was just banned. So goblins is unlocked, and elves are unlocked. Now I can guarantee you, because this is a team event, we're going to run into those decks more than once. Mm -hmm. Round one, elves destroyed this kid. <laughs> Later on, goblins took me to like game three because of um, elves the. Guy, um, you do run the elves guy. Sure. I can't. I, I can't remember the uh, sting scourger. I, I'm elves guy. Anyway. Sting Scourger is a hell of a card, but I, I bring it. But Sphinx of the Steel one has first strike and pro red, so I can just basically yes. pro. I can and I can first strike down his lords, mm -hmm. nullify the team. Right, mm. I get him. Um, I beat two Mardu Reanimators, and the last match of the day is against a team that I saw in Grand Prix Montreal, and and they were in the same place. And the only reason I know they were the same team was because they wore American flag onesies. Beautiful. And we Love sit down country, against baby. we sit down against them, and I'm like, I think this is the all burn team. I think we're just going to play against burn, or everybody's on Jeskai, one or the other. This is going to go one of two ways. Hilarious. And my opponent just goes like, Soul Land into something innocuous, like one of the artifacts in that deck that is not a taxing element, but. Mm -hmm. Holy show! It's just whole ass. You're on that deck. A provoker. Or something yeah, like and like just whiffs on it. I'm like, oh, okay, I got this. And I just <laughs> proceeded just mush him <laughs> because the sideboard plan for Reanimator is you bring in Chain of Vapor and Echo and Echoing Truth, oh, and they can do yeah. whatever they want. And then at the end of their turn, you just burn, yeah, burn all your up. mana and come and like reanimate. I reanimated Iona on him, and they're like, color red. <laughs> what are you gonna do now? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so none, nope. you can't play any of your threats, and all you can do is try and get me with a bridge. Good luck. I have Force of Wills and Days. Mm. Yeah. Um, the day that I put that egg down was the day they printed Fiery Confluence, the form yeah. of Red Sorcery. Um, Fiery Confluence, just a funny card. Um, and then we'll, yeah, I swear, guys, we'll get back to the draft. It makes perfect sense. 
But they printed. Sorry, apparently I can't find the card. F I E R Y. F I E R Y. Believe. Is that it? Um, but they printed this card, and I took a look at my my beautiful sideboard. You know, I had my Revokers and my Flame Tongue Kabus, mm -hmm. and I had my Chandra Torch of Defiances, and my six mana Chandra, whatever it's called. And I looked at my my whole sideboard, my fifteen cards laid out in front of me, and I looked at my Fiery Confluence, and I. Moved my entire sideboard over because Fiery Confluence did literally everything, everything that all or everything that all these other cards covered. Fiery Confluence just did better, and I was like, "Well, I just don't care anymore." I was like, "Fuck this!" <laughs> A lot of mountains. I, I am not. <laughs> I am not here to have all of my beautiful dog shit Magic cards replaced by better cards. Rakdos Pit Dragon okay. was replaced by Legion War Boss. I'm pretty exactly. sure like, that and, is and Goblin Rival Master and shit. And I was like, yeah. bro, no. I played this deck decks that I could turn one seething song into Thundermaw Hellkite. Yeah. And I'm not about yeah. and then it like won a GP because it was actually good. I was like Yeah yeah the It became like the most played deck on MTGO. Yeah. And it became and it won a GP. I sold most of it, all of it. I had it I had that deck like ninety nine percent pimped out with every version of like masterpiece that it could have yeah so all the chrome boxes were masterpieces all the incendiary bridges were masterpiece yeah. all the chandras were stcc promos the Ooh. ancient tombs were uh expeditions like the whole deck was bling to the nines it like had four non-foil cards which were the city the cities traders. yeah um i mean you, you could and have i just i just sold the whole fucking thing it, it was really the only thing it was the only piece of mat like it was the only magic cards that i really owned at that point yeah. so i got rid of most of them and i traded for a few modern decks yeah i mean let's try playing a format that yeah, i it, it's, a little bit more it's not an uncommon story it just happens people yeah, are just like yeah, well yeah. they mucked my deck it's never coming back so exactly. we're out okay what is touch for spirit yeah, let's, let's talk let's talk about the draft a little bit a little bit Okay, touch of the spirit. No, no, touch the spirit realm. Uh, touch the. The spreadsheet is right. Spirit realm. Um, so this is a Oblivion Ring style card that you can channel for two mana to blink something. Oh. Um, very powerful magic card. Uh, gives you that you know, very versatile answer. Uh, scoops up an opponent's uh, artifact or creature. Yep. Uh, or you can just pay two mana to instant speed blink something, though it comes back at end of turn, not instantly. Um, works okay with uh, Thought Nuts. Yeah, yes, and we have for sure. yeah, we have uh, display sure to go with Thought Nuts here as well. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Steven picked up Lion Sash and has Stoneforge, right? So he at least has. Yes, so I think that's two first of equipment. He has Batter right? Skull. Oh, he did pick up Batter Skull. Yep, there okay. it is. Oh, yeah, 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 he did. Okay, um, so he's got the Batter Skull. We're good to go on that. Yeah. Crap rotation is interesting. From Sam, you're going to get Yavamaya, I guess. That's really it, so I'm not quite... Uh, yeah, it wouldn't... Like, I hope that he finds something else to do with it, because otherwise it looks... Taking it from Brandon, more. who only has... Does, is he the one who has Guy's Cradle? Sam has Cradle. Uh, he has Guy's Cradle, that makes it. Yeah, 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 he's yeah, got yeah. Cradle. So okay. he can Crop Rot, he can crop crop rot for... Tater. I was going to say for Tater, but for Cradle, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, that still doesn't seem like maximally used for it because if you it doesn't put I think it it's not hand. bad I think it's okay yeah like I'd almost be happier with Sylvan Scrying because it puts Besage you in your hand yeah but right yeah. I wouldn't yeah. necessarily want to play Crop Rotation I can understand like like when the Elves decks and Legacy play Crop Rotation just to hit it it's like I don't know I'm not impressed per se but I yeah it. but the thing is you have so uh, that deck has so much velocity because you're drawing cards. You can crop out Cradle right. into untapped Cradle and uh, like there's you yes. know you have it, that it makes more sense in that deck. Um, this that's why I said I like, I would almost yeah. rather have Sylvan Scrying to put Besage you in my hand so I can channel Besage you like I, sure, sure the I, I, the the utility of Crop Rod is not lost on me but uh -huh. I th if you want to get a non basic like yeah the unfortunate thing is he doesn't have the strip mine or the waste no he has a waste on oh he does have oh, it's picked up after so, Fast Bond. So that's okay. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, in a pinch. You get a little bit more versatility out yeah. of that. So that's what I mean. Like unless it. unless they were really worried that Brandon was going to crop rot for Vesuva. Mm -hmm. Oh, Brandon with the set all the wreckage out from Swifty. Ooh, ah, he's he's still interesting, running. interesting. He's still I mean, running. look, Bran yeah, Brandon is not stepping down. Okay, <clears throat> he is he is riding this to the very end, nope. which I do think makes a lot more sense. So Sam said uh, it seemed like. Uh, it sounded like he was making a lot of hate picks through the yep. uh, the middle of the draft. Mm -hmm. 
I think if the St. Louis crew wants to like hold fast to their overall like macro strategy of really uh, taking their, you know, trying to choke out the enemy team, I do think they need to get all the way down to that pick 46. Like, I don't think they can let up and give the enemy team, you know, okay. six or seven free picks to just go after yeah. whatever they want. So, all right, uh, tenacious underdog from Jacob. This mm-hmm. is, aside from Croxa, mm-hmm. what are you feeling? Are we feeling anything else with tenacious underdog? Right, because you, do you have to discard to bring it back? Uh, no, it's uh, you pay some life, you pay some mana. Oh, it's blitz. And it it uh, is a it's a way to draw extra cards, yeah. right? So this is actually like a, a little bit of a card advantage engine kind mm-hmm. of thing, a little bit of a versatile little man. Um, it doesn't sacrifice itself off of its first cast. So its its first cast is just for two. Yeah, it's yeah. just usually for two, and it's just a pressure just to beat people up. And then it is that, like Croxa, that recurring form of card advantage that you're trying to drag through the graveyard. Yep. Man, um, which he doesn't called... look like he has a lot of other stuff going on in his graveyard, so he definitely wants something. This seems like a good enough use. Synergizes with Turok, right? Yes. Uh, uh, which we had. A, can we, does it? Does we brought it Turok, with Turok Turok. Uh, Do you sa- I thought you sacked something for Turok. Turok. No. T- oh, I misspelled that. Um, Turok is whenever they discard a card. Turok. With pro, pro right. Pro white. Oh, what is the kicker though? I thought the kicker involved sacking. Um, no. Its kicker is just two mana. They dis they him to Turok if you pay the kicker. So. Okay. Um, but very very decent little man there. Very good in the grindy matchups. Yep. Very very nice. Protection from white often overlooked. So it's a good main deck card against Steven. Mm-hmm. We see Swifty with the Spell Stutter Sprite and the Spell Queller, giving himself a little bit, a, a few more of those flash creature actions. Yeah, you got uh, two Fey right now, so I'd ex- I'd hope for one more. Um, mm-hmm. And then we've got Temporal Mastery and Acid Rain. Isn't Acid Rain a, a land destruction LD. spell? Destroy all forests and play. You know that you have a Maya? Kaboom. <laughs> My God. Um, I'll be honest, I do not think this is a good card to draft. I do not. Uh, see um, it as being a particularly viable method. So it's also, like, boils an instant, bro. Like, this is a sorcery. Come on. Yeah, I'm looking at the list. <clears throat> Are you that flush on cards? You're like, I don't need any more cards, bro. Fuck it. Acid Rain. YOLO. There's I mean, I guess he's thinking he'll play it against Jago and against Sam, but... Uh, well, that, I don't know about that. That's, yeah, it's like, Sam has Yavamaya. That is the card you're banking on. Jago has... Well, but... If you play this with Yavamaya, then you'll destroy all your own lands. I know, so that's... I'm also... It's a little awkward. Not that Mark's probably going to have a ton of lands and play it any given time, but... No, but he has Luris. You can keep buying back uh, Lotus. I said I love that living is in not a, That is land. not a combo. Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like a combo. Um, if you want Geddon, you certainly could cast Armageddon because you are Mark and you have access you to have ba- I mentioned we have balance. He could have drafted Zur and Orb instead. True. May, I this we have Armageddon at I home, actually, and it's actually a better combo of cards because it only costs <laughs> two. This may be the worst uh, hyphen if you hit uh, exclamation point Discord we, or no. We got it. Point. I think it's just it's a draft or sheet. We'll figure it out. There it is. Oh, can they do that or can we only do that? Both of us. Oh, nice. But I don't. Um, yeah, Don <laughs> uh, as they say in all of Europe, I assume. Um, anyway. <laughs> It's a stupid joke. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I. This is. Look, I hold Mark in extremely high regard as far as his drafting goes. I think he's a very thoughtful drafter. He spends a lot of time uh, considering the format. This is the worst pick I've ever seen him make. Holy shit, this acid raid. I'll say it to his face. That is not. I don't. Not a solid pick. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know where we're going. If with he this. picks any other serious cards from now. Uh, you guys can't see me point to the screen. But. If he picks any more serious magic cards from here on, then this gets to be a worse and worse. We thing. didn't miss a dryad of the Elysian Grove, did we? No. We're just looking. I don't think so. There's the Emery, which we were talking about earlier. So we're yeah, only looking at Dan Yavimaya. is really Dan's hitting all every. Uh, he has fallen off the artifact tree and hit every blue creature on the way down. He's yeah. Boink 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 boink. It's because because like we were talking about earlier, Brandon and Steven are running interference for him. Mm-hmm. So Dan, I, I fully. I, I'm a little... The Karn Scion of Urza is kind of an interesting one, but it it, Look, it makes for an okay sideboard strategy, I think. So I mean, Karn, you got to put pants on at some point in time. True. Right? That's true. Yeah. 
Um, so, yeah, yeah. So, Scion of Urza, it's going to pull in from sideboard. No, no, it's not going to pull in from sideboard. It's going to help you just churn through your deck. So you'll be able to actually get a little bit more velocity. Let me pull this up. It's not like you can replay this, but we were talking about this last night. It places a gold counter on stuff, so if for whatever reason you can play a second card in Scion of Urza, that you have access to all those cards. Um, it just gives you more cards to play, really. And, like, you have enough artifacts that creating the construct is also viable. It's just so far down on the list of useful cards, not quite sure if it'll even make the cut to the 40, but it just remains an option. I don't know what I would like to see in its place, though. I don't want to say we're running thin on cards because you could have just taken Emery before Karn. I don't, I don't think Dan wants to tax. Uh, so I don't... I don't know if we'll actually see any sphere effects coming out of Dan. Like, if we wanted, we have the workshop. We could pick up the spheres, but we could actually just put ourselves in more of a hurt locker than, than anything else. Um, so, when we were talking about this last night, Dan has some pocket picks that are coming up. I would... Based on the conversations we had last night, um, some Doctor Who pocket picks that can be more impactful than trying to stacks people out. Um, okay. Or stacks ourselves out, for that I'm matter. I'm back. What kind um, of... Ho! Oh, we hit! Let's absolutely go... Ithari? Ithari. This is one of those, if you're not playing Magic a lot, you will have missed it kinds of cards. Because this is one of those EDH cards mm -hmm. that got printed in the Lord of the Rings say, EDH I think decks, card. I think. Um, and holy cow, this card has been a cube all-star as far as uh, it's been on the Vintage Cube and MTGO, and it has been smashing people. Yeah. Uh, puts so much power into play. Impossible to race. It's got lifelink. So difficult to remove because if you leave any of the two twos alive, you, no matter what you do to kill this fucking man, just yeah. comes back with haste, starts beating you to death. It's not. E it's not even that the, it can only reanimate as a sorcery. You can literally hold up, let your opponent do their whole thing, and then reanimate at end of turn and come back and attack. Yeah, imagine that they take that line of text off of cards that they print for commander. <laughs> you know the last line of text on Whip of Erebus? Uh, activated only as a sorcery? Yeah, you know how many players didn't read all the text on Whip of Erebus in Theros Limited? Like the pre-release uh, event? Ooh, I'm guessing a lot. All of them. Ooh, that's tough. You know the only part of that card that really matters that much in Limited? is all your creatures can't life. Yeah, that, <laughs> oh that part right there. Oh my god, it's so <laughs> busted in Limited. I mean, holy cow. Apparently we can't get this fucking thing to pull up. All of these websites don't want to work for us right now. But <laughs> yeah, know, Any Gatherer-related website. It is disastrous. Uh, but anyway, Athari is a five-mana red-white <sighs> dino paladin that uh, tears across the sky. Every time it attacks, you get an experience counter. And then oh, you make that's two, two yeah. trample haste two twos that are attacking your yep. opponent for each experience counter you have. So the first, it's like mini, it's like five mana red, white, grave titan. Yep. It's got flying, it's got haste, it's got lifelink. You beat down, it makes a two two. The next turn it makes two two twos. The next turn it makes three two twos. Because of the experience now you're thinking, which can't wow, be removed. grave titans never looked so good. But then... The last line of text is like four mana, tap and untap rebel you control, which is the kind of tokens that it makes. Yeah, and it go. gets reanimated from the graveyard tapped. Rebels. Sorry, what did I say? Did I say you rebels? Said rebels? I said rebels. I'm fucking genius. That's it makes, why. Oh, it makes rebels, so you got to use the rebels to reclaim yes. it. Okay, it is a phoenix. That's what I thought. Yes. I was like, and it rises from the ashes to peck your opponent's yep. eyeballs out. Uh, really, really good card. Keep printing VRD level red white cards. That is true. Red white has gotten a lot of nice tools between mm -hmm. Fourth Eolingus and this. Red white is in an all time premium in Cube Drift. So it's looking good. Yeah. You are a little disappointed by Sam's picks, it sounds like. Yeah, we we were focused and now we're not. Now we took Elder Gargaroth. And Turn Timber Symbiosis. Well, Turn Timber Symbiosis is kind of fun. No. So Summoning Trap. Well, this one's a land. You can't play so many as a land. You can't play it as a land. I'm not in disagreement. You know the bar for lands is very low. It doesn't take that much. We don't have life from the loam. <laughs> uh, 
And we don't have... Yeah, that's, but I don't think you can life in the long term timber anyway, right? I'm no, but you can at least yeah. get your lands back from your graveyard <laughs> so you can raise the bar on your lands. <laughs> uh, listen, just because you can't crop rotation into it doesn't make it not a banger, okay? Um, actually, just in a, on a macro level, I actually think the, uh, the flip land spells, the ones that all cost like seven or eight mana or yeah. whatever, I actually think they're all just really fun. The only one they're I didn't so like is uh, Ameria. Like, I love the called? meme, like the dude slap on the top of the car, this baby can fit so many Sarah Angels, but yeah. like, it has no business being played in any other format that isn't vintage alongside all the initiative cards, and it makes sense when, you're just, when you have all that fast mana, you lock your opponent out with Athalia, and then you cast Ameria for like two. It, I wouldn't play it necessarily in any of my like white decks uh where a i'm gonna need untap land always yeah so like any of like my steven style decks where i'm you know i need all my my white dudes pitches of thought solitude is such a low bar it is yeah you know what it, you know what it is it is a low bar for every single card that's not a land so does story circle story circle you can't tap for one white man <laughs> um I probably wouldn't put um, some of these into my decks if I never think I'm getting to that yeah. level of mana. You're playing them to mitigate did against the, Flood or maybe to Did the Mythic to, like, ones ETB thing. untapped? Uh, if you pay three life. Three life, okay, yeah. yeah okay. Um, which is, you know, not irrelevant. Uh, you can always sideboard it out for a basic land. Yep. Like post board if, if you're feeling like it's a bad matchup for yeah, it. Yeah, let me... But... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, and three life is not going to matter against a lot of the decks, you know, in an average VRD. Uh, your life total is not your your super critical resource. Yep. Um, so it's not bad. Um, I will say, if I was playing, like, a white deck where I thought I was realistically going to play Elspeth Sun's Champion, um, then I would I would be super jazzed to have a Mary's yeah. Palmer deck. If I was just playing, like, a Thalia deck that caps out at, like, Gideon Ally of Zendikar or something... Maybe, maybe not. No, maybe I, I, uh, don't want to in my deck. I'd have to be playing something close. slower, like what Swifty's playing, to actually want to use this card. But at the same time, then then my mental becomes, well, why don't I just try and figure out a way to float and treat the angels instead? Mm -hmm. Now, wait, Peter, did you say you were a magic judge? Yes, I was. I okay, still if am. you manifest a sorcery and then you flip it over, do you get to cast a sorcery? No, because you, you can't flip away. it up. It's got to be a uh, manifest. Right, if you manifest it, yeah, yeah, you yeah, flip like, it over. Well, okay, no, 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 I'm saying, like, what if you resto angel and that flips it over? Exiles oh, it, oh, oh it back uh, returns it back. So I don't know how that works. I know for like flip cards that are creatures, you'll just get the creature. The creature, no, because it, it's not gonna work. Mm, it's a shame because I really would love to play my Amiria's Call and just like yeah, because you can't it. pay for it. So oh, there's nothing you can it's do. A shame. It. It's a shame. Ooh, Vapor's Ooh, not... Dan coming in with the Basalt Monolith. Very late Basalt Monolith, I think. Yeah. Just in general, like I think that's one of those cards that gets picked. He must have picked Grim Model very did. early, right? I'm pretty sure. Um, there it is. Yeah, fifth pick or something. There's no pick. reason to take Basalt until the end if nobody else is sure. in artifacts. And it it still opens the door to a number of things. Now, all I'm saying is Sam or Jago could have played Kinnon, Bondar Prodigy, and Basalt Monolith. Just throwing it up. Make there. infinite? Yeah. yeah. So it's a nice little infinite combo, you know? I mean, and, it does, and it actually works with Basalt Monolith and doesn't work with I mean, Grim Monolith. Steven could have played Zerda and Basalt Monolith and made infinite too. No, I mean, that is we true. We want to just start diving Perhaps down so. rabbit holes. I'm still trying to figure out what we're doing with Turn Timber Symbiosis in the front. We have Ulamog, which you miss yeah. the cast trigger. That's super mm -hmm. important on that card. Not if you get to attack with that. And boom! Which is the next turn in Elder Dead, Gargaroth. Um, Elder Gargoth, we also have Crater Hoof Behemoth. Oh, that's right. We have one Crater we, uh, well, we Also, have one it could be of any of our mana dorks, it would be four fours. Busted. I'm just saying, out of you all the decks you want to mitigate card. against flooding, this is this is the one. You really do want to mitigate. Yeah. mitigate. Uh, do everything you can, especially with something as low cost as Turn Timber Symbiosis. Yeah, this is like the deck. Because like, you're going to make a million mana so frequently that you really want to always have a thing. So tim Turn Timber Symbiosis is like a lot. I agree with you. I don't like Elder Gargoth here. It's well, a little too fair. We have Finale. We don't have Cord. We could have taken... Nobody's taken Turn to Timber Symbiosis. It could be 45th pick. You could have taken Cord above it. And no one's going to take Cord either. Yeah, but it makes more sense as a card. <laughs> it does make more sense as a card. Turn... I, you're very much underrating the, the land aspect. We were talking about Ruffalos earlier, right? You untap on turn three with Ruffalos. You play yes. your third land. You tap Ruffalos. That's Cord. Then you pay another three, and then you just go get any one of your, your little mana poops. And... Oh, I don't know. I mean, like... 
<clears throat> if you've got Rothalos and a bunch of lands, you probably want to try to court for something really big. Oh, yeah, you can absolutely do that, too. That's just turn three, like, immediately you can do something. You should have other Monodorks on the way up, so Rothalos plus the rest of your... Sure, sure. Your, Sorry, your I mean, creature. I don't disagree your that Cord could make sense, but, like, Cord, you can't play as a land. I mean, you know, unfortunately. that And I think that really does... As much as you're, like... I really do think that does make the difference. That is that is the real kicker. Um, and turn 10 percent Bios is... It, yeah, it's, like, kind of a summoning trap impression. You know, it's not, like the best spell to be casting, but it'll put a big body on the board. That's nice. And sometimes it'll fucking windmill slam win you the game on the spot. You, like, get lucky and you just hit, you know... It does cost two less than Tooth and Nail, which is the card we talked about earlier. <sighs> True. We do like... I And I do like Tooth and Nail. I do. Mm. I am a, I'm a big player of Tooth and Nail in standard. Yum. So Marcus... Ooh, like, Narset and Terminus. Mark is really going back and forth on this. Am I a control deck? Am I a combo deck? Am I a control deck? Maybe it's just a control deck, deck with a combo finisher. Maybe that's just the way we want to play. It's funny because I think he's taken a lot of these. We have Tinker Blightsteel. He's got Demonic Consultation. He's got Thoracle. He's got He picked back-to-back Blightsteel, Colossus, and Dark Confidant. And playing them both, for sure. 100%. 100%. And he is not riding with the top down. No. Dan took the top, I think. Yes, I believe you are correct. And he doesn't even have a mox. Tinker is actually a little awkward with Black Lotus in the sense that it's not a mox, so you can't just tinker the mox away. You can't tinker your lotus away. It doesn't really work. And uh, Bolas' house is still available. Yes. Nobody's taking Yes, which I would think would be a much better target for him, but. We could just see it flow to the end. Yeah. Because that'll. well, Mark has a lot of cards that he could take, and yeah. all of them would make sense at this point. Exactly. And Swifty no- just sticking hard to his um, blue-eyed control roots. Why not? Everything's available to you. There's no reason to even try and splash out into red for something. Like, we, we when we talked about Dak Faden, Swifty was a, the perfect target for that. You could have taken a Dak Faden and maybe one or two red spells out of the sideboard, like Meltdown or whatever. <sighs> all right. You got me. You got me. I actually... I have no this idea what the fuck this card is. I'm thinking it's the Sarkin that goes like... I'm... But no, it's not. It is... He really is just trying to play five color planes. Yep. Huh? That's, his, creature that's his actual plan. He's player. like, fuck it. Oath of Nyssa, my favorite card. <laughs> Bam! Okay, you can't say Sarkon is the dragon's one because guess what? Every They're Sarkon is the dragon's, dragon's one. one. I, if, I, I implore you to read every single Sarkon. Each planeswalker you control becomes a 4-4 or a dragon. That's the important one. True, true. Uh, it all starts my, here with Sarkon the Mad. Who my a- sing- one of my, I don't know, three favorite cards in the entire game is Sarkon Unbroken. Uh, that has become one of my favorite cards in, in uh, the teamer wedge for He's Commander. He's so beautiful. I love him so much. He plays. Oh, yes. I played him every goddamn day in Standard. Sarkon the Mad was outstanding uh, in, in Standard for a minute. So is Sarkon the Dragon Speaker. Sarkon Soul. Wow, I've never even seen this card. Hello, Dragon Spell. M A T. So that's. Um, that's Matthias Hunt. Yeah, right. Oh, that's the uh, March uh, Commander. Not the March Commander, so, but the uh, Aftermath. Yeah. Got a. Just. Generally shoring up some more sideboard cards. Everyone's trying to make sure that they have some ideas yeah. for some sideboard stuff. Same as the Lotus Cobra Nissa, fifty-two cards. No one, nobody ever saw. Yeah, yeah. Fair point. Fair point. Sargon the Masterless is an interesting one. Makes more sense uh, of like the Ashiok Nightmare Weaver and stuff. Yeah, maxing out on Planeswalkers that are good. Then you plus one Sarkon until end of turn. Each Planeswalker you control becomes a four-four red dragon creature and gains flying. Kablam! Which That's it. yeah, which is like a kind of card that you like you play and you hope like on the same turn you're hitting them for like twelve damage. Exactly. Like, and then you're putting them in a position where unless they kill that Planeswalker, all the rest of your Planeswalkers will kill. You know what I'd like to see Brandon pull out of his ass. What was that? Arena Rector. Oh, yeah, that's an interesting one. I like that. We talked about Academy Rector earlier when trying to set up food mm-hmm. chain and Aluren. Arena well, Rector. Well, what about the um, what about the Planeswalker sneak attack guy? That's the other. One. That was another you know one. What I was that thinking guy of? Is? No, What's but that I need card I was looking at it before uh, oh, the last man. VRD. Mm-hmm. If anyone in the chat knows, it's the it's the creature I think. Yes, that it is. It's lets really, you sneak attack and Planeswalker. It is a really innocuous which is creature. Really fucking cool. Yeah. Are we have haste too? Yes, because sneak attack. Oh my god, that's so. Sick. Well, I don't know if it gives them haste. That's the thing. I don't. I don't know. Like, because if it does give them haste, then you can <clears> use all the ones that turn into creatures. creatures yeah, which is really funny. Yep. Um, and it would make sense if it did because that's what sneak attack does. But yep. 
Yeah. Um, necromentia. Jake takes necromentia, which is, you know, one of the many... Um, one of the many in the line of like um, cranial extraction style cards where you name a card and you take it out of your opponent's deck. Oh, uh, okay. They all just kind of blend together. Yeah, after this one costs three mana, and if they happen to have it in their hand, they'll get a 2 2 zombie. Yep, and thus making it the most affordable version of that card. Yes, three mana is very nice mm -hmm. for that effect. Um, I think there are maybe a couple ones. I want to say, which was the one? Wait, wait, I'm thinking one. Praetors. Council where you search their deck and remove a card from it. You don't name it. You demonic tutor their deck and you get to play yeah, it. Yeah. Council. It Praetors. Okay. Uh, Praetors Grasp is the green one where you return everything from your graveyard to your hand and you have no maximum hand size. I think it costs four and three green. Praetors Cancel is one. Okay, I'm misspelling black. Praetors. I think there's an apostrophe. P R A E T O R apostrophe. Isn't it just a really weird spelling? Nope. You have it. Just apostrophe. Okay. Yes. Council. Uh, that should get you there. Colorless, double black, demonic two to your opponent's library. Okay, yeah, well, I can't find it. I, I think Praetors is a really weird spelling. But I don't, no, you I had it right. Remember. Okay. Oh, uh, apparently it, not. You, so. Oh, at one point. Okay. At one point, you had it spelled correctly. You okay. were going E instead of AE. That's Council, right? So five and triple green. So this is the first one you looked at. This returns everything to your right. hand. This is the commander card. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I knew that. See, he's crazy. This is an undervalued card, I think, in every format you can play it in, which is basically just commander. Yeah. So I mean, like, obviously, you want Necromentia instead of this card because if your opponent has the card you need in their hand, yep. If they have their combo card or whatever in their hand, I'm like, oh, not great. Ooh, Steven picks up the Ember Cleave, assembling one of my favorite combos, which is Stone Fortress to get an Ember Cleave. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Ember Cleave in Let's combat, because that's also a good combo. That is a good combo. Right. Very bold. Believe in the cleave. Ooh, and Steven goes with the boil. Oh yeah, we saw that a couple, a couple wild. back, and I don't yeah quite. Wild. I mean, look, they both want to destroy lands. Apparently, I mean, That's yes, but jail. but at least you, you know you have Swifty and Jago. I would one hundred percent just take Armageddon. I don't know why you wouldn't. Like, if you have the initiative, fuck it. You're like gonna win once you're there. Yeah, yeah and yeah. you have some artifact mana to go with. So yeah, you like you take the initiative and then you just blow up all the lands. Fuck it. But you can easy, float that. Easy. That could be your forty fifth pick, right? Yes, but or 46. I, I just at that point I don't know if you want boil. But it's not, it's not a bad... It's an instant, thing, man. That card is... Yeah, Boil is the... Hey, you know what? It's a lot better than Acid Rain. I'll say that. I, I, you are not wrong about that. I still want to know what's going on with Acid Rain. Uh, Unless you know Mark After is just the Acid really... Rain, he took Narset and Terminus. Unless and Mark is just really feeling thing. the Doctor Who stuff without pick, without drafting a Doctor Who card that is uh, that harkens back to the Angels, but other than uh. that, I got no idea. Brandon with Gut Shot for reasons unknown. Um, Maybe he's thinking it'll be good against... Swifty's tiny little fairies. Gut shot, so he can't cast the spells in five color. He can at least cast that. Because get probe was taken, and you need a target for mutagenic growth. Mm, good point. Good Apostle's point. blessing also requires a target. Mm -hmm, true. And is there a single mana black or two mana black on? Just 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 no, it's like one or two to kind of yeah, finish out the cycle. I think. Well, I'm, I. Yeah, you need to. You just go straight to dismember, which is already been taken. Man, I hope somebody mm -hmm. takes uh, thunderous wrath. Gutshot keeps Planeswalker safe from his own Ragamon. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't... We haven't seen Jace the Mind Sculptor take in, I don't believe. Right? Mm, Mark didn't steal that. No, someone did. Someone did. I think Mark has it. Okay. Yeah. Mark has it. He took it away from Swifty. Got it. So, Swifty still has Celestial Colonnade, or Colonnade in front of him as a pick to close out uh -huh. games and as a, a dual land. Uh, assuming that he wants that uh, coming to play tap land, which he might not mind. It's kind of funny that he picked up Mystic Sanctuary just because... I mean, I would like to see him take some cards like uh, Cryptic Command and Archmage's Charm, but he might be thinking he's got too many white cards and not enough dual lands to take those cards, so not 100% sure. Maybe. Well, uh, we didn't talk about spells like that when uh, I was talking to him, but Celestial Colony was definitely on his radar going uh, into the first break yeah. uh, as an option to... Uh, as a duel and took I specifically asked him about closing out games and that's when he mentioned uh, Celestial so yeah, yeah that, that makes, makes, a lot of of, makes a lot of sense absolutely I feel like Brendan's now in pocket pick mode so we, he might actually take the Planeswalker sneak creature um, I like the Nimble Obstructionist it holds a GTA it's an interesting stifle um, from like it, I don't want to say it does everything that Jago wants to be doing but it definitely presents itself as an interesting card because it's also just a flash 2-1, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, which one? Nimble? Nimble. Nimble's a 3-1. 3-1. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, it's that stifle, baby. Yeah. What did we talk about? It's the stifle. It's the stifle. Naughty, baby. Let's go. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. All right. Aether spell bomb with no way to re... Oh, we have Emery to rebuy. Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, which is a very nice combo. Also, mm-hmm. like, it's... An artifact cantrip, so if you have it sitting around, you can cash it out. Obviously, you can use it to bounce something, which yep. is great. Sometimes it's like life saving. You know, your opponent puts a blight steel in play, and you're just like, oh, okay, get, get you. the fuck out of here. Yep. Your opponent, you know, natural orders or something, you just bounces uh, crater hook back with the trigger on the stack. Mm-hmm. But it also taps for a blue mana. Yes. Uh, and there is a- neither of its abilities require it to like tap, so it's not like blue tap. Nope. Sacrifice draw a card. Or whatever sacrifice bounce thing. It's just pay a mana sacrifice it, yep. so it can tap to itself to activate its own ability. Which yeah, is nice. is when you have it in play. Yep, which is pretty nice. Oh, and there we go. Mark finally picks up his Yog Will, his Sheldock Isle. Call, uh, call out our homeboy STI in the chat room uh, for the Sheldock Isle pick. We love that. It's always a worthwhile card. It mm-hmm. it very rarely does too little. Yeah. Um, no, it does plenty. Yeah. Right now, I think the ceiling is Blightsteel, just in terms of overall mana value and effectiveness. Uh, other than that... But, you know, you can flip over a whole bunch of different, like... Uh, I mean, hell, you can flip over Acid Rain. Easy. <laughs> Guys, come on. What, come are, we on. Doing? what, are, we... what are we doing here? I... Um, but, I mean, you can always flip over, like, a Yog Will. Um, if yeah. he picks up some big draw engine, like... Uh... It's, Yog bargain. It saves you like so much mana. That is just... Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. It, yeah. It's actually a card I could have seen Swifty taking maybe a little earlier if he was worried about his yeah, mana development. I think it would make enough sense in a lot of the decks. Swifty I mean, just has like no... With Dan's ping, probably the exception of like yeah. the blue deck that probably doesn't want the card. Well, Swifty also has no acceleration mm-hmm. as far as I remember. He, he got no... True. No he power. Has, he has a recall, and that is it. No mox, and he picked up library, and that's about it. There's no fast mana in his deck, so being able to save with Shell Dock Isle in a longer game sure. uh, would also seem decent. But at the same time, what is he going to hide under Shell Dock Isle? That would be that kind of game changing or game breaking that late. I don't know. Absolutely agree, hundred percent. Nullhide Ferox. That was a standard card forever wow. ago. Uh, it's true. I did play that card in standard quite a bit. Um, Nullhide Ferox is a is a fun. You don't make me discard. I make, I make you, you discard. discard. I'll yeah. discard your life, son. Um, with the small, minor, not really a big deal inconvenience of uh, not being able to cast non creature spells. Which yeah, but you can turn it off. But anybody can turn that off. Uh, true, 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 true. So. And it can make it lose hexproof, or it can make it lose its uh, can't play non creature spells ability. Yep, which is pretty great. I feel like if you're going to main deck Nullhide Ferox, you're also going to take Rector or uh, Arena Rector or the Sneak Attack creature. Um, I kind of agree. I suppose we will see, but uh, I guess maybe he's just thinking, hey, if this motherfucker is going to Turok Dread Cantor me, I'm going to make him suffer. Yeah, insulate a little bit. Yeah, no, for, yeah. Sh- for sure. There's also Liliana, I think we miss. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, Lily Boy. Uh, sorry, Lily Vale is up there, uh, second pick from the top, number twenty. So there's definitely some cyborg game to be had against Jacob. In that Absolutely, plan. but Absolutely. I, I wouldn't expect Brendan to go that much further. I wouldn't like see an obvious bail off or a uh, locks it on. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, which I mean, who knows? Coming back, we could see him pick bail off. Um, I'm not really sure. I, I think I, there are probably some like big chunky hydras that I would rather have at this point. There's if we had a dedicated ones. red aggro deck, which which we have not had, oh, it's uh, a bill if it makes sense. Yes, exactly. If we if we we had like one in the last few drafts, we've only had like one aggressive red deck. It was in the last VRD out of the last like three or four. So planeswalkers are non-creature spells. That's true. But when you think about it, what's the difference between a creature and a planeswalker? I mean, come on, yeah. pretty similar. Gideon, that guy's basically just a just a elite vanguard. Beef slab, exactly. Right. Beef supreme. What do they call him in the story? I think it, they just referred to him as Beef Slab for a little bit. Wow. Yeah. Uh, all right. So when I was talking to Jago before the event, it seemed like this is kind of the avenue you wanted to take. Lair of the Hydra. So that's the mm. green AFR land, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, X and one to make an XX to be an XX Hydra. So, 
I would, it's basically like a land with fire breathing. Yeah. I would think Vapor Snag signals the run on tempo spells for Jago. Mm. And now we're shoring up everything else. Yeah, I can understand that. I'll give you two minutes of my time before I leave. Oh, okay. Love it. Yes, join us, Mr. Noah. Yep. Been really don't sit on Yeah, you were asleep. How about, don't sit on the ground. Noah has been helping us out today, uh, uh, sorting, like getting all the cards and everything, made us all breakfast. It was great. Yeah. He's, uh, He's a great guy. Obviously, also one of the killers from the last St. Louis versus Chicago team draft. So, Noah clutching, I believe, how did you do against Team St. Louis? Oh, 4-0. Four, yeah. four. Easy 4-0, four, oh, bro. Easy. Uh, and was also, I think, the first person the, to be able to play with Minskin Boo, right? Yeah. After that card got made. So oh, he like, he, okay. He was like the first guy who got to draft it in one of the yeah, theories. So, so, it is very exciting stuff. So have you been downstairs listening to the uh, the Gremlins as they do their it work? It is very funny, yeah. Just uh, <laughs> just listening. Uh, some cards that, you know, went pretty late that they just forgot about. and. Uh, can you think of any specifics? Uh, Jake completely forgot about uh, Fable and Mirror Breaker. Uh, oh. Lelia. Oh, uh, yeah. Did he forget about Lutri? Uh, they talked about it before the draft, and I think they just weren't high on the card. God, what is wrong yeah. with people? So oh, I thought Lord. Jake was floating Fable, and Steven just read through that and said, now's the time. No, he just forgot God. about it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. Poor Jake. Um, that card would be really good in his deck. I know. Wow. <laughs> that's, Crazy. Yeah. That, but there were so many picks I feel like that he needed to make before Fable, so it became a little tenuous, and the moment that he could have taken it and decided not to, basically with Fatal Push, Steven said, all right, here we go. Mm-hmm. True. Took Fable. So uh, how how would you say... Chad said he thought the morale, the, the uh, optimism of Team Chicago down in the basement has been waning <laughs> over the course of the day. Uh, so they seem extremely <laughs> confident off rip. First, you know, eight picks in. And then he says this little bit, of, little bit of a trailing effect. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what exactly is going on. Like, we've seen Sam's deck kind of be all over the place. Yep, uh, sure. Kind of yeah. sad he didn't just commit to the fast bond deck. Um, but, you know. Okay, if things. he turned Timbers into Bane of Progress one time today, I will give you all the credit in the world for defending the turn Timber pick. <laughs> The amount of uh, commander precon cards that have come into the discussion downstairs uh, oh. makes me it makes me a little rough on the draft. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, is that just because like cards you've never seen before? No, no, just cards that they're like, oh, is this card good? And I'm like, guys, it's it's a vintage draft. <laughs> like, <laughs> you got a lot of cards out there, bud. Yeah, that's that's very funny. <laughs> but, I was gonna say like, um, what is it? <coughs> Authari, the red white. Uh, Phoenix guy yeah, that makes all the really rivals. Good. Like, there's a Commander Precon card. That card's fucking gas. So yeah. good. Fourth year Lingus, another one. Busted. Same deck, even. They, uh, I haven't really been paying too much attention, so I know Brandon's playing, like, five-color pile. Yep. And, Something like that, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of excited about it, but they keep making fun of that deck, so I don't know. Ooh. I'm hoping Brandon thrashes Ooh, them. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Just uh -huh. based off uh -huh. of how they're talking. Interesting. Okay. Well, I would say Brandon's deck has gone, like, looking great to looking <laughs> weird to looking great again like it all comes together and then he picks nullhide ferox so i'm a little confused <laughs> i think like gut shot and the nullhide ferox just does not it doesn't seem like there's a co a coherent like through, through line, line for that yeah a oh, sequence of picks the funny part is they were talking about picking gut shot earlier like Jake was gonna pick it up with Underworld Breach, and we were. And I'm just sitting wow. there in silence. I can pay like, your life to make you take I'm damage. Like, I'm uncomfortable here. I need to That's go upstairs. Uh, and then somebody in chat said gut shot, and then he picked gut shot or something. Like the timing Incredible. was just so Incredible. funny. The old yeah. Underworld Breach gut, gut shot. shot. Yeah. Noah, uh, you are a competitive Magic player by nature, and a and a and a GP stud. Let me ask you this. I asked Team St. Louis why they didn't like the card Dragon Rage Channeler, okay? And they said, because by the time you can turn the Delirium on, that a 3-3 in the air isn't even actually that good anymore. Uh, and that it's just not a consistent enough be beater uh, to be good in the format. That is the consensus amongst the, the St. Louis crew that I interviewed. Would you like to give your two cents on a card like Dragon Rage Channeler and why it might be good in someone like Jacob Key's deck? I noticed he hasn't touched the card yet, but 
Talk, all, talking about gut shots has got me all in a tizzy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, my first thought with Dragon Ray Chandler isn't even about the beatdown plan. It's just card. It's just card filtering, and I think that mm-hmm. is the most important part about it. That like, does being seem able like the most like, important like, part about like, it. Like I don't. It, it, will, it will eventually be a three three. But if your if your idea is this, I'm making a one mana creature, and it's going to be my win con. Then I feel like you don't really understand the card, but having all of your cards just get like plus 0.5 card advantage just seems uh, seems like why you'd play it. Where you want to be. It's a very good answer, Noah. That's a very <laughs> smart guy thing to say. Yeah, I would say um, you know you can take that one back. Yeah, yeah. I'll be... <laughs> um... Oh, the uh, b- before I leave, the other uh, main thing that I'm happy Sam mm. commented on mm-hmm. was he is excited to crop rotation Yavamaya into play when. Acid Rain is on the stack, mm. and hopefully it's yes. good for him. Yes. What do you think about the Acid Rain pick in pick 35? What do you think of the Acid Rain card? The Again, haven't really been paying attention. I don't know. Is it strictly a, I hope to get you with Yavamaya in play and like it's, an uh, That's all we can uh, figure out. That's all we can... Armageddon-esque effect? I don't know. It's funny, because you'd think if you were interested in Acid Rain in your deck that has white mana and doesn't seek to put a lot of lands onto the battlefield, you would just play Armageddon. It's a little bit of an odd duck. Yeah. Not really 100% sure. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, because I hold Mark in such high regard for his uh, study of the VRD format, I'm pretty confident saying it's the worst pick I've literally <laughs> ever seen him make. Uh, kind of shocking, really. Shockingly bad. Shockingly bad. You Maybe know, Mark's the guy who really puts the... it all together. Yeah, maybe he's just seeing some of these, you know, the the hate drafts that Sam's throwing out there, and mm, he's just mm-hmm. like, you know, I kind of also want to put myself at a disadvantage here to to really to get, show to my get in on it. Yeah, wants to get in on it. That makes all that makes a lot of sense, to be honest. Like, you know, the what do they call it? Like the uh, where you're feeling left out, the something effect. You're feeling, um, shoot, there's a really no, common name, a really common name for it. Um, anyway, yeah, it doesn't cool. matter. Um, glad that you stopped in. Uh, I'm going to ask you this question. I asked the other guys this question. If you could pick one of these decks uh, that you were going to play for the day, F- FOMO, thank you. Yes, Rob, just coming in <laughs> clutch today. He got this crown made, knows what FOMO is. Thank you. Appreciate you. If you had to pick one of these decks to take into the, the battlefield, what would you pick? Uh, you Which know, these like I said, I took a nap for about 20 or so picks, so let me just give it a mm-hmm. little yeah, refresher yeah. here. See, one, we've got Mark. He's got his beautiful sort of Thoracle Stormy-looking deck uh, that also has some, like, blue-white control elements, maybe for the sideboard. He's got, like, a Lurus deck, maybe, that he could be playing. swifty has got his straight blue-white control deck. Brandon's got his Naya five-color pile, but he does have... Um, the five mana Sarkin that turns all your planeswalkers into dragons, and three mana Ashiok that mills them. So that's pretty sick. Uh, Jago's got his blue green, just sort of tempo duder deck. Um, Dan has his mono blue artifact deck. Jake's got his red black Jun deck. Um, return to monkey. What? He's a big return. To I'm sorry. I'm just. Oh, return to nature. Yeah. I know. I'm just. Uh, and then Steven's got his Red White Initiative deck, and Sam's got his, you know, goofy mono We'll figure green-ish. it out in post. Yeah, mono yeah. green-ish sort of deck. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, like, dude, I was really into Jacob's, like, first 10 picks, and then, you know, I don't know where I went from there. But uh, I'd say if I had to choose a deck here, uh, probably Steven's. I like Steven's deck. I feel yeah, like that's yeah. a very solid... Uh, the red white initiative like creatures easy to yeah. play you're just playing everything on curve just everything's a good card type thing yeah 100 percent. can't disagree with you yeah. then uh i think the only pick he's missed out on was lauren of the third path but i don't know if he was purposefully not taking lauren and mm, swifty grabbed yep. it or if he was trying to float it until yeah. later on yeah i could see it either way honestly so then last uh last question for you really last question for you gotcha, gotcha. yeah yeah um, is going to be you repped Chicago for the last team draft. This is going to happen. It, depending, you know, on win or lose, we could have a, a, a chapter three in mind to, the, to complete the trilogy. Um, with that in mind, who do you think's favored here? Do you think our Chicago boys are going to take it home, or do you think St. Louis is is too prepared, too legit to quit, and they're going to take us down here? What do you think? Uh, Where's your confidence at? 
Oh, yeah, you know, uh, let's just say I, I totally back Chicago, and we're going to take it all the way because, you know, we it's sports. The, I love un- Chicago. Oh, yeah. the unending Chicago confidence. That's what everyone <laughs> says. That's right, because we're the best. All right, thank you very much. For oh, it was a pleasure. Here, Appreciate thank you, you, thank you. You're going to go play luck. EDH? Uh, yeah. Oh, what a casual magic player. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> later. Later. Looking for other oh, formats to cast last, Mana Vault and Mana Crypto. Last few picks coming. I wonder yeah. if Shatterstorm oh. was picked because he forgot about Meltdown or if he's floating Meltdown. Uh, Jacob. I, bet, I bet he just looked for that kind of an effect and he saw Shatterstorm. He's like, yeah, fuck it, I'm in. Okay, we have Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, which gives which your creatures one? That's the, flash, is that the pod one? There may be a pod mode on it, but it's not what I use it for. Uh, it gives Oh, it gives your creatures a keyword ability. That's the plus, and I think it gives your creatures haste. Oh, it, oh sorry, so is this the three flash. mana one or the four? Three oh, this is the three mana one. Okay, so it's the your creatures gain flash. flash. Like I said. You can do the thing, and you can use it to maybe draw a card. Which is interesting, Jago trying to commit... So here's my problem with this card, is you can say, like, I'm going to try to play more of a Flash game, so I'll have this thing. I'll have this three-mana sorcery in my deck. Yep. If you want... Uh, uh, a lot of his cards already If you want to turn flash, your green so creature, you can play, what's it, Yeva? Yeva. Is that how you spell it? Yeva? It's either one E or Yeva? two. I think it's one E. Yeva? The, the core set. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, but Nature's Herald. So you could play this guy. Four mana flash creature. So hold yep. up your cryptic command, hold up your Yeva, easy game. And then all the rest of your creatures have, have flash. Have yeah. flash. Yeah. So you don't have to make that weird commitment of three sorcery speed mana. Yep. No, that makes sense. It's a nice throwback card to uh, Quick Sliver. Mm. For yep. those of True. us that played. True. Green only, though. So clearly you can't flash in Ledger Shredder this way. That is a great point, and you're banned. No, I'm just kidding. You're not banned. I don't think there's uh, anything else that we care about flashing in um, that doesn't... See, the problem... What I was saying is most of our creatures already have flash. A lot of our so creatures do. I don't quite understand Vivian. And the, the, as I was looking at the list, the only creature that caught my eye as one that would Spendhorn? be important to flash in would be oh. uh, Ledger Shredder. Mm, I like sure. Seagate. Like, yeah, Seagate Stormcaller is one that would be nice to have flash, but I don't think it would be nearly as good as Ledger Shredder because triggering it on your opponent's turn the first time is still really good. You know what it is? Jago heard all that conversation between Outland Liberator and Reclamation Sage, and he said, bro, I've got a, uh, Reclamation Sage. I've got Outland Liberator. Yeah. I heard the, the, the critique. I'm just going to give my Reclamation Sage flash, flash yeah. and solve all the problems. Ah, yep. oh, he's a genius. So Truly Steven's, voice of a generation. Steven, ahead of his time. Steven's fixing his mana, so I think the rest of his draft might be pretty spoken mm-hmm. for. What is Ascended Animate? Nissa Ascended Animist. Which one is this one? I think this is the three mana Lotus Cobra Nissa. Um, so whenever you landfall, you get to add a mana. And if you do that... Oh, no, it is not. Nope, it this is the new one. Mind. This is the big Chungus. This is yep. the big boy. This is the completed guy X. that... Uh... Okay. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. All right. Until end of turn, creatures you control get plus for each fourth. We still don't have enough creatures to make this worthwhile. I don't... This is not a card you can put into play off of show and tell. This is not a card you can natural order into. This is or not a card symbiosis. you can channel You can channel into. This is not a card you can head off turn 10 percent biosis. This is... It does not make a bunch of huge creatures. It makes one huge creature each turn. And... If you're casting it when you need to in this format, you're probably play, paying at least one Phyrexian life, which means it costs six, uh, and it's coming of, in with six loyalty. Here's yes, what it comes I'll, in with five loyalty, up to six. You make yeah, a if you, have to, six, if six if you pay no both, then it comes in on three, goes up to four, makes a four-four. Yeah, with no keywords. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Sam got a really, really late endurance, and that card's busted. Yes. I mean ridiculous. I was talking card. about Bane of Progress and Turn Symbiosis when he wheeled Bane into Endurance. Yeah, completely insane. Nissa? <sighs> One of the worst picks I could possibly imagine. For this stage in the game. draft, if I think Nissa Ascended Animus is it a great pick, but it has to be higher d- and on a plan. Can, it, can Finale find it? Can Finale find Planeswalkers? No. I know it can't. I'll just Finale of, of and then just Dev is yeah. Finale of D, baby. Finale. It doesn't get Planeswalkers. Listen, 
Arena Wreck. There's does. no reason to put this fucking Nissa in your deck. My God. We, unless Sam's deck is Please just going to be no. some savant build, I just can't figure out. It's gonna. It, listen, Sam's deck could win matches. It's not going to win matches because he put fucking Nissa Ascended Dickhead in his deck. Okay. It, it's not going to happen. If the it, you got to play it early, and it makes key, creatures with no keywords, and it, when you play it early, I don't even know how well it's going to stack up against steven's deck like pal's Bro, play jailer a pack just, in your deck at that point Fuck, yeah. who cares pal's jailer just Shit. embarrasses nissa uh, ascended animist at that stage of the game yeah. not oh hard evidence mark picked it up i think he Ooh. might have stolen that from dan interesting interesting everything hard becomes a crab is the, is the crab clue guy right it is that's interesting i, I, I mean, don't know that i like this pick very much it's but, not okay. bad for mark because it creates a zero three blocker so at any stage of the game um but i think dan would have also benefited from this card possibly more so than mark mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. not only mm -hmm. does dan really have no early blockers he also has academy so it hits on both ends um, um with the, enough, with the clue um We've got a couple interesting ones. Jago got a really late offer you can't refuse. Yeah, now, offer seen... you can't refuse has shown to be a really, really good card in a lot of the Thoracle combo decks. That is, it's the counter um, spell, and then does it put a, cre a. It gives them two treasures, I think. Oh, I thought it was a plus one. Right. Um, non creature spell, it's controller, two treasures. Two treasures. Um, so we have seen this card just be a fucking killer in Infect, in uh, the Thoracle combo decks. Like, Dan Dan drafts this card a lot. He okay. loves that thing. Um, so, a very, very good card. Probably not, you know, it, it doesn't get picked up super early or anything, but yeah. always nice to see your last five picks come down. You got some power, you know? Yeah, it, play, it plays into what uh, Jago wanted to do, which is play low-to-the-ground creatures, some cheap spells, and try and get underneath his opponents. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is fantastic, and we're taking Angel's Grace as Swifty... Angel's Grace is interesting. They printed a new Angel's Grace, right? Um, I mean, they re no, they didn't reprint it. They reprinted Phyrexian on Life. Um, sure, sure. Uh, Angel's Grace is a is a totally fine way to try to counter a Thoracle. I think that's all it is, yeah. yeah. It just splits seconds. It's very narrow, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Everybody lives, yes. Thank you, yeah. Seeker42. Um, Angel's Grace, totally reasonable way to counter that combo, though. You let your opponent go to their next draw stop, they die. Yep. You know? And it's got split second. So yeah, and you counter. kick it in the face of pack and very mitigation. narrow, but yeah, it's okay. Like yeah. I think it's fine to pick it. You know, like yeah, you know, yeah. you have four matches to play, and you want to have a sideboard for each one. And all right, fair enough. Yeah, and uh, post board it might be a little awkward since Mark is planning on getting a. You know, it seems like he's planning on getting a little squirrely, playing a lot of different things post board. Um, so kind of interesting. Yeah, Angel's Grace um, doesn't quite stop Blightsteel Colossus from killing you. Um, uh, no, no, it does not. You will still get. The poison counters, right? Yeah, so as, as judges, we, we, we like to say damage doesn't kill you, state-based actions kill you, and mm. that is still the case with Blight Steel Colossus. What if we got Rules Lawyer, where state-based actions no longer matter? You know, they gave that out as a judge promo, and I understand why, because her, 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 but at the same time, like, could have blackboarded it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I agree, 100%. <laughs> I want to put it in my cube. I we My used cube to has do two these, silver board um, cards in it. Ooh, which ones? They're what both one why? They're both blue. Blast in the past? No. no. Okay. One costs okay. four, and the other one costs, I think, three. Beebles. No, one of them's a creature, the other one's a spell. Uh, is one of is the creature the clone? No. The nameless clone? Mm, You'll that's... never see it coming. Is that the name of the card? No, that's a oh. clue. Um. You'll never see it coming. Because that's the whole point of the card. Cheaty face. There it is. There you go. Cheaty face. The other, uh, the other one's a, yeah. a spell. It's a, it's a meme. It, it's a, it's a hat on hat kind of joke. It's a storm oh. finisher. Oh, is it cross storm? Mm -hmm. Nice, love it. Because love you can, it. you don't often die to uh, goblins. Yeah. You just start blocking goblins, yeah. and then you're yeah. like, ah, crap. Doesn't stop you getting pecked to death. Exactly. When they, when goblins fly though. The mm -hmm. two toughness doesn't matter. It's when goblins fly and you can't block them anymore that the game closes out. I love it. That yeah. sounds awesome. Hell yeah. I was going to say, I think I had um, Who, What, When, Where, Why and Blast from the Past in my cube. Yeah. For, for those a, are, those a are the good options. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, yeah, Secret Guide was cheap. We used to do these um, build your own drafts. We used to make custom cards. Everyone would make 45 custom cards. We would come together, oh, that's shuffle them all together. So many. And then play. Winter Orb. Um, Winter Orb. 
Hell yeah, he did. And that is Winter Orb one of those mono artifacts that only matters. Oh if yeah, it's you turned it off. Winter Orb, Static Orb. Winter Orb. And Howling Wind. Because they had a name for that back in the day, right? Uh, mono mono artifact. artifact. Yeah. Mono artifact. As long as it is untapped, players can't untap more than one land during their untap steps. He says, "Excuse me, you guys with your cute little acid rains and your blood moons and your and your Armageddon whatever shitter yep. things you're planning on doing. This. We're here to play Winter Harbors. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Uh, uh, absolutely, boss. Two weeks ago, uh, I was playing Sneak and Show against Doomsday. Mm. I cast the Simeon Spirit Guide because I was like, I had an mm. omniscience out. I'm like, you know what? What am I going to do with this? I'll play it out. I actually needed that card to win. I left my opponent at my... I passed the turn with my opponent at four. They couldn't They couldn't finish out the combo. I untapped. I had, Delightful. Uh, Delightful. Yeah. I had Vesuvian Drifter in play and the monkey with no, no creature on top of Drifter and no way to put a creature back. Oh from hand god. with Drifter. Just oh my god. Now I need that four. <sighs> okay, we see a Bark Channel pathway, and in the endless saga of Sam picking the immortal sun cards, is just the immortal sun. At this point, do you that finger oh, guns and a wink directly at Brandon? Do you think there's a chance Brandon. that like that Sam was like, "Don't worry, guys, I'm gonna owe four as long as you guys all carry the victory." So he's just like kind of just taking like whatever goofy thing you think he's on twitter like yo tell me what yeah. i gotta pick bro he's on twitter yeah um a johnny vengeance there's a blast from the past that is oh, a johnny vengeance such a fun card isn't it get an alt do we have a lot of pseudo get -ins? yes we have a lot we of have pseudo we have a johnny vengeance yes. and acid rain every get -in we can play that isn't yes. get -in. yes absolutely orb is a continuous artifact so mono artifacts the ones you have you to have tap to, to use yeah. So if we go back, if we take Orb back, we should just see Artifact. No, not Expansion. Where is it? Is it? Oh, wait. This, there should be a version like tab. There it is. Uh, languages. Sets and Legality. Uh, yeah, we just go back to that. Out this one. Conti oh, it does Continuous say Artifact. There you go. Players can only untap one land during their untap step. Yep. Creatures and artifacts. So they continually work normal. as long as they're untapped. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Blight Step Pathway, that is the red black flip land, correct? That's yep. not the Strixhaven. Uh, I believe that is correct. Okay. And Sam picked the red ball uh the green black pathway, I believe. Oh, that's Bark Channel Pathway? Okay. I that's... thought that was green blue for some reason. That seemed um, like weird snack think... snake of Michigan. No, it makes more sense that it's green blue. I think you're right. Um, I was thinking that Bark Channel. Yeah, I think yep. you're right. I think you're correct. And there's our hanger back girl. Hey, no hanger, hanger back girl. girl. There's still no skull. No I don't think anybody's taken skull clamp. Uh, no, I don't think anyone has either. Which honestly seems like a mistake. If I were Steven, the art of the equipment that I would like to search up for, Lion Sash, absolutely 100%. Emberclave, absolutely 100%. And I would probably go Maul the Skyclaves. As oh I think yeah, I haven't seen that. Very yet. nice one. We haven't seen that card in constructed in a while either. It feels like people forgot about it, despite mm -hmm. the fact that it is very good. I want to say it's it was the. Oh, I know what fabricate does. What is? Defabricate isn't that the one that takes an artifact apart and you get mana for it? Oh no, counters an artifact, or counter counter target activator triggered ability. There we go. More ways to stifle the knot, baby. Yeah, yeah. Let's wait. It, he's gonna pick it. I know he's gonna pick it. Hundred percent, he's gonna pick it. It's a thousand percent that he's gonna pick it, bro. I, I'm way. not into. I like. I wouldn't be in awe if he took it in 46. I would be in awe if somebody from St. Louis realized it was happening and pulled the I'm trigger telling you, on them. If anyone's ever listened to me in the last three years, this is like probably the deck that I talk about the most. Stifle I that. played, yes, I played a really goofy version of the Stifle Knot deck where I had um, Scroll of Fates, which is the one that you tap and manifest a card from your hand. Yep. So then you just pay a mana and you, you flip, flip your over, over, over and boom! boom. Oh, it's gonna be so sick when he stifles the knot, baby. Kaboomist. Not kaboomist. This. Kaboom. Choose any number of target players for each of those players. Reveal cards from top of your library until you reveal a non-land card. Kaboom deals damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to that player. Then you put their. Okay, I couldn't remember if it was power or mana value mm. because Draco boom. Kaboom. Ah, was yes. a deck you mm -hmm. could play. So yeah, I wanted to see where we were. 
There are some really nice. They've printed some really expensive spells that people are using, you know, in their goofy like pitch decks and yep. stuff, and they're like kaboom decks or whatever they're called. There's a there's a modern version of this card that's like, yeah, reveal. I think it might just be like reveal the top card and your opponent takes damage equal to it's like a something explosion or something blast Con concentrated blast. Um, I don't remember what it's called. It's really fun. Well, Brandon picked up Elspeth Sun's champ. Bro, you know me. I love an Elspeth Sun's champion. My God. Yeah. Last two. I picks thought it was calibrated. Calibrated blast, blast. Thank you. Yes. Seekers on it, man. I this thought guy is a goddamn dictionary. I thought calibrated Holy blast was the one that deals damage equal to the number of artifacts you control. Um, I think it's the top of the deck. Reveal cards from the type of library until you reveal an online card. Put the rest on the bottom. When you reveal an online card yep. this way, it deals damage. Kaboom. Oh, to any target. That's fun. Yeah. So I thought this was the one. I think you pick the target before you flip over, though, right? Isn't that how these cards usually work? Reveal cards on the top of your library. Put the revealed cards on the bottom of your library. When you reveal an online card, you calibrate blast. Yeah, so... Uh, Is it a card where you... It goes, in the, it goes in the stack without a target. Oh, without a target. That's interesting. Okay. It is. Well, that's quite a bit better than, like, I want to say Blast of Genius was, like, the Is It card that I used to have in my Common Uncommon Cube that was really good. Mm -hmm. um, that, like, I think that one is you have to pick your target. Swifty. Swifty's um, pick. Stee, it's uh, the. The. Um, oh, rulings look like it said it goes onto the stack without a target. It said that is the first ruling on it. So, uh, maybe it was with a more... The first sentence in the first rule. Goes in stack without a target when you reveal an online card during your resolution. It's a reflexive triggered ability that then you pick a target. Yep. Interesting. Interesting stuff. As it says right here. All right. It's Spark reflexive. Rupture. That's an interesting That's one. the card I was just about to pull up. That's oh, the... Jago's... I swear to you, I swear on God's green earth, I think Jago's favorite card is Arcane Denial. He's a mad lad about it. You draw one, they draw two? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as we're winding down the last round of this draft, we are not going to be streaming the matches. Is that correct? That is correct. We will. Great. Um, oh, okay, Dan. Thanks. Clown car. Oh, perfect. Love it. You know what? I've got an actual... I, we don't have to print one. I've got one downstairs in the basement. On top we, of we will be recording thing. the matches, but I do not know when playback will happen. Yeah, I think we're going to try to record some matches. And... Mm, what? Huh? <gasps> yes. Oh, my God. Of course I do. Oh, yeah. oh a cookie. Oh, my gosh. So delicious. Thank you so much. Rachel made us cookies. Isn't that so exciting? Thank you. Wow. There's also pizza here. Oh, yeah, we're almost oh, done. Oh, yes, perfect. Okay. Oh. We're so excited. She makes great cookies. Too. Delicious. You know, no, she, great... she makes us a cheesecake, a literal cheesecake, every week for movie night. Isn't that crazy? That is insane. Yeah, last night she made three lasagnas and a cheesecake for us to just, for the 16 of us to come over to her house. That's an all night, night. That's an all day and all night activity for her. I, honestly, she is a saint of a woman. So... I agree, secret shots fired, but I don't know in which direction. Because mm. um. <laughs> the entire St. Louis crowd rode here. They didn't ride here together. Brendan and Sam got into Chicago. They flew directly in. They all had to drive home together. No, I like that. Listen, just like Mark called them all out with the scrubland pick earlier, this clown car is a statement, okay? Mm -hmm. A statement pick, yeah. So, for all you guys at home... Uh, if I understand correctly, we are going to try to record yes. some of these very exciting matches. And then I believe we're going to take the recordings, we're going to do some like commentary in post, mm. and then uh, upload them to the St. Lotus YouTube channel. So if you have not already, get over to YouTube, find St. Lotus on YouTube, and subscribe. You know, follow us, whatever. Uh, we're going to get some YouTube content for you guys all. So if you want to see these exciting and dynamic decks, you uh, follow us over on Twitter. If you want to see photos of the crown being placed and moved uh, as the king of the hill rotates, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see the shock and the uh, devastation on everybody's face as they both win the crown and are elated, and lose the crown and are deflated. Very yep. exciting stuff. Uh, we are also going to be posting pictures of the... Uh, pot of booze that is being not pot, not a literal pot of booze, mind you, but the, oh, like, God, the mutual terrible. pot. Um, and it's also not pot as in marijuana. It's a pot of, you know what? The anyway, buy-in. The buy-in of alcohol that is being played for today. And candy corn. Hundreds of dollars of alcohol and, and candy, candy corn. corn that uh, is being played for today. Very exciting stuff. So get over, follow St. Lotus. Is it St. Lotus or St. Lotus MTG? I guess St. Lotus. I think it's just St. Lotus. Follow St. Lotus on Twitter. Follow us on YouTube so you can see some sick matches between these awesome decks. Let's see it, Jago. Pick the Phyrexian Dreadnought. Do it, you fucking pussy.
The cyber, the cyber, okay, cyber controller is okay, the card yeah, I was yeah. talking about from uh, Doctor Who. Mm, okay, um, cool. We got a really cool last pick here. Mm. I'm hoping it's up. Nope. The cyber controller. Mm. Sick. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent mills X cards. Put all creatures milled this way onto mm. the battlefield, face down, under your control. They're two, two Cybermen artifact creatures. Can these be flipped over? No, because they're not manifesting that morph. Interesting. It has to have the, I thought... the ability to flip is given by morph. No, Jago, you fool! You accidentally picked Sword of War and Peace, <laughs> an absolutely fucking dog shit magic card. What's He's protecting wrong with himself you? from Steven. Oh my. He's gone God. shields up I against have Steven. Never... Look at me, Jago, whenever you watch this playback. I have never been more disappointed in you in my entire life. And I say this as your biological father. All right, anyway. Yeah. Yes, if, so going back to the Restoration <laughs> Angel conversation, if you Restoration Angel one of these, it comes back in as a creature face up, which is fun. Mm, over. If it's a spell, not so much. I oh, thought... <laughs> Mark's statement pick at the end. Gush! <laughs> Thank you guys very much for tuning in and watching the draft with us. We appreciate you very much. Again, follow us on Twitter. We're going to be, or I can't even say us. I'm not associated with, well, I can't say I'm not associated at all. You know what? I digress. Follow St. Lotus on Twitter. Get the updates. We'll let you know who the winner is. Check out the Discord. We'll let you know who the winner is over there as well. Yeah. Follow us on Facebook to see some sick matches from this. I'll do and some commentaries. Do. He's going to do some commentary. We're going to get commentary from all over the place. We got Eric Levine coming in. Of course, he can't be associated with us in any way, shape, or form because we are very anti Wizards of the Coast. No, we're not. We're actually pro Wizards yeah, no, of the Coast. Yeah, no, he just can't cool. do it. I think he can do a commentary. He's going to be part of the draft. Hell yeah, he can or cannot. Whatever he said, thank you guys very much. We appreciate you.